Hello, everybody, and welcome to The Summoning. Once again, I'm Matthias, also known as Matthias, your host for today, and I am joined by Ari. How are you doing, Ari? I am doing good. I had, like, a quart of noodles for breakfast. I got <laughs> my quart. water with me. It's going to be fighting games, Valorant. I'm, uh, I'm having a good day so far. I'm yeah. excited. Yeah, we're going to be holding down the Valorant casting, but that's not all we have here today at the Summoning. Today, we are summoning all the players from all around, from all walks of life for almost every single game. Maybe not as many esports titles as you're used to, though, but we have the fighting game titles. We have Su Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. We have Super Smash Brothers Melee. We have Tekken 8. We have Street Fighter 6. We have Valorant. We have a Warhammer 40k tournament. We have Magic the Gathering. We have Yu-Gi-Oh! We have Pokemon TCG. We have Disney Lorcana. And we also have a Bean Bag Toss event. We have even oh, yeah, more. Cool. And we also have One Piece card game, a personal favorite of mine, something I've been playing recently. Mm -hmm. But a lot of things in store. I think you can still enter. Things are going to be happening uh, uh, throughout the day. So if you're a local, if you're tuning in right now, try and stop by. You know, we got a lot of prizing in store. As you can see, over $10,000 in prizing. That is a lot of money. Definitely more money than I've ever seen. <laughs> can I be honest about something? I've never seen One Piece. That's fair. Um, I just know a couple of the characters, but... Did they find it yet? All I know is that no, the but One we're, Piece exists we're getting there. and they're looking for it. We got some hints of where it could be. We don't know what it is, hmm. but we're going to get there someday. We'll find it. Maybe we'll yeah. find it today. Maybe it's part of the $10,000 You know prizing. what? Yeah, that would be funny. Maybe the One Piece is in the prizing. That would be great. But Maybe a lot of people say the One Piece is the friends we made along the way. True. And to spin this back to Valorant... It looks like it's a lot of friendly teams here today. We have a lot of local teams coming through, as you'll see with some of the names we have here in store. We've got a lot of good teams as well. But it's going to be, I think, three rounds of round robin, and then we're going to have a semifinals and then a grand finals to end things off. And they are going to be best of ones in the round robin with the point score increasing the semis and grants yeah and i think the uh semis will be but and the finals will be best of three right yes yes right. that is correct yeah so far all i know is that the team names are a bit silly yeah uh, i think the, the first mickey mouse clubhouse and the gangy as our first game that's gonna be fun yeah mickey mouse clubhouse is a, a interesting team i wonder if their names will match it'll be like donald goofy that would be funny. mickey pluto <laughs> The dog is playing. Yeah, the dog. <laughs> yeah. You know, I never I never thought that Mickey Mouse characters would be um avid gamers, but you know, if you had to guess, what what would be like the average rank? Average of the, rank of, of oh, the Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. Immortal, I think. Mm. I'd have to give Immortal because I've seen Kingdom Hearts, Donald, Goofy, Mickey, they're oh, true. just top. Donald tier. Duck is radiant. Donald Duck is like an insane power scaler. He's the most powerful character in the Final Fantasy Extended Universe. Mm. He can cast Zeta Flare, which is an absolutely devastating move. But moving on from that, <laughs> we also have Gangy, and you can see that Gang's all here and all raring to go. And just based on the names alone, who are you gonna give this to? Who do you think's gonna win? It's it's tough because on one hand you have the gang, and when you have the gang, it's like you're <laughs> the gang's all here. Exactly, the gang is all here. You're locked in. You're here to win, even if it is a best of one. Doesn't matter. You. you you know, you do your best. But then, you, I mean, if you want to call it that, I think the Mickey Mouse Clubhouse will also be a gang in its, its own true. way. They're club. They're, yeah. But it's like, if you want to get technical about it, you know? The point <laughs> is, like, the synergy is there. The synergy is and there. And if what you said uh, about the names, you know, matching up comes true, then, like, that's just a power move. I don't know. I think my money will be on uh, Mickey Mouse Clubhouse at the moment. Yeah, I think I'll give it to them as well. They're going to be singing hot dog, hot dog, hot diggity dog, as we're going to be getting in very, very soon. And just to go over the general Valorant info, how's the meta shaping up recently? Oh, the uh... I'm not sure exactly how long it's been, but uh, after, it's like some time ago, Sky got nerfed because she was very strong. Um, and so they switched it up for Gecko. But uh, as I say that, we, we are getting Sky into the Agent Select. Vine is going to be our first map. I do see a Sky on the side of the gangy. 
as I was just talking. No gecko so far, but I do see the Yoru for Mickey Mouse Clubhouse, which is cool. I think that's an interesting pick. That is. I haven't seen a Yoru bind as of recently in a, bit, in a bit. Yeah, just running through the team names, we have the gangy lineup being Ant, Cutty, Cloud, Doomsy, and Rohu. And on the side of Mickey Mouse Clubhouse, we have Quester, Coma, Fox Style, High Rise, and Maka. And it looks like Sky is going to be the pick for Initiator on this map, at least. And something I have haven't seen in quite a while is the chamber on the right right there fox style looking very interesting as that chamber and also the yoru interesting pick mm. honestly i can understand the chamber pick just because of the uh cypher utility gets broken easily by uh by ray's utility it's a good counter yeah, how do you feel about that? How do you think this is going to go in terms of who's going who's going to win the sentinel off? Oh, the sentinel off. Well, I think Mickey Mouse Clubhouse is starting. Bing, 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 bing. I have to give it over to the Cypher because they're going to get that util going hmm. a little bit faster than the Chamber. You know, Chamber can always right. play for post plant, but I always feel it's not as strong post plant. It's harder to get in that position That's fair. when you're on the defense, when you're on the offense, mm, trying true. to play defensively. Right, and also the Cypher utility doesn't have range. That's true. So That's true. you can just have it active anytime, anywhere. It does look like Mickey Mouse Clubhouse is going to stack over towards that A site. Or, yeah, as I, I say that, they're going. rotating over. Oh, somebody's swapping in spawn. <laughs> Cypher will be setting up on that A, which is a good read just because it looks like the gangy are going to start on that heavy A, heavy A pressure just from both sides. Exactly. It looks like it's going to be an A rush from the gangy. And you can see Dooms, he's cracking his knuckles. He's ready, raring to go, ready for anything high rise, getting that combat stim, getting ready to turn. Bomb goes out, dog goes out as well. Dooms, he gets one tap with that frenzy there. And going to find one, looking for another. But wow, two go down on the side of Mickey Mouse, but two get answered right back by the gang. We're in a 3v3. So far, pretty even. The spike has not been planted yet, and as I say that, they are going to try to make that rotation over to spike B, but Ant in. does get the pick onto the spike carrier. Chamber trades it back remaining. with the sky. Ant gets the third in the round. And now it's, it is a 1v2 for Mecca. Can they pull it off? It's going to be very, very tough. They have spike control as well. Mecca has no choice other than to go in here and try and rush this one down. Gets found up on the corner, and Ant takes him out with a 4K Ant. Not bad Starting things off hot for Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. Honestly, that was, that was very solid work from Ant and the rest of Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. I think our, our predictions are shaping up pretty well so far. So far. It was a pretty chaotic round at first, but... Uh, yeah, I don't know. The brimstone could just close it out. That knife. They may is, be an ant, but they're making monumental impact. That knife is mesmerizing. I just have to point that out. I yeah, love that new crown, <laughs> the light trail. Yeah, I think it came out recently. But yeah, I think it's yeah, it's, it's very the newest pretty. one. Very nice. Everyone's running corambits here. Mm. As we get back in, Cuddy gonna cut this corner here with the bulldog lining it up. Gonna have to retreat though, as there's just too many for him to try and hold this one on. High rise, moving forward. Viper wall going up, Coma peeking around the corner, getting a nice TP into U-Haul. Very tough position here. Right, Gangy just putting a pause on the round. This utility is down, but they're not executing yet. As I say that, High Rise throwing the nade out. They're all jumping out of hookah, but Mickey Mouse Clubhouse responds accordingly, getting four, dominating the kill feed, just ending it out. Flawless round for Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. And I mean... <laughs> That's a great round. That's kind of how we expected it to go. They had a yeah, was major a weapon advantage, but with how they played it, they seemed a little unsure of themselves for a little bit. They played very cautious. They yeah, didn't overextend. Yeah, what I noticed is that they didn't take a lot of time to in the round in general to get that uh, like any info or any other map control. They kind of just put all of their resources into B um, without kind of exploring their options, I guess. But so it, you just gotta play it simple sometimes, play it relaxed and yeah. play it cool. But now they have weapons in hand on the side of the gangy, so they're gonna move forward through bathroom. And peeking around the corner, gonna get flashed out, double flash, now in a really bad spot, but Ant finds one, looking for another, can't get it, come on, high rise, get two. Now it's a 3v4 situation for Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. Oh, Cuddy getting caught on that flank by Fox. Fox TV? 
Doomsday swinging into shower, getting his one, but Maka trades it back, and now it is a 1v3 for the side of Roku, gets the first. Dinks the second, but cannot close it out. Maka living on 10 HP and getting the first round for the gangy. Absolutely crazy round right there. Now you can see when weapons are in hand, these teams are very, very evenly matched. It's just trades all around back and forth. So I'm excited to see how this round will go. Now that Mickey Mouse Clubhouse is on the back foot, will they be able to keep up with the gangy here? Honestly, it's doable. It's doable. I think I saw uh, the Gengi. There was one Spectre for their side, but mostly Vandals. And it looks like it is going to be a pretty even match. Rohu sending that flash down long for info. Does get the blind. And making contact in showers. Backing it up. Is supported by High Rise. Or Cloud, sorry. <laughs> High Rise is the attacker. Oops, wrong race. High good. Rise just slowing it down. Holding. They're waiting for something to happen. Wait. Far in that corner, trying to get a ding, trying to get a wall bang, trying to find something. HCE Fox style cutting this corner, pushing on to A here with this Yoru Cuddy still in Hookah holding next? strong. There is the Yoru alt, gonna get some nice info there. Run all the way through preposition, trying to find info for his team, and wow, with the shorty out of the alt, so gets rude. the kill. It looks like the gang did draw out rotations from Mickey Mouse Clubhouse to A though, so they will be able to get that plant down on B, if I'm not mistaken. Mickey Mouse Clubhouse getting ready for that retake, but I don't think they're aware of the hookah flank. That spike is going to go down. Gwester almost whips it, but does is able to secure the kill. Cloud, noticing the chamber up top, is left in a 1v5, and the gang just flawlessly taking the round. It's just flawless after flawless. Exactly. And now, I don't know if our predictions are going to hold up here as the gang are just on an absolute roll and Mickey Mouse Clubhouse just not going to have the funds to keep up here. Going to have to take a save round going all in on the sheriffs and stingers. If there's anything I've learned from competitive play, though, it is to never count out the sheriffs or the stingers the amount of times that I have died and that I've seen people die to... Just a nasty stinger play is insane, so I wouldn't count them out just yet. The gangy is going to put that stack over towards A with the chamber lurking on B. <coughs> Excuse me. And pushing up for that showers control, spraying through the smoke is not able to find anything as the gangy is just waiting very deep, not even going into short, sending the dog up solo, is not able to spot anything, but Cloud is aware. Good timing on the nade is able to push a few people back. I find it interesting. They're using pistols and holding the range because that's not what you want to see right there. High rise getting the dink from above the box. Beautiful play. Pinpoint accuracy right there. Koma trying to take a gunfight. Trades. Doesn't get the trade actually. Just going to take a shot, but he can rotate out of here. No problem. Yeah, but if you haven't noticed, um, two members of the gang have walked up B long. I think Viper is about to take that contact, and once again taking that showers control. Cloud also taking contact, fighting for their life with a stinger. High rise, applying the pressure, walking in, is able to get the kill onto Cloud. Almost gets the second, but Koma trades it back with a shorty, and now it is a 1v4 for Cuddy. Can they pull it off? Yeah, they cannot, as that's a really hard place to be in Molotov behind you and the entire enemy team in front of you. Don't really have much of a choice there. Cuddy goes down. That's going to be Gangy going into the lead now, 3-2. to two. This is looking to be a pretty interesting half already. True, but Mickey Mouse Clubhouse does have the opportunity to turn this round in favor for them. Just because they have three alts ready, the Brimstone ult is really strong for that U-Haul control. And as I say that, they are looking... Uh, <laughs> Gwester is looking to push that A site. Not going to, sh right to uh, short though, instead they're all just fast taking shower rays, satcheling in and dodging the flash. Taking that fight does get one, e equal trades all around. Cuddy noticing contact on short and I think they're pretty sold on the A hit. Yeah, they get a one for one trade right there. Rotating around and gets another. This is looking... Spring through the smoke. Not great for Gangy. Now Spike is down over near A, but no one is knowing that on the enemy team. Cuddy beating this corner, holding strong Ant once again popping off, getting three this round already. Maybe even more to come, unless Cuddy wants to answer, but no. Mac, I'm going to shut that one right down. 
to the two members of Mickey Mouse Clubhouse rotating in from B just to help their teammate Ant, but I think Ant is holding their own right now. As I say that, Maka <clears throat> is going to send that flash out, tapping the plant, baiting out that ult. Doomsie is going to get the kill. Foxy Lee trading out. And now it is a 1v2 for Fox Dooley. Just decide to take the TP, just hightail it over to the... Oh, oh my god, the dog the can dog. kill? Yeah, the dog does 30 damage. That's crazy. I rarely see that kill, though. Absolutely yeah, great play by Ruhu. Very often. Honestly, but yeah, good round for Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. And they are going to tie up the game 3-3. Three three. Send them good dog to work. the hounds right there with that one. Right, give the dog some good pets. I give the dog a snack. Wow, a snack <laughs> on the enemy. All right, let's take a look at the economy here. They used a lot of alts that round to try and keep themselves in this, and now Gangy does have the alt economy advantage here. They have three alts, and three very powerful alts, and yeah, there's one out of the gate just flushing out that U-Hole so they can rush down A, already doing major pressure here, and the showstopper being committed, gonna take one out, get the trade. Ant does lose that fight in showers to Mecha, and it is a player advantage for the gangy Wester getting that bomb down. But got vulnerable by something, I'm not sure exactly what. Mecha about to send their own dog out. High rise, good stall utility, does prevent the push into U Haul. Yeah, the gang is just trying to stall for as long as they can. Good utility usage so far. Line goes out. Doesn't find any picks though. Gets the trade. Maka gonna get two. Doomsday gonna fall down. It's a 1v2 situation. Has to go for the DPS. Doesn't get it. And that's gonna be the Gangy getting another point into the lead. Very back and forth here. Mm -hmm. I think we have a game on our hands, at least for this first one. Oh, we definitely Like do. I said, the Gangy, when you're when you when you got a gang, you're locked in. And the Gangy is in fact right looking very locked in at the moment. It's very fun to watch. But Mickey Mouse Clubhouse is going to be on another save. Bring up my yeah. earlier point, you know, never, never count out the sheriffs. Um, but it looks like they are just going to go for that aggressive ego play. Everyone stacking over towards B, which seems to be the correct read because that is you where the gang play, is trying to go. Play. Yeah, great read. Spike is going to be over there. If they can find Spike early and try and hold it down, it'd be an amazing play. Fox Sal is going to find one and going to find another. Actually, that is spiked down early. But can they go and try and get that one? They're going to send the Sky Dog out to do some scouting. They find a raise off an angle here. Fox Style moving up. They need to get this spike back in their hands, and they managed to do so. Mm. Here. Mickey Mouse Clubhouse just not aggressing, not doing too much, holding their positions, knowing they can retake together whenever possible. Ant is going to find those Sky Dogs. As it, that happens, the Gangy is going to get that plant down onto me, but Maka pushed up aggressive into CT. I think alone? No, they have Heaven support. Maka sends out the flash, does get the blind. Coma spraying it down, High Rise getting another. Just the spray down work is immaculate from the Gangy. The Gangy doing an amazing job right here. The lockdown is insane. There's two down on the side of the Gangy, but it doesn't matter as Coma finds two more, bringing them two points in the lead. Good phantom work. Good phantom work. Phantom is always good for spraying things down. And I like the proactive play by uh, Rohu to push up into CT. I don't think they would be expecting that, especially just because, you know, short-range guns, and they think, oh, they want to avoid the short-range, but... Uh, yeah, honestly, good proactivity from, from the side of the gangy to secure the round. Oh, yeah, they played amazingly there. And now Mickey Mouse Clubhouse does have the showstopper, but they need to stop the show the gangy are putting on right now. <laughs> there it is. They're going to start that off real hot here, going in loud and proud. But Coma is going to be sneaking in all the way here. Going to get behind enemy lines completely. Gonna send a flash out, get out, and try and go, but he gets oh. taken out by Ant. NT, honestly, NT. I saw the vision, um, and with Coma's death, the gang is gonna make that rotate over to B. Foxy Lee getting caught behind the trip, Doomsy and Rohu getting ready for the hit. I think they're very well equipped, and as I say that, Rohu does get the first kill onto Foxy Lee. Sends out that flash, Doomsy gets team flash, but it's all good because they are not in the sight. Gangy. 2v5. 
They got their work cut out for them. It's looking to be a 5v4 on the scoreline if they don't turn things around very soon. Quester rotating over, and with a 3k, and Cuddy getting that last fifth and final kill for the team. It's 4v5, just trading rounds back and forth. Not bad at all. Ant has been doing really well so far. 15 and 5 on the Brimstone. That's crazy. I, I, I love some... some uh, I love it when Brimstones in particular play as Duelist because it's just, when you think fragging agents, you don't really think, you don't think Brimstone. It's no. not the first that comes to mind. You think of the Reyna, you think of the Neon going fast, but it's just, it's my favorite thing because imagine you're on, you know, you're in this situation, you're just seeing an old man <laughs> fragging out of his mind. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it's awesome. I love Brimmy. Love his combat sim. That's the one thing he can use to go aggressive and to not falling for the decoy. Gonna hold this ankle strong through the smoke. Has to play very carefully though. Cannot overextend here if he dies. That'd be a major loss to his team. They want to keep that alt going. Gwester moving up, pushing up a main. You see Doomsy holding down Hookah, holding down B Long. Flash goes out and Ant falls. That's a powerful player out of the game on the side of the Gangy. Taking that one out is absolutely key. Gangy once again putting a pause on the round. Things, yeah, it's just slowing down. Everyone's holding their positions. They are going to have some, Mickey Mouse Clubhouse is going to have some rotates over to B. High Rise taking contact CT. Oh, Ooh. wow. Ooh, getting the headshot onto High Rise. Just. just Obliterating the possibility for a B hit potentially, and at this point, Mickey Mouse Clubhouse already know they're not going A. The rotates are already inbound; they're ahead of the curve. Plant does go down. Foxy Lee holding from the short. Cuddy getting the kill. Coma trading it back. Just and a slight pause in the round as it's a two v three in favor of the gangy. So that stand still, but the calm cometh before the storm. He rotates back around. Has to try and take this angle. Teammate has him covered. Needs to push up. Doesn't get one. Need to get the trade, but Coma's going to get two for one little push. And a 4K to end the round. 6v4. The gangy is leading by two. We don't have too much left in the half. Yeah, I saw Doomsy by an Odin at one point, but they keep switching it out. Kind of disappointed I would have loved to see some Odin gameplay. How often do you see a Cypher with an Odin? Not often enough. <laughs> Not exactly. often enough. And now, looking at the alt scoreline, I'd like to see Mickey Mouse have Clubhouse try and bring some of these alts out sooner than later, as we only have two more rounds left. Mm. Yep. The gangy taking that fast showers control and once again not even caring that last round and they they faced two flash agents and died in showers. They they don't care, they're just taking that showers control over and over again. Maka and High Rise taking that showers control in response and having to give it up Quester walking up short, baiting out the right cipher here. cages. They get all so so much info for the side of the gangy right now, but I don't think it's enough as the majority of players are on a for Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. And yeah, most of them are pushing A, which is a little bit interesting. Three of them are, it looks like it's gonna rotate over to a B push though. Now Cuddy, all he has is a classic in hand. Fox Al finding one, Fox Fowl finding two, Cuddy finding one, Mackie finding another. It is down to a four V2 for Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. Not looking good. Not looking good at all, but I do like, oh, as a, <laughs> excuse me, Foxy Lee. Putting down the trip at the exact right time, just setting up uh, Gwester to get those last two kills. I was going to say, I like the uh, the fake from uh, from Maka for the side of the gangy. It was just the sky solo on A, sending out their utility, and the rotates were already coming in. Right here. So honestly, the timing was really good. Um, yeah, honestly, I. I right here. The gangies, they seem to have a playbook, kind of. They do. They are very composed. They have a lot of plays that they seem to be running through. But now, Mickey Mouse Clubhouse, they seem to play good, clean Valorant right here. They have four alts on the board. We want to start seeing them. There's the Viper Pit shutting off that A cross. And walking up, once again getting aggressive, but is punished by Fox D. Lee. I'm not sure if they're aware of the Viper. Nope. Cuddy does get the trade onto their teammate and Koma taking in U-Haul after High Rise finds the raise Elt kill. 
Quest are starting to plant, does kill Doomsie in the meantime. Coma is blind, can't see a thing, but they know that Viper is somewhere around here. One so does their teammate Cuddy alone in a 1v1v4, and they just no. they just can't do it. They yeah, the game closes out the half. 8-4. Eight 8-4 four. Eight four is not bad with how close that was looking for a, quite a while. 8-4. It's going to be a significant lead going into this half. And now we just have to see if the gangy has the stuff on the attack as well. Because some people say, some people might say, defending is the easy part. They have to approach you. They have to come to you. It's always trying to play that attack that you have to come in with a little bit more of a decisive plan. Right. But also, four rounds on defense bind is not bad by any means. No. So. And if you know anything about the Mickey Mouse Clubhouse, you know that they probably have a special tool that can help them later. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. It looks like that tool is a spike. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and they're going to try and take that tool planet on the site. Coma's rushing in. The gang are going in. High Rise finding a one. Looking for another as well. And peeking around the corner. Going in with a frenzy. Can play very aggressive. The grenade's going to flush them out. Moving in even further. Going to have to run all the way back home here. Cuddy in the corner. Doesn't have a good angle, but they're looking the wrong way. If he pushes now, he's going to have an amazing shot, but no, it gets found out, taken out by Foxtel, and Goma taking one out as well. Mickey Mouse Clubhouse falling to ruin as High Rise finds another, and Coma ends it. Flawless what start from hold. the gangy. What a hold from the gangy. I will keep saying it over and over. Locked in. That was my <laughs> that was my prediction. And as, it, as that goes on, Cuddy is going to call that timeout for the side of Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. So far, beautiful work from, from both teams, to be honest. Yeah. Both teams have been playing pretty well. Both teams playing very well, but the gangy bring out just a little bit of higher caliber gameplay I'm seeing. Like they look like they've had a little bit more plays to run through, right? They prepared a little bit more, I think, for this event. Maybe. It could also just be a team synergy thing. I'm not could sure. Be. But, um... But just, I, we've seen so many combos as well, though. Like, there's yeah. a lot more, like, teamwork going on when I see yeah. Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. Definitely. Everyone's kind of doing their own thing. They have cohesion as well. They have good yeah. synergy. Totally. But I don't see, like, I'm going to use this alt and go in, use this flashy while you chase them down. Right. The things I'm seeing from um, from the gangy. Right. Yeah, the gangy, they, they strike me as a very aggressive team, very much... Mm -hmm. um, I said earlier, proactive, proactive, aggressive, um, kind of just not really respecting Mickey Mouse Clubhouse at all, not giving them that sort of, um, not being as wary of them as maybe they should be, but it does no work breathing out in room. their, f yeah, exactly, no breathing room, but it works out in their favor. They they know they have the, uh, the skill and the cohesion to pull it off. Yeah, so far it's working out for them very well. Yeah, I think they're gaining confidence as time goes on as well. You know, when you're this far ahead, when you're five rounds ahead, you start thinking, you know, maybe I can go for that risky push. And it's a gamble, yeah. but sometimes those gambles pay off. Sometimes you double your money, you double it, double it, double it. But you just got to hope that <laughs> Mickey Mouse Clubhouse can try and get them to not win this time. Maka moving in, getting one, looking for another, just clean with these Guardian Gamer shots. Getting another in the corner, it's already whittled down to one wow. in Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. Not going to have much of a house after this one. Yeah, their, their house burned down. Um, they got to take out the, 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 the Clubhouse insurance. And just, like, just like that, they look so much further ahead. Like, just after two rounds, there's 8-4, you're like, it's clean, you know, 9-4, yeah. okay, if they win the next round, it's only four rounds, yeah. and now, with this 10th round in the bag, all they need is three rounds, you know, Mickey Mouse Clubhouse needs double that, they need six rounds, mm -hmm. just to equal it. Right, I, honestly, I love the hold from the gangy last round, it was so, like, it was like a strong chain, you know, as I say that, Cloud is gonna get that. <clears throat> is going to peek into Foxy Lee's operator. Does get taken down. I love the uh, the setup flash though from Rohu. Foxy Lee is going to get tagged by that cipher cam, but it's not much of an issue. They're just going to tuck into pocket, pull it off, watching that long angle. But little do I they know the that Mickey Mouse Clubhouse is actually making their way slowly up towards Hookah. And I'm not sure if anyone is watching that right now. Ah, uh, I think the same operator is watching 
both sides. You can easily rotate to each right now. True. It's not a great position to be in though. Maka covering that hooker really cleanly and that, almost a clat right there. Just barely not. Vox style getting one. And two are left on Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. You know, the round three operates just so hard to play against. You just don't have any range to try and play against that. Yeah. Good dodge of the flash as well. Yeah, and the Gengi already has the uh, rotations over. <coughs> Koma is with, on the site with their teammates. Mickey Mouse Clubhouse, last two remaining members in a 2v5, do decide to take that TP over towards A, but little do they know. High Rise is on their flank. Gwester is holding their exit. High Rise satcheling up, spraying down, and just another, another flawless round for the gang. I swear this is like the third round that we've seen, third or fourth flawless round that we've seen from them. I could be yeah. wrong, but there's been a lot. It's to an, enough to the point where like it's been very memorable, you know, like it sticks in your mind. Yeah, it's been an absolute great time from the gangy. They've just had so many clippable moments. Right? Yeah. That's what I'd like to call them. Just just great plays. And I'm excited to see what they do. It's just a joy to yeah. see them operate in their environment here. As for Mickey Mouse Clubhouse, they're gonna make a mad dash for this A site. It's do or die from need to start getting rounds. And they need to start getting them quick. Quester is deciding. That there's a common theme here of the Brimstone players taking showers control aggressive. I like it. I respect it. I like it a lot. High Rise is going to trade that utility, a bird for a nade, but luckily uh, no one from Mickey Mouse Clubhouse is pushed up to that U-Haul Gwester, taking, uh, taking themselves back to the A site giving him a charge control. Trades are going back and forth. Foxy Lee from Heaven does find a pick with the operator onto Cuddy. Maka finding the pick onto Doomsy. That is bombed down. Rohu and Ant getting their own kills, actually bringing it to wow. a 2v1 in favor of Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. Just like that is flipped on a dime, and I know he doesn't want to lose this op. He's going to fight to his last days are up. Gonna play very carefully over on this B side, but little does he know it's the double rotate. It's gonna be going right back over to A. That's gonna be a much harder site to approach with this AWP. Yeah, honestly, any 1vx situation with AWP is tricky just because, well, you know, if you get double swung, like that's, unless you collab them by some miracle, you're, that's kind of it. And I like this positioning from, from Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. They must be aware that Foxy Lee, I think they're looking towards heaven, but no, Foxy Lee is actually coming out towards CT. Slowly checking, looks toward triple a little too late, and swings out, gets the f kill and the fifth round for Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. They could have a way back into this game. I think they do, and they gave him the op as well. I think he can buy one right back if he wants, but he's going to be on like zero cash if he chooses to do that. They need to yeah. keep up the wins, and I think... Not, not the brimstone operator for Ant. Yeah, it's, I think he could do it. If it was anyone on this team that's good at opping, I have a feeling Ant would oh, be yeah. the one. This is so silly. I love it. This is my favorite. The, <laughs> the substance that I've seen in this if for a BO1 is crazy. It's so cool. Mickey Mouse Clubhouse are going to go for a little bit of a default. Making contact with High Rise on A. It's trading nades, sending in a bird, but luckily no kill is found. Rohu just healing up his teammate for that future fight. Foxy, meanwhile, on B, does Ooh. find that pick onto Cuddy. Clean work. Clean work. And they have to be aware. Hookah does have some presence in it. Trying their best, fighting for their life. Uh, whiffing the op shots. This is, this is, a. Uh, they're, oh my, wow, sorry. That was not the time to whip those shots. <laughs> 21 HP, he's got a few more left in him. One more bullet. Koma gets three though, and yeah, cleans okay. it up for the team, putting him five to 12. Yeah. Sorry, I, I, I think I got flashed as well. <laughs> I, I might have gone team flash because I sort of just lost no, all the words in my brain. That anyways. Was absolutely insane. You missing those shots on Fox style. That was that was risky. That was a scary yeah. moment. But it keeps the up, keeps his life, yeah. and keeps his team in this right now. They're looking really, really good. Yeah, I just like to shout out Maka for the side of the gangy. Uh, I think I saw they had like somewhere between 12 and like 14 assists, which is just insane, and single digit deaths, so the impact is insane. I love that. Meanwhile... Koma in a really cheeky spot here. Oh, Jets one. 
I think he needs to ult out of here. No, he has the TP set up. That's a good reposition. Gets oh, one, gets out. They're already at a major advantage here. Right, Gwester, once again, uh, for the umpteenth time this game, the Brimstone is pushed into showers. I feel like a broken record. Very cleanly guy. <laughs> Doomsy and... Ro and um, yeah, Doomsy taking contact. Gwester still pushed up showers. Just find the, the pick onto Ant who I believe is the main fragger for Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. It is a 3v5. This may be it for Mickey Mouse Clubhouse unless they can work some magic, get that 3v5 action going. You know, it's and it be may be possible. It's but possible. I'm not sure if they're aware of the flank from uh, from Showers. If you notice, the raise is, is, is going... Yeah, oh. and Como as well, the double flank. Yeah, but now the site's kind of open here. All that's left is one, and now... They're going to have to try and attack this A site. <laughs> right, yeah. 3v4, definitely much more doable. Getting Doomsy getting that plan down. Rohu does take contact. Is kind of alone. Sends out that flash. Blinds both, but unfortunately whips. And it, just like that, the Gangi light up the kill feed. Get three in a row. High rise getting on that bomb, defusing. And they get yeah. the game as right. well. And this is our best of one. So congrats to the gangy for winning this one out. I mean, look at that. It was a hard fought victory, but they really found their flow by the end of that half. They got into that flow. So they got into the momentum. And from there, it was just snowballing all the way down the yeah. hill. Honestly, not bad at all. Not about showing at all. I know, unfortunately, our predictions were wrong. Uh, Mickey Mouse Clubhouse did not take home the W, but that's okay because in return we got some really good gangy gameplay. They had a really strong <laughs> start though, we cannot forget that. Yeah. It was really back and forth there up until the end, you know, once the round swapped, I think that the gangy really found their footing. Totally. Um, I saw a lot of really, really good B site holds. A site was good too, but particularly I think there were like two or three rounds where. It was just, oh, they're executing B, and the next thing you know, you blink, and it's just three or more members of gang. You're on site, backing each other up, just mowing down the opposition. Yeah. It was such, it was so, it, it's kind of, I want to say it's like the, the kind of like support and cohesion you get from that you'd see in like, you know, professional professional valorant mm -hmm. which yeah it was, it was really obviously, good obviously yeah not the same but like it, it was pretty close to that honestly i liked it the a lot the seeds are there yeah the seeds are there the potential <laughs> is there and for a best exactly. of one um the the strats that were coming out um it was crazy yeah, yeah. it was good. once i feel like it was kind of their fate was sealed as soon as that chamber got an op in his hands he just honestly, had like yeah. two really strong rounds of course we saw a little bit of a messy around there later on but his team stepped up to the plate to manage to hold that one down. But overall, an amazing first round. Congrats to the gangy for taking the first win. But that's not all we have in store today. We have more Valorant coming at you very soon, but we're gonna throw it to a very quick break and then be right back for round two.
Hello, everybody. The king has arrived. There he is, Snorlax, Cyrus Snorlax. The Burger King himself. His majesty himself standing there atop, leading everybody to victory. And speaking of victory, Mickey Mouse Clubhouse just barely did not get victory last time. But we're going to be seeing mm -hmm. them again, trying to reprise that that role in their life, trying to get a win this time. Yeah. And their enemy, though, is going to be, it's a name you've heard before if you're an eSports fan, it's Tedward Gaming. Maybe a little bit different from what you've heard, but this time it's yeah. Tedward Gaming. Right, so yeah, they had to avoid the uh, the copyright laws. TDG. Yeah. I mean, if they live up to their name, uh, I'm expecting as good gameplay as the actual EDG. Like, so. even if they're, like, off-brand EDG, then that's still, like, yeah, that's still, still pretty, pretty good. good. Yeah, that's still pretty good. It's like the... <laughs> it's the yeah the EDG we have at home. Um, exactly. It's like the 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 dollar store orange juice, you know. It's still good. It's, it's still just, really good. Yeah. They're still gonna bring their A game and bring the best game they got. So I know this is gonna be an absolute explosive match. I know Mickey Mouse Clubhouse is looking to get this win. You know, you don't want to start things out with a double loss. You want to try and make it as far as you can, especially if you travel a little bit to make it here today. Mm -hmm. But. With all that being said, it's going to be a tough walk back because this is best of ones. You cannot get a read on that enemy team. Right. It's going to have to adapt while you play. Totally. Um, how do you think that this match is gonna, uh, matchup is going to go? Are we going to stick to our, uh, our being uh, Mickey Mouse Clubhouse believers? I am or going are to you say, switching allegiances? I'm going to say Tedward Gaming is going okay. to win. I'm going all in. If I'm right. a betting man, I would bet all my money on Tedward Gaming. Mm, all right. To win. Oh, I'm a real one, it. so I'm going to stick by Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. I think they have my heart. I think they have a good shot as well. This should be a very competitive, very fun game to watch. But nonetheless, I think Tedward Gaming... I think they're the dark horse coming into this. We don't know what, no, why do you think that? what they have in store. We don't know. We haven't seen them. They're a mystery. True. I mean, by that logic, wouldn't all of the teams be dark horses? Oh, no. We saw Mickey Mouse Clubhouse before. We've oh, seen oh. what they got oh, going on. Yeah, right. Sorry. We've seen their, 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 their special tool that they bring hmm. for later. It didn't quite work out for them, so maybe they'll bring a different tool this time. Yeah, one thing about Mickey Mouse Clubhouse, they have several tools. It's not just one tool. Ooh. You gotta like try different things, try new strats. Like Bob the. I builder. forgot. I'm trying to make an analogy, but uh, has yeah. the whole tool belt <laughs> at the disposal. Yes. But this is going to be very, very exciting. I'm excited to see what the matchups are, what the maps are going to be. But with all that being said, we're gonna throw it to a very quick break as all the teams get into position. We'll see you very soon.
Hello, everybody. We are here back at the summoning here for round two. We're just about to get started. This one should be one to remember. Tedward Gaming versus Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. Mickey Mouse Clubhouse coming off of a little bit of a loss. Wants to make this one a big win. Let's see it. Tedward Gaming. Who is Ted? What did he do? What did he do indeed? He and he is gaming. That is a fact here. And I don't know. Yo, know, anyone can be gaming. Let's be real. Well, yeah, obviously. Your grandma can be gaming. Your little brother can be gaming. But the, today, Tedward is gaming. Oh, yeah. Like, my grandma is an avid solitary gamer yeah, for, like, many years. We know many mothers who are mad Candy Crush addicts. Oh, yeah. My mom's so, one of those. Which kind of gamer is Tedward going to be? Is he going to be an immortal? Is he going to be a radiant level uh, threat here in the VCT? Or is he going to be a Candy Crush player? We'll have to see where Tedward lies on this scale. I'm mm -hmm. ranking, I'm betting somewhere close, closer to ascend it to immortal. Yeah, I would hope for the sake of this tournament <laughs> that uh, he's more of a Valorant gamer than a solitaire gamer, personally, you know? For sure. But, you know, we have Valor here, but that's not all we have going on today. We have so many more events, so many more games in store. We have so many fighting games. Our friend Daniil, a friend of the show here, is off and running those. He's in charge of all those lovely things. As you can see, we have Smash Brothers Melee. We have Ultimate a little bit further on in the distance or a little bit closer by. We have Tekken going on in the background as well. There he is. There's Daniil. There's the Pick man out. of the hour running the whole thing. And JJ. <laughs> One of my friends as well. Great time to be had. There's the lovely Smash Ultimate players there getting their games and a few familiar faces. That's a guy cosplaying Sephiroth. Sorry. Just had to point that one out there. <laughs> and, of course, we have Street Fighter VI as well. A lot of fighting games. But the unique thing we got going on the summoning. Sure, we have fighting game tournaments. Sure, we have these games as well. We also have up there in the top right, we have Pokemon Magic, Yu-Gi-Oh! and all the other TCGs you could even think of. One Piece yeah. card game. We War also have Hammer. Flesh and Blood, Warhammer 40k. We also have Disney Lorcana, if that's your thing as well. We have everything under the sun you could possibly want. Absolutely amazing For day sure. to be had. Honestly, it's, it's been a hot minute since I've seen any kind of trading card game, but I was an avid Pokemon player back in the day. We are going to start our match between Tedward Gaming and Mickey Mouse Clubhouse, the OGs on Haven. And so far, it seems to be just a pretty standard vanilla Haven comp from both sides. Yeah, I think it's a mirror comp. That's I, cool. I like a mirror comp every once right, in a yeah. while. You kind of get to see who plays... Uh, yeah, who works around the comp better, who plays it better. Yeah, who I plays like to see the, the comparison, yeah. you know? I'm excited to see all these players. We got Sev, we got Lula, we got Nyx. We have Snorlax. I don't know if Snorlax was a player. We saw him oh, there on wow. stage. But he's actually a player. I thought he was just, you know, you know, like the good looks, maybe the coach for the team. But no, <laughs> we also have a Duck a Doobie there on the side of Tedward Gaming. Mickey Mouse Clubhouse is going to be Cuddy Rohu and Doomsie and Cloud once again. And the lineups for both teams is going to be an Omen, a Breach, a Jet, a Sova, and a Killjoy. Right, so we can't forget about the, the man of the hour, the the. So the t Sova on Tedward Gaming, just the random key smash of letters. I think I'm going to be referring to them as just key smash. I'm just going to go with from it. here on because I don't know how to pronounce that. We are going to see. Try. Hmm? I'm going to try to pronounce it. Good luck. Murf More power to you for that. I'm not that yeah, strong. I'm not as strong as you. We are going to see Duck a Doobie putting up that split B C setup turret on C to watch Garage and the exec. I love that. Rohu. Meanwhile, on the attacking side, was staring at a wall. The but it seems like... No, it seems like Rohu is just going to send like a solo dart towards C. But I think exactly. Mickey Mouse Clubhouse is intending to end A. Or at least make some space on A. Yeah, the ancient BC setup there from the ancient era before Christ. As we all know, <laughs> the BC setup. Anyways, Nyx here in Garage. Going to be holding everything strong. Snorlax pushing up. There we go. Nyx going to find one move back over here to the corner. Going to push up once again. Rohu trying to get in this garage. Knocking on his door. Finds 
them through the war. I think he gets a bullet or two, gets one, gets the trades. No one is going to find another, though. Trades left and right. It's an absolute gunfight here in the mid. And going to find one, looking for another, but gets taken down. That's going to be Ted or Gaming, gaming all the way to round one victory. Not bad at all. And we got the, the GOAT key smash getting that final kill. Not bad at all. I do notice Ant is on Duelist now. Last game uh, versus the Gangy, they were on Brimstone. So I see they're a, a, a um, very much uh, cryo cells esque, you know, has sometimes smokes, sometimes duelist. Exactly. I'm excited to see their jet on this map, though, considering how much they were fragging on Brimstone, now that they're more um, enabled to take those fights and hopefully win those fights. Yeah, I think this kid better. Should, uh, should do very well by them. I think they're going to be very, very. Happy going into this round. So you see the garage hold from the open once again. Seb gonna have to back off. Nick's going on the offense, finding a one just barely. One more right click, that would have ended it. But just barely getting out here. Sev on the back line with Doob Ducka Doobie here. Trying to hold things steady. This smoke is about to go down. Bolts up at the fly. Rohu funds one. Dash goes in. Ducka Doobie on the backside. Gets flashed out and gets Stuck taken out. Couldn't get through the door. Now another one goes down. It's a 2v3 situation. Bomb is ticking though. Tedward Gaming needs to move quickly if they want to win this one. Only one left. It's Snorlax finding one. Looking for another. They need to move quickly. Finds another. Oh Just one more is left between them and Victor. But time is ticking. They have to fake it. Get the kill. They Can they it. get the defuse? And I think they, they do. It. Yeah, that was insane work from Snorlax. Snorlax is just multi talented, you know? Sitting on the stage, coaching the team, playing the game. What a good clutch from Snorlax. That was 1v3, wasn't it? I believe it was. That yeah. was perfect work. I love the jet dash movement, the backwards to reposition really quickly. That's crazy. I, so cool. Verticality in FPS games is like. My kryptonite, I think. As, <laughs> I, as I can see, so many others too. And yeah, just work on one plane, the X plane. You exactly. don't want to have to deal with the Y. No. That's why people love the original Doom. There is no Y. It That's looks true. like there you is, but you shoot. Side. It's just side to side. Keep it simple. But uh, these people are not keeping it simple here. They're going for the crazy plays, shooting arrow over to C, getting it in the back line. But Duck Doobie's prepared, seen that trick before, and gets it taken out of the sky. Cuddy trying to lead the charge here. They're going to rotate over as they see a little too much util over on that C site. Yeah, Nick's looking to play off that Killjoy alarm bot. Is trying going to try to swing out, get a pick on the cloud. Unfortunately, the shots do not connect. Nick's TPing away, keeping their life, but with a little less health and no shield. Meanwhile, Mickey Mouse Clubhouse probably looking to end A here. Everyone's kind of grouped up. Killjoy is lagging a bit behind, but that's okay. You know, Senti roll, that's what they're meant to do. Snorlax watching, keeping Sentry up in heaven. Shots also do not connect. They're getting spammed, trying to jump down out of heaven, but they're not able to. As I say that, never mind. They jump down into hell. Ant, though, picks them off. And now it's up to the rest of Tedward Gaming to hold down the site, and they will do so successfully, but they don't Ooh. know they're running into Nyx. Nyx does find that first kill. He gets traded out by Doomsie. And now it is just free pickings for Mickey Mouse Clubhouse to go back to A, but they weren't expecting Key Smash to, to walk up. Luckily, Ant was prepared. Does end up finding that kill, Ant dashing into sight. Just wow! They don't care. They're just gonna dash in, get four, and secure the round for Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. Excellent work from Ant. Yeah, and there's man. that fragging I was talking about earlier, that sort of being enabled to uh, just frag out, take fights, coming into effect. Yeah, I think just that little bit of nibbleness granted to Ant and not being on that slow uh, brimstone grabs him so much more versatility here. He still has those smokes he can lay down. Sure, they're not as good as the broom smokes, but they still have a little bit of util. You just have the rest of that movement to carry yourself to victory. I mean, Ant, just doing amazing right now. And now it looks like it's a split push once again, taking things slow and steady. They don't want to overcommit. Long gunfight happening over on C-Long. Going to be quit out on the side of Tedward Gaming. They're going to be all pushing over onto C. B is wide open right now. Yeah, it seems like Mickey Mouse Clubhouse is doing a bit of a default, just trying to explore their options, get in as much info as they can before they commit to anything. But Tedward Gaming, they think they have a read, and they're somewhat correct, because I think that Mickey Mouse Clubhouse are looking to end C through Garage. Wait, no, as I say that, maybe ending B instead? Could be, could be. But still, it's well, an easy rotation. 3 HP. 
Oh, Cloud on 3 HP and Mickey Mouse Clubhouse execing into B. Snorlax holding the choke. Shots don't connect. Cuddy gets that plan down and now Tepper Gaming are on a bit of a ticking clock. Yeah, tick tock goes the clock as they move around the corner. Zev gets one. Wow, Snorlax gets two. Looking for a third. Can't quite get it though. Gonna sh maybe Ant shut him down, but uh, the little gets him down. And then we see Cuddy. Not going to win the 4v1, and now to Edward Gaming stretching even further into the lead, making this one 3 to 1. And well, they have a significant lead right now. These games are very, very close. Mm. I thought Snorlax was going to kind of do a repeat of last round where they just dash in and kind of dry with like almost no util and just get three. But uh, they were halfway there. They got two, I think. As I s Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. Kind of starting to lean over towards C, Tedward Gaming, looking to get aggressive up mid. Hopefully right they can find a pick here on grass, but we will see. Misha, I like that spray. <laughs> I think that was part of the um, the arcade gun set. I think you're right. A little VR dog, but these dogs have some bark to... And they're going to have some bite as Snorlax finds one with the knives. Nyx gets the other. He's all on the prowl. Needs to get another kill, though, for the reset. Only have one knife left to his name. Needs to land it square in the head. Still. Give me a duel there. Doesn't get it, but he still has a gun to make up for it. 2v5 for Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. Cuddy and Doomsie each getting their own winning. Those 1v1s. Nyx is going to bring it down to a 1v3. Oh. Doomsie just barely living, gets the kill off the stun. Flashes nobody, but they're unaware of Key Smash. Flanking them. It is done. And that's it. That's over said. It is done. The round is over. Four to one for Tedward Gaming. Yeah, a very big start for Tedward Gaming, but they kind of fell apart there. Mickey Mouse Clubhouse really stood firm, took a quite a few of them out. They almost took that one for themselves, but right now Tedward Gaming just having an absolutely dominant lead so far. Totally. Yeah, I, was, I, I noticed that uh, I think Mickey Mouse Clubhouse took a timeout last game as well, but um, it was a lot later into the game, so I think they kind of learned that uh, earlier timeouts would probably suit them better. I'm glad that they're kind of taking that initiative, trying to like nip problems in the bud um, as they appear, instead of just kind of, I guess, letting it simmer. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. What do you think of that? I agree. I agree wholeheartedly. Yeah, but I think, I don't know, it's going to be tough for Mickey Mouse Clubhouse to come back from this. They're giving very competitive rounds, but it seems like Tedward Gaming is just coming out on top just by a hair every single round. Yeah. Do you think they're getting out-aimed, or is it more like a strategy thing? I think it's... I think it's a bit of both. I think it's the staying calm under pressure. Mm. I think Tedward Gaming goes in with a plan. I think Mickey Mouse Clubhouse comes in with a plan as well. But I think Tedward Gaming can just deal with those very intense scenarios. Like, they turned it around when they had bomb. Mickey Mouse Clubhouse had bombed down. They had the man advantage. But the fact that uh, the player on the jet on Tedward Gaming, he just stayed firm. He mm. stayed locked in. He stayed up there in the rafters. Had the trigger discipline, the time discipline to not rush in there, take a shot too early. He waited for everyone to line up, took them out one at a time. Totally. Got their victory. Can I throw a theory out there? Sure. I think that a thing uh, with Mickey Mouse Clubhouse is that sometimes they don't take enough time to um, That's a big get alt, by the way. Map control and info. And uh, yeah, that there's the... There's the <laughs> <laughs> the consequence of not a lot of map control as Tedward Gaming just push out Garage, just end the round in like, what was that, 15 seconds? Yeah, that was a very, very quick round. Tedward Gaming just has such confidence going in now because they have so many monologue. rounds to burn and they have so much money to burn as well. Right. Luckily, Mickey Mouse Clubhouse are able to buy here, but um, we'll see. They'll really have to win this round, otherwise their economy is kind of going to be in the dumps. Um, but yeah, as I was saying, t uh, Mickey Mouse Clubhouse, they tend to not get enough um, map control and info on like where everyone is, in my opinion, before they decide to exec. So maybe if they if they went towards more of like a defaulty style of play, I wonder how that would work out for them. Indeed. They're going to go for the full offense, though, instead, all stacking into this A-Rush, finding two gonna fall down finding one through all the chaos another one goes down Snorlax just getting these dash resets time and time again using another out of bullets though and out of time with the flash it somehow has been whittled down to a 2v2 situation 
but it's going to be very, very tough for both teams here. Nyx and his teammate going to have to go for a double pinch here, but no, Nyx going to just clean it up all in his lonesome. Perfect. Honestly, you know, maybe the Tedward Gaming, maybe the Edward Gaming we have at home isn't so bad after all, because so far they are looking very, very strong. They seem very aware of pretty much everything that Mickey Mouse Clubhouse is going to do, and they seem like they... They're just, like, responding in all of the right ways. It seems very easy for them, like light work. Exactly. It's it's, it's just like a, a dance for them. Yeah. They've rehearsed it. They know what to do. And now it's just the performance here. Oh, note, the, note the dance party. Yeah, the dance Nick's party. in the gone. spray. Love that. It's great. But now Nick's off angle. Doesn't get the headshot, though, but gets two tags in on that jet. It's going to be at least armor will be going down a little bit. So it's going to be tough one to fight from from there, but then we have Duck Adubi there going in on Garage. Doomsie over on, I think that's A main holding that one a very close angle. Then we see Duck Adubi pushing in. Cloud once again moving, laying down some smokes. A very slow round. We haven't seen one of these in quite a while. Yeah, not the breach. They uh, pushed up into A lobby already. Just looking for that. Timing. I don't think they're they're aware. I don't think Seth has done something oh like this God. yet. What an off angle! I don't see that very much. Oh, the trigger! Oh is no, the so trigger good. does a blend. Oh. One, two. Oh, if that was a three, that would have been massive. There was a world where they got four. Honestly, honestly. that perfect play. I did not catch the username, but perfect play from that breach. Key smash. Meanwhile, in hell, holding it down. Spike is down. Two Just weak. Last two are weak. Just one bullet help? away. Barely. And luckily picking up three on the round, bringing it to a 1v1. But Ant, they are one shot. Ant versus Nyx. Who will win it out? Run and spray. Run and spray. Maybe not with a Vandal, but we'll see. Ant, they seem to be aware. They know Does, the shots do not connect. Ant needs to plant this bomb. Ant has the constitution of an ant right now. Just a breeze will take him out. Just one well-placed bullet. As long as it's not a foot shot, he should be good. Going to be blind. The TP goes through. He doesn't know where he is. Didn't hear it. Oh, the oh no. Nyx has to win this out, I think. Nyx has to get this. Oh, he's running for time. And he gets a headshot to clear it anyways. So well played, so well played by Nyx. Insult to injury right there. He didn't even need to get that one, but he got it anyways. Just getting that little bit of extra moolah totally. deprived from Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. Well played by Ant, though, too. They picked up three. Honestly, tried their best. But, oh, uh, Ant did amazing. Yeah, ultimately. Sometimes you just need that one extra person to help you, and uh, this time it, they just did not show up for Mickey Mouse Clubhouse, but the, that's okay. The Breach just being in that snake position there yeah, on that, that off-angle corner. That getting two for free for them, was... I think. Yeah, the two for free was absolutely insane. Snorlax stand on top of the kill feed right now, but it looks like Ant is trying to topple him as he's pushing in very aggressively through this B main push, trying to take this B corner as well. Mickey Mouse Clubhouse, again, slowing it down. Most, they have a Jet Lurk walking a B, which is looking like my ranked games. But that might not necessarily be a bad thing if Ant oh. can get a kill, and they do. But meanwhile, on the other side of the map, trades are going through Doomsy and, and Key Smash, and just <gasps> everyone is dying. Nyx is unaware of Ant walking up grass, does give them a weapon, and now it is a 3v2 in favor of Mickey Mouse Clubhouse for the first time in quite a few rounds. Yeah, Nyx just looked away at the wrong time right there. We need to get this kill on the Ant, shut him down, stop his tracks. Duck a doobie now. Needs to somehow push on to site with his jet. Double push is the way to go in the smoke. They know where he is. Going to gun him down. Needs to get a crazy play right here. They're going to try and run out the clock. He's 20 health. Gets one. Needs to get one more. We're going to see a little bit of a ring around of the rosy action. Going the right way. And Snorlax saves it. From the break, 20 HP. Little time left on the clock. But somehow, Tedward Gaming clutches it out. 8 to 1 is the scoreline. And can you even blame them at this point? Not at all. Honestly, I th Snorlax has to be the standout player of this match for me. Their aim has been so clean. Their just general awareness and like game sense, from what I've seen, has been really good too. And the fact that they got two like clean headshots on 20 HP is just insane. like... And yeah, not freaking out when they're spraying in smoke. Yeah, Didn't move, that's just was like, thing. they're not going to hit me. Yeah, they're so calm, too. Like, I don't think I've seen them, like, panic spray once. No.
They are locked in. They are quiet as the sea before a storm. And it looks like we might see a storm as the Jets have their blades. Risky. Nick's also a really good player on the side of Tedward Gaming. A lot what? more of a support player Whoa. getting insane plays. Just a little bit more cerebral, a little less twitch, but oh. getting 4K. It's going to seal the deal for their team. And that's going to be Sev getting the cleanup kill on Ant. I don't want to say it's over, because it's not. <laughs> it's not. But it's not if over. if you have players, like more than one player, playing so well on your team like that, then, I don't know, it, it's hard to come back from. And that's not even to say Sev, Key Smash, and Duck Adobe are bad players by any means. They're just as good players as the ones on Mickey Mouse, but you got to acknowledge that Nyx and Snorlax are just a little bit above the rest in terms of skill right now. Oh, yeah. I did say earlier I love it when controller play players frag out, right? <laughs> yeah. It's like, it's, it's, it's like a robot. <laughs> true, true. As we see, moving in on through. Sev gets one. Looking for another. Can't quite find it, though. That could be finding two, though. With the mollies. Yeah, the mollies shredding them down to bits. Now, there's just one left. It's Cuddy. Full health. Vandal in hand. Could do something. Gets one. Gets two. Oh. Could not get more, though, as now it's 10 to 1. NT from Cuddy. You know, I remember when the trailer for Valorant came out, uh, there was a thing that said that uh, abilities weren't meant to get kills. <laughs> yes, I remember that. Um, yeah, Duck Doobie just proved that wrong entirely. They got two molly kills. Yeah, that um, was crazy. <laughs> unfortunate, really, but very, very well played by Tedward Gaming. This is just complete, utter dominance. Yeah, this is this is well, gonna be say. crazy. If they get this last round, if they win pistol in the next, I think that's it. Yeah, faster. Oh, game double than blade sword Snorlax wow. wins like, the quick draw. I mean, what else do you expect, really? Duckadoobie, meanwhile, getting their own kill on the other side of the map. Cloud also getting SVV Dooms Doomsy, killing Key Smash. Meanwhile, Duckadoobie taking another fight down short does win it out. It is a two v three. 3v2, sorry, in favor of Tedward Gaming once again. I feel like we've seen this situation many times before. Snorlax has one knife left. Do you think they can hit it? I think they can. Uh, maybe, maybe it's going to be tough. Oh, he maybe whiffs it. One, enemy remaining. one damaged. two. Buckle my shoe. Nyx is going to take that shoe and walk all the way to the second half with 11 to a one. There's too many ones on the board right now. Something tells me that Nyx is also a sentinel player just because of how much they've been just like behind em enemy lines and flanking. I've seen them on flank at least three times now. They yeah, know what they're doing. They know what they're doing. They have some crazy plays. I mean, that one round where they got 4K, just that with was everyone wild. rushing C long, the teleports, the mind yeah. games is absolutely amazing. That's going watch. on Twitter, for sure. For sure. That's why we have this stream, so we can clip moments like that. Exactly. And look yeah. back. Tedward Gaming starting it off strong, looking to get a majority mid push. Even the bomb is going mid, I think. But Mickey Mouse Clubhouse also kind of showing heavy presence towards mid. They might push down B here. I think they feel safe because of the mollies, but I think Key Smash is going to just waltz right over top of those. Just move quick and fast. And Alex getting the first pick is going to be big. <laughs> Snorlax trying to get another Cuddy, trying to tie that one up. He knows he's low. He's landed quite a few bullets. Snorlax going to play an absolutely nasty angle right here down in the pit. Cloud going to find one, find two. It's trades left and right. It's a 2v2 situation for the teams. Cloud going to move on further. Mickey Mouse Clubhouse, they're not looking too great on health as they both go down to Sev. Really. But what a good hold from Sev, honestly. Yeah, it was a great hold from Sev, and now they're on match point. They have one pistol around as well. This is looking to be the final round. Right there. But hey, they have stingers. Right they, I mean, what else can you do, really, in a situation like you this, except to. for force? But both teams are forcing, so I think this is going to be like an all-out right brawl there. kind of round. And it looks like Tedward Gaming are looking to just end it right here. Run it down, C, and it seems to be a good... I, I want to know who's actually yelling for this team, because so far all the calls have been so good. This is their weakest site. Killjoy Utility is on, in Garage instead of the site. 
Tedward Gaming just sending it, running up as fast as they can. Doomsie stunned, trying their best to live. Ooh. Does get wow. two somehow? Sev and Key Smash, but finding their own, bringing it to a 3v3. And taking out Snorlax is a big pick as well. This is going to be a much easier 3v3 with Ant being up on the side of Mickey Mouse. Key Smash getting another, looking for one more, taking him down to 2v2. A 1v2. Mickey Mouse Clubhouse, it's Ant. It's the one guy you'd want to be up right now. Is up. Yep. This is it. All on the line. They're very weak. Sev just one bullet away, but he's also one bullet away as well. One bullet to the head will spell the end for Ant, but He's not going to go down without a fight. It's all down to Nyx, a star player versus star player. And what a way to keep the run alive and winning this one out. And judging the economy, they're going to be in this for a little while longer. A little bit, unless Tedward can pull off a thrifty. Honestly, very well played by Ant. If, if you want anyone to be in a clutch, it's them. It's the main fragger. How have they been doing this game recently? I don't think I've seen the scoreboard in I a I think bit. they're still top for Edgar. They're doing very, very well. Yeah, they, they are oh, 15 yeah. and 12, doing even better than Snorlax, actually. Wow. So Nyx is now the one in the lead after that crazy multi-kill after multi-kill. And that 10 assist is also insane the, as well. The, the impact. Like, it, it, I don't even need to say anything. Like, the score speaks for itself. Nyx has had an insane impact this game. Exactly. Now looks like instead of the C rush, we're gonna try the A rush. Go on the flip side. Ant gonna get out with a quick cheeky smoke. Right go back to Sova. Gonna try and get out of here. But they need to rush this one down. The smoke gonna delay him a little bit further. Tedward Gaming for once. It's not a bad call, but they are going to go into that site with two players and finding the first gets traded out by Sev. Cuddy is on the rotate, but I don't know if they'll make it there in time. Duck Doobie is already planting, and it is a 4v3 in favor of Tedford Gaming. And they have alt, and they use it. Doesn't hit anyone, though. A little bit of a premature use of that one. Duck Doobie just trying to stall this one out. I think they're trying to stall him as long as they can because they don't want to have to win on a gunfight, and they don't. Mm. Now Mickey Mouse Clubhouse winning another one in a row. Do you see a comeback as, as something like a half? Uh, it's it possible, but it's going to be very tough. They have to not lose a single round until they get to that 12 to 12 mark. And even then, <laughs> you still have to try and win two in a row. That's true. But also, I've seen some crazy things when it comes to, you know, like I guess technically you could come back from any score. Like just a few weeks ago. Um, did you see NRG versus C9? I did not. It was 5 to 12. Uh, I forget which team was the 5, but they came back and won. So, I mean, that kind of taught me, you know, anything is possible. <laughs> I think you're right. Anything is possible, but. It's going to be tough. I think it'll mainly come from misplays from Tedward Gaming. Hmm, if definitely. they just say, if they don't keep doing this, like what they're doing now is, I think, the worst thing they could do. Buy cheap guns, buy light shields, try and just be like, oh, we'll get through it. We'll get through it. We'll get through it this time. We can win. Yeah, the ego. I think you could, but you could just, you know, burn two more rounds and have the first sure gear and know that you're most likely going to win. Hmm. I f judging on how they're playing, I think Tedward Gaming wants to get this over with quick. They've been doing a lot of just heavy, fast hits. Snorlax dashing in, getting two, and finding two of their own. Duckadoobie, though, trading it out, taking wow. that space. Snorlax easily getting a third, and this might just be it. Wraps from Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. Cuddy Maybe. in a 1v2, bring, 1v3 brings it down to a 1v2. Snorlax is a bit isolated. They'll have to win this fight. Oh. And why did I even doubt them, honestly? <laughs> Snorlax gets the fourth. Tedward Gaming win Haven convincingly, 13 to three. Very convincingly, Tedward Gaming now on the Radiant scale are off the charts. They're even better than what I was saying. They're VCT national winners at this mm. point. They are playing amazingly, but props to Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. They brought their A game. They kept it competitive, but you know, Tedward Gaming was just that much better this time. Hmm. If this was the dollar store version of uh, VCT teams, I want to see other dollar store True. VCT teams. What would it be like? Tedward Gaming versus Cloud Eight. Yeah, Cloud. <laughs> <laughs> Who would win? Sun Eight. Who you got? Clear Sky Eight. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, those are the teams we want to see. I like those parody names. I want to see more of those coming forward. Mm -hmm. But what else is coming forward very soon is another round of Valorant, and I wonder if it'll be another team, two teams we haven't seen, or if it'll be a returning player. What do you think? 
I honestly, after that game, I want to see Tedward Gaming again. I want to see it. It was very fun to too. watch. Yeah, uh, Nyx was absolutely amazing, and so was Snorlax. Just an absolute treat to watch. It was great to see them bring out those crazy plays. Those were, like, such clippable moments as well. Yeah, that like, one round where Nyx just, like, stood front sea long, no util, no help, just gets one, and then gets stunned, and TPs, it's crazy. and gets two while stunned. Insane, absolutely like, insane. You can't make this up. You just and can't. then the one that um, it's Snorlax did when it was the clutch. It was the one v two. Yeah, they were on twenty HP. That was like just insane. star players all around from Tedward Gaming. Very yeah. good stuff. So we're hoping to see more gameplay from Tedward Gaming. We also have other events going on here at the Summoning, so be sure to stop by for that if you're a local. But with all that being said, we're gonna throw it to a quick break and be right back with round three of Valorant.
Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Summoning of Valorant Tournament. We're here entering round three, I believe, very, very soon. I'm Matthias, also known as Matthias, once again, and I'm joined by Ari. Ari, what are your thoughts on what we've witnessed here today? Uh... I thought Snorlax was pretty cool. Snorlax, Snorlax was from Tedward Gaming. Absolute force of nature, living up to the Pokemon's name, unleashing hyper beams on the enemy force. But now I don't quite know what the matchup is. I think this is Mickey Mouse Clubhouse once again on the right. I don't know who they're going to be facing. Though. Phase Up, I think, was the team name. Phase Up. All right. So it's another kind of play on a on a bigger team phase oh, up yeah. phase it's not the phase clan though legally no. distinct it is not it yeah. is not they just phase up i don't i don't think phase clan would show up to uh oh they might Javelin. we might we never know we'll have to see what they can do maybe they're on the same level of skill much like tedward gaming is on the same level of skill as edward gaming we shall have to see you know you can't take these names li lightly names have power names have reputations That's true. You're right. and now we also have a lot of other stuff going on here today the vg or the fgc scene is here and vibrant and alive if you're into that sort of thing you should stop on by play a few games we have Smash Melee, we have Smash Ultimate, we have Tekken 8, and we have Street Fighter 6. We have so many games, so many awesome things happening here today. And if you're a TCG fan, TCG is happening throughout the day as well. Cool, yeah, lots of things to do, lots of fun to be had. I think I saw some other um, like stalls in the cafeteria as well with stuff in it. Anyways, we're going into the game now. Phase Up versus Mickey Mouse Clubhouse on Ascent. We didn't get a lot of time to look at the team comps, but there's a clove on the side of Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. Okay, I always love seeing clove. And a Reyna on phase up. So pretty non-standard as far as as uh, team comps go. I think you're right. These are two very um, experimental teams, I will say. A little yeah. bit more personalized teams, not the blank slate that we always see go in here. A little bit more personality to it. Mm -hmm. That Reyna, I feel like, will be pretty strong but i think reina did see a few adjustments and buffs some nerfs to a few abilities yeah, so yeah should her be ult doesn't run out anymore yeah it should be interesting i think this clove is going to be definitely a strong pick though yeah i always love seeing clove i really honestly like clove on ascent i don't know exactly why something about it is just uh I like it a lot. Anyways, Mickey Mouse Clubhouse making their way in front of B main about to walk in walking down mid as well DOV 35 tries to get the kill, but the shots don't connect. The second engagement does go their way, though. They get that kill onto Cloud and the overheal. And Mickey Mouse Clubhouse uses that to, tr to start to try to... Okay, never mind. I thought they were going to be exact. They did not do that. It went back mid. Ant and Doomsie go down to phase up, and now it is a 2v3 in favor of phase up. Just a war of attrition, whittling down a one, though. It looks like Mickey Mouse Clubhouse is going to be the one to lose it as they get a trade, but that's not enough. They have no more bodies to throw at this problem. And now phase up takes the first round and should take a comfortable lead here. Yeah, Kinetic got three that round, which is good. It's a pretty good opening. Really good opening. Yeah. We're seeing Jets get a lot of performance in this tournament. Oh yeah. I'm not surprised really. Jet's always been that sort of staple duelist. Kind of crazy how, uh, considering how many metas there have been in this game, like Jet always ends up having a place on one map or another. Yeah, they never nerfed Jet. It's because I think Jet has such a strong kit and such a strong passive as well. True, even after that... they did nerf her. But uh, Mickey Mouse Clubhouse once again running it down B main this time. Elvis at the B main choke, it does not find any kills. Larry Banks sending out that shock dart. It does do a lot of chip damage, but no kills come through yet. No kills, just a standstill, just a little bit of damage back and forth. Mickey Mouse, their jets one sneeze away from death here. Kinetic here holding the mid side as well. Looks like we're seeing a big rotate out from Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. So we see Send the Rainer up front, taking out one. It's going to be taken out right back by Doomsie. Or a man pushed up, has that marshal towards mid. I'm not sure if they're aware of it. Oh, nope. Uh, as I say that, not a, it's not a marshal, it's an outlaw, my bad. Yeah, Doomsie nope. does go down to that outlaw. Or a man spamming through the smoke, but it does not find another cuddy. 
slowly walked up trying to trade their teammates. Classic shots are being fired, but no kills come through as it is a pretty convincing round win for the side of phase up. Oh, the outlaw is so lethal on those rounds where they have to save, where they buy those light shields and just shred them with one shot to the body. That's it, you're all said and done. And now looking at the rest of this team, we're gonna see Oraman sticking with that outlaw. But now, because it was a little bit more of an expensive buy last time for phase up, it's gonna be at a di they're going to be at a gun disadvantage going into this next round. Mm, they do have an Odin, though. I think that's kind of like their the glass cannon, sort of. Because who whoever bought that Odin was uh, his broke now. Putting up that aggressive one way, kind of trying to deny that a main space kinetic pushed up, waiting for somebody to swing through. But Mickey Mouse Clubhouse is smarter than that. They know better than that, and they respect that one way. Meanwhile, and walking up cats. Unfortunately, does go down to the outlaw by Oraman. But I don't think that DOV35 was yeah. clear. They don't know that they're there, but it doesn't matter because all of Mickey Mouse Clubhouse is a main kinetic by Dice does get those two clean headshots. Aura Man following up with the trade, and it is a 1v4 in favor of phase up. Doomsy has to do this all on his own. All on his lonesome. There's the omen approaching. Almost gets the kill, but not quite. Are they going to filter in one by one? Will he take them all down? The shock carries come out. Tries to go for a light, light, right click, but right click is going to end him right there with the judge. Hmm. So Reyna and Judge. How do you feel? How do you feel about judging Reyna's? I think it's all right. It's <laughs> kind of hard to play against because she gets that kill. She can keep on the aggression here, a reposition. She can get into bad positions and just get out for pretty much for free. Mm, unless true. she gets up that one kill. True, true. Fair enough. Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. They do love their B hits. They are once again starting just aggressive in B lobby, looking to what to what looks like a just full five man B hit. I want them to win. You know, we've followed this team throughout the entire three rounds. Oh, what a have a good time, but it's looking like phase up. It's just phasing up right now <laughs> as they get one, two, almost three off the board. B main hold is immaculate. Elvis, they're unaware of the Odin. It doesn't even matter, though, because DOV 35, they just get those two judge kills. Last person's position is known. DOV are running it down, and Elvis is there to clean it up with another quick round from Phase Up. Yeah, Phase Up getting a four wins on the board already is absolutely amazing for them. Their economy is booming, and I don't know how Mickey Mouse Clubhouse is going to get back in this. They have enough to buy full this one time and I think they have enough loss bonus after this round to keep on doing that mm. but they're still not having easy rounds here. It's another hit towards in B lobby but this time it seems like they're going towards tiles instead. Doomsy stunning that B main peak unfortunately the stun misses and Cloud does go down to Elvis. Elvis getting a cl clean two kills start the round already the bomb is down and now Mickey Mouse Clubhouse have to try to win it back and swinging Get, gets the kill onto Elvis, gets another kill onto Larry Banks. Cuddy does get the kill on Kinetic on the other side of the map. Spike is retrieved. It is now a 3v2 in favor of Mickey Mouse Clubhouse, bringing the round back from the brink. Cuddy gets another kill, is traded out by Orman, and it is a 1v2 in favor of Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. Yeah, they need this one now more than ever. Going for a big teleport here across the map. They're going to for sure hear that one. That is not a quiet alt. And now he needs to play this carefully. He has some smokes he can set up, but will he be able to do so? He finds one. He knows the other's backside. He sees the tremor. Gets a little bit confused. Doesn't have the crosshair placement. Now Mickey Mouse Clubhouse gets one on the board. Not bad. Not. You know, a win is a win. I'm not going to lie. I didn't really like what I saw out of Ant there, just kind of uh, walking up by themselves. Um, Doomsy was not in a position to trade there, stuck in back boat. Luckily, the breach util came through, and he was able to get that kill onto Aura Man, but it was definitely too close for comfort i think way too close for my liking but hey a win is a win they can still full buy and they have four alts so um i don't know i'm gonna bet if this round uh does not go the way of mickey mouse clubhouse i will um i don't know what i'll do <laughs> because the round is already starting i didn't get to finish my thought kinetic starts it out with two kills cuddy does get one but still man advantage is up for phase up yeah phase up 
Gonna be one man up, but will they be able to take this up to get up onto this site? And now there's two alts on the board for Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. Don't think they're gonna use them here because they're in a little bit of a rough shape right now. Trying to get a kill. Phase up, playing very, very aggressive. Actually, defensive here as Mickey Mouse Clubhouse just rushing in onto this site. Yeah, and they didn't even have the bomb, too. I'm not really... It seems like Mickey Mouse Clubhouse doesn't have that much of a plan. Um, I don't think I, so. Yeah, I mean, I guess it's understandable just because, you know, round robin, best of one, but... Um, yeah, it's <laughs> Kinetic just... Wow, an ace! Yeah, just easy ace for Kinetic. I feel like they've played that dice spot before and it's just worked out for them. Yeah, very well. They always get a kill out. or two there. Yeah, they've just played very, very well time and time again, and now... This is looking a little bit dire for Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. I'm sure they got a point on the board, but that kind of almost hurt them as that reset their loss bonus back yeah, down on eco to now. nothing. They're going to be on eco for a while. They have a lot of alts on the board. You can definitely try and win this round and get themselves back in this, but yeah. it's going to be very tough. Pretty sure Ant is going to pop knives. Yep, as I say that. Knives have been popped. and looking out towards Childs, trying to get that pick onto Cat. Larry Banks sending that dart up to B main. And it looks like Mickey Mouse Clubhouse is going to try to go for an A push. Rohu does get that pick with the Sheriff onto D35. Kinetic, sensing the pressure, does back up, give that Cat control. But now Mickey Mouse Clubhouse have options. They can reset. Uh, or Larry okay, Banks could never just, mind. Let me just destroy their whole plan. <laughs> Let me just not ever speak again because Larry Banks just out of absolutely nowhere gets three and picks up another two, evening out the stakes a little bit. One enemy remaining. And Larry Cody Banks on, on the angle. fourth, on for the ace. Two aces Larry from two Banks different players. Just... Yeah, I don't know. I think I think Larry Banks heard me. <laughs> I think <laughs> because so. Because I didn't even get to finish what I was that saying. That is the cast. And he curse. caught three. Yeah. Um, he caught five by the end of it, getting yeah. another ace on the board. Someone who, judging on the ace, only had two kills prior, just an absolute out of nowhere. Sneaky guy sneaking around, getting the. <laughs> just, I don't know. I'm out of. I'm at a loss for words here. And now they've also evened up the alt score line. Their economy is good. Phase up. Moving up to their name. Yeah, phase up going up for another aggressive peak. Kinetic going for that aggressive peak towards B main and trying to get that shot onto whoever is bottom mid. That would be Orman with the outlaw again, I believe. Larry Banks also trying to go for that aggressive push, but does end up giving the space. Kinetic is spotted, decides not to take that fight. And meanwhile, DOV35 is peaking up mid. And Elvis, every everyone on phase up is just getting aggressive. All the kind of just individual aggressive pushes and they're just winning the fights they know they can win them elvis gets two and b main cloud does trade it out but still man advantage is up is in favor of phase up so it's a risky play there from that cypher it didn't have much health there yeah i don't think Spray they're aware of larry banks i don't think they know well now they know now they know well, he's just dancing them. through these bullets Thank god having a matrix moment and, and wow blind. Look at that, Larry Banks cashing in all this money here with Kinetic, Who trading left, right, and center. One HP and a dream for this Clove. If you want Clove on your team, you usually want them to fall Queen. first so they can have that util. Queen. I feel like we've seen this exact game like the past two matches. <laughs> this is the third time now that we've seen a 7-1 to one score line. And still, I'm noticing so like so many of the same issues that I saw in previous games from Mickey Mouse Clubhouse where they just don't... Like they're 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 rushing it too much. They don't take their time. They kind of just um, like they they keep doing these aggressive five man pushes with like the only end goal in sight is maybe you know win the round, but they don't know how they're going to win the round. Um, kind of they're, they're boxing themselves in almost. Kind of just they're running it down. Yeah, they're running it down and it's not working, and they're kind of refusing to do something else. Hey, you know, he slammed your head into a wall enough time, everything seems like a good plan at that point. True. Let's Eventually see. the bricks will break. Exactly. There we are, and maybe we're starting to see that here. Now we're seeing two kills go over. The detain goes in on the Reina. That's got to be pretty bad. There's only two left on the side of Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. This club needs to try and do something here, but it's not going to work out as two of them fall in synchronicity. I think the club popped their ult as well, so Ooh. they have no more club ults up. That's disastrous. Yeah. 
Oh, no, they still have it. Oh, oops. Oh, maybe I just heard the noise. I don't know. I always think that noise means that they popped it, but I think it's just when it's. Uh, I think that's like the. I don't. I don't want to call it Star Guardian. Whatever the, the little cute <laughs> creatures are. Maybe. The magical girl guns. I think they have like a very similar sound when you get the mm. round ending kill. All right. Makes everything sparkly. Ah, I love that spray. That's one of my favorites. That cat in good. a box. Box cat. Always, always fun to see some cats. It's always fun to see some crazy things. I feel like we're going to see something crazy. Kinetic does have his ult going very aggressive in that corner. Larry Banks sees one, gets one, wow. gets two for free. I mean, what else can be said at this point? Cloud taking that duel versus Larry Banks. Does end up winning it out. Doomsie trying to support with a stun from top mid, but oh, it does there's not the do anything. Cl Clove, Rez does come up, trying to fight for their life. It's a 3v1. DOV35 gets that clean one tap, and it's just a team ace. Near flawless round from phase up. I feel like a broken record. I feel like I have to talk about something other than what's going on on screen because otherwise I'd just be saying the same things over again with, oh, uh, phase up is uh, there's one pushing up aggressive B main and one taking the peak, kinetic taking the peak on A, and somebody is peaking cat, probably DOV 35. It's just like, why fix what's not broken? You know what I mean? Like, exactly. It's uh, Being aggressive is working for them, and I think phase up can tell they're definitely out aiming Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. And they're using that very much to their advantage. <laughs> Another five man B push from I, Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. Like, the, the rush works if you can win the gunfight. So when a guy gets two to three kills yeah, on your rush. But I, I actually love the uh, the decision making from Larry Banks here just to play off site, you know, almost immediately recognizing that it is a that five man push, saving their life, waiting for their team. Or a man does come in with that support from Market Deal V35, gets that first pick. Cuddy, though, is already on site, does get a little bit of that spam damage. It's just absolute chaos on the site. There's already people swarming in from lane. Doomsy goes down. Cuddy trying to fight for their life. People are jumping around. People are dying. Elvis closes out the round with two kills. And it's just 10 to 1. It's 10 to, to 1. We got one more round in this half. And I... If I could bet, I think this one's going to go to phase up. That last round was close. <laughs> that was close. That? But... This running it down mentality for yeah. Mickey Mouse Clubhouse is not working. Yeah. Well, is it the is it the 18 and three jet that, that sells you on that? I think it's just the fact that Phase Up is consistently getting these multi kills. Yeah, fair. Like they're not getting these trades too much. They're usually taking one or two down. If you throw multiple at them, they'll play it like it's aim labs. Hmm. I th honestly, I think they kind of consider it aim labs. That stun, oh, the That's stun big. doesn't matter. The the support utility is good, though. Ant doesn't get that kill on the kill. Oh, Reyna Don't ult. expect the judge. DOV35 does end up getting two of their own with that judge, but is traded out by Doomsie. And before I can even finish my sentence, Larry Banks gets three. And, yeah, like, what else can I say? The round is over. This <laughs> and phase up is up 11 to 1. This Absolutely dominant half. Yeah, this pistol round is the game-winning pistol round. This game could go on just a little bit further if Mickey Mouse Clubhouse does win this one. But if Phase Up win, oh wins this one, that it will be the nail in the coffin, especially if some of them survive this round. Mm -hmm. They are going to be up so much. I don't think it's going to be possible for Mickey Mouse Clubhouse right to come back you. from this. Yeah, right and even you. if they do win this round, right Phase Up you. is more than capable of, of getting that thrifty win, I think. I don't even need to see it to believe it. Yeah, some people do say the defense on Ascent is the easier portion, but right honestly, I think defense, offense, phase up has this one. Me too. Phase up doing a just pretty standard mid play. I'm not sure if that stun actually hit anyone, but uh, it doesn't matter because DO335 swings through the smoke, the trades go out. In favor of phase up, big surprise. <laughs> Omen has wow. a sheriff, DO V35 getting three on the round, and now it is Cuddy alone in a 1v4. The bomb is not down yet. There's so much time left in the round. Phase up has everything at their disposal. Cuddy does end up getting that kill onto Kinetic, but is traded out by DO V35 for their fourth kill in the round, putting phase up at match point. Yeah, match point. They still have some money left in the, or they still had some play, three players up. Oh no. Five, Five outlaws. outlaws. You know, you think that might be a meme a pick, <laughs> but I, the only person who will be able to live an outlaw shot is going to be Ant with that sheriff. Yeah. Um, Even then, outlaw 
you have two shots. You can just rapid fire and take them down even though you have armor. Yeah, not to mention um, the just team support. Uh, on its own. Oh probably. no. Oh. oh no, the Reyna they don't taking down the one person with armor. And oh no, deal V35 hitting that rat corner. Does end up getting two is traded out by Doomsy, but still the one person with armor. That bomb is, is down and, though. And and yeah, bomb is down. This is still doable. Larry Banks does get that first, gets a lot of damage though. Barely living that shock dart. Using the smokes to their advantage. And Elvis gets that kill on Oroku and it leaves Cuddy in a 1v3 against three outlaws. Yep, three outlaws. It's all that's left on the board here. And Mickey Mouse Clubhouse has one more player with a stinger. It's not a bad gun, but you don't have the range advantage here. You have to try and hit Larry Banks before he hits you. And you don't do it, Larry Banks. Always on point. How could you blame him? 13 to 1 is a scoreline. Phase up, living up to their name, Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. Not going to take any of these matches today, unfortunately, but we appreciate you coming out here. Yeah, honestly, it was a good try. I enjoyed casting um, their games, and I don't know, I wish them all the best for um, their future endeavors, whatever they decide to do. Very, very well played from Phase Up, though. Honestly, like, just clean Valorant. Really well played. Some of it, I don't, I don't think it was a fundamentals thing as much as it was a uh, just like a experience practice thing. Yeah, honestly, like, and that's okay. Yeah, they'll get there someday. They are, they have, like we said, the seeds of potential. As long as they embrace them, I'm sure they can go to even higher heights. But once again, we have more things going on today. FGC is booming. The fighting game community has come out in droves today mm, for all crowd. of these games. It is absolutely massive, so props to them. But we're also not done Valorant. I think we're just done the round robin portion. And now we're going to be moving on to the semifinals and the grand finals for today. But that's all going to be happening after a break. Do you have any predictions or teams you'll think you'll see? Phase up. Phase up? Easily. I think so. I think it's going to be phase up. Versus oh, what's the Tedward other team? Gaming. Tedward Gaming in the finals. Yeah. I think that's that's going to be see. a banger. That's going to be a good match. I hope they play each other. Yeah, me too. But with all that being said, we're going to throw it to a quick break, and we'll be right back with more Valorant action.
right, welcome back, Saints Nation. We are now in the playoff stage of the Summonings Valorant Tournament, a fantastic best of three series up ahead of us here, where we do have the Gangi up against Tedward Gaming. My name's Dan Banner, also known as Mr. Danners, alongside Ari Bones Malone. How are we holding up? You excited for some playoffs? Absolutely. I know this is going to be the Gangi versus Tedward Gaming, and uh, from what I've seen so far, I'm like really big fans of both of those teams. Mm. Um, Snorlax, I said already, was a standout player. Nyx was a standout player. Um, pretty much everybody... Yeah, I don't know. Everybody on that team is really good. So oh, yeah. I'm excited to see them play again. From what I was watching in the back room there, everybody did have an opportunity where it seems like that was their pop-off moment there. And it looks like we are into our agent select here, Snorlax. Of course, this is the team that did have the Snorlax with the Burger King crown on it. So mm -hmm. definitely stands out in my mind here. Snorlax, of course, in their game with a couple of like reverse clutches, like yeah. 1v3 and a 1v2, I believe. But then, meanwhile, on the side of the Gangi, they had a couple of these awkward, or no, I, I call it awkward, but unusual picks for at least what we see in professional. Like, we don't see as much Chamber or Yoru. Yeah. But like they it, made it, it work. Out, it comes out sometimes, just yeah. not as often as, like, the Raze or the Cypher. Absolutely. That's kind of what I love about these open tournaments where a lot of the times, it, like, sure, you could have some teams that are, like, established teams that have been playing together for a very, very long time coming in and um, playing the meta and what have you. But a lot of times we do get these groups of friends just coming in to compete and seeing how they can do in a tournament setting with it just being open like this. And in those kind of scenarios, screw the meta, just play what you like. Literally. And it oftentimes will work out in their favor. It does look like, unfortunately, though, a little bit of an off-put moment here for one of the players who did disconnect but I say okay but yeah those are usually quick anyways to fix yeah very very quick I was gonna say it looked like the one team just did not have any agents selected at all yeah. but of course here with the summoning this is not the only thing um in the uh the sum or happening at the summoning itself. Sure, this stream is mainly going to be focusing on the Valorant side of things, but of course, over at Enter the Dojo, there is going to be your mixed bag of fighting game titles alongside Smash Melee as well. And also, Saints Gaming CA2 has all the card gamers playing there. I know currently they are looking to be doing some Pokemon. I think One Piece is coming up as well. So plenty of things happening, all sorts of events happening in the hallways as well, just yeah, like random good. stuff someone brought in one of their uh, or at least personally my favorite thing is one of the motion cap or not motion captures but like motion racing rigs and that's new. i haven't heard of that that thing it genuinely beats you up but it feels so realistic it, lots of fun things nonetheless here hmm. at the summoning yeah i saw one guy playing beat saber i've yep. never seen anyone play beat saber in real life i've only it's ever been around seen for a while i'm surprised it. But, but yeah, that's definitely a a fun one itself. I believe they have like a bunch of small tournaments as well. Like they'll pick a song for Beat Saber yeah. and like come in, can you get the high score for it? Like a bunch of little things like that happening, Mario Kart and just plenty of things. I've not seen the Nexus of this full in a long, long time. But it does look like we are going to be hopping back into the game. Now people are actually starting to pick their agents here. We'll be hopping in, in no time. Yeah, Tedward Gaming coming out with that. Chamber Yoru. Just like we've seen before. Um, I'm excited to see the Yoru gameplay always. I like the double duelist coming out from the side of Tedward Gaming. Um, I always like it when teams lean into their more sort of a, like that aggressive play style, faster, um, more like fight focused type of thing. Mm. I do see Snorlax though for the gangy. Um, they're on the Viper now instead, and, and uh, Ducka Doobie is on the Raze. So that's interesting because earlier Snorlax was playing a lot of duelist. Mm. Yeah, I feel like, like, correct me if I'm wrong, but it very well could be a map-dependent kind of thing. Maybe. I know there's some maps that Viper is just basically useless. Yeah. But then there's some where she just straight up locks down an entire site by herself. Oh, yeah, she's like a pseudo-sentinel. Yeah, absolutely. So this very well could fall into one of those cases. And then, to be fair, from the matches that we have seen from uh, from Snorlax, I believe it's Tedward Game Snorlax. I'm not 100% sure, to be completely honest with you. But from, from what we see from Snorlax, if there's one person that you actually want to uh, be solo, definitely that kind of player. Uh-oh, sure. there goes Snorlax, actually, speaking of which. Yeah, another uh, DC, but should be... Fairly fast. Um, <laughs> in the meantime, let's talk a little bit about Maka because I remember when I last saw Maka play on Bind, they went like 
14 and 6 single digit deaths and like double digit assists and they were also on that sky so yeah i don't know i i want to like the support players in general for a lot of these teams have been like just doing their jobs very very well um maca especially like i think they were a large part of why their team won bind the first bind game against uh, i believe it was mickey mouse mm -hmm. clubhouse yeah so honestly it was just good work from everybody all around and uh i'm kind of excited to see the uh Sky head to head on this map as well, just see, just see how uh, Cheesecake can compare. I believe that was the batch where we finally got to see a Sky um, dog actually eliminate somebody. Yeah, see? right. I have never right. seen that ever in my life, and yeah. I've been watching a ton of Valorant. Yeah, 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 because if it hits you directly, it, it does like 30 damage. So if you're low, you know, that's, that's kind of it. It's right. <laughs> It absolutely never happens, but apparently um, somebody hacked the game and gave the Snor Snor excuse me, holy smokes, gave the Snorlax Truant and is just choosing when it wants to go at its own right here, really role playing it up to say the least. So just quickly dealing with the tech issue once again, we do have our referees and TOs notified and getting working on there. Maddie has been running all over the place. Props to him for uh, holding the fort down, but. Again, Genki Tedward, a couple of moments time should be an exciting one to say the least. For sure, for sure. I'm. I don't know. There's not a lot to say. I think there's both teams have a fair amount of skill, which is like kind of impressive considering how much they've shown from just a few best of ones. Mm. Um, sometimes it takes teams uh, a little bit longer to sort of get comfortable in like this isn't land technically but like in a tournament environment like this mm -hmm. um but it seems like everybody for for both of these teams is like very comfortable playing on a stage in front of everyone just kind of mm -hmm. it doesn't bother them too much they play their own game which is interesting because normally i'm used to uh heck even some of our own players where as soon as like they can absolutely dominate all they want when they're in one of their nests or when they're uh when they're at home but as soon as they get onto the stage, it's like something clicks. You start feeling the the vibrations of the speakers or something. Some mm -hmm. of the like noise in the background from the music or the gunshots popping off. Mm -hmm. And then just the fact that there's people in front of you just can change the perception of what you're doing and uh, just change that environment. And a lot of people have a really, really hard time with that. Yeah. But I think everybody's like you said, it's just been looking wrapped comfortable, which is pleasant to see. Yeah, I think it's it's uh, it's, it's it's basically stage fright. Mm -hmm. um, I know if I were to play on a, like at a LAN in front of a bunch of people, um, I probably wouldn't do that well just because I'd be so aware of like everyone. But it's um, so easy to psych yourself out too. Absolutely. Yeah, it's it's a lot to take in at once. I don't know. From what I've seen w with LANs, they can get pretty chaotic, um, or even just like you know tournaments like this. But still, um, yeah, I don't know. So far, everybody looking comfortable. Um, yeah. yeah, it seems like we're still under pause as of this very moment, but I guess this also gives me the opportunity to talk about the summoning as a whole just a little bit more here. And on the TCG's um, side of things, I do want to actually give a quick shout out because if you're tuning in to us, I believe it was last weekend, we did have a fundraiser for Brantley, who is a eight-year-old local Pokemon player here mm -hmm. who's trying to fundraise to go to the world championships he had earned enough points to get his world invites and obviously the, the family need a little bit of extra help to get there so anybody who happens to be in the tcg area they have a bunch of um a bunch of little door prizes a couple raffles and then of course they're expect they're uh, accepting donations via e-transfer, uh, gamingwithbrantley at gmail.com, if that's something that you'd be interested in helping with the cause there. But it's just interesting to see like all these different communities come together. Like There's no clashing with each other. There's no, my game's better than yours. Yeah, None of that. The, the, the stigmas are gone here. We are your people. Have fun with it. But with that, it does look like this break is still in progress. Snorlax is still sleeping on the job. So I think we're going to take this to a very, very quick break to get that dealt with. And we will be back on the field in no time.
There we go. We're back into the game here. Tech issues all situated for the time being. Teams underway. And it looks like it's the time by it's going to be the red squad. Off to the races. Snorlax in defense with a couple of its additional teammates over towards this B side. Meanwhile, the rest of the squad look like they're running away. Right. Tedward Gaming making that quick rotate over towards A. But uh, I'm not sure if it was intentional for Hyrus to go through that TP. I don't think so because they're running it back. Meanwhile, the rest of the squad making it up to that front site. Gwester is going to get that plant down as the Gengi prepares for the retake. Already, it's a 5v5. Yeah, here we go. This is going to get explosive, and we have the flag there. Cheesecake will find the first initial elimination, but that is going to sound the alarm here for the Red Squad to move on forward, but it is nothing but blue in the kill feed. That's going to take them all down, and that is going to be a spike diffused. Honestly, just good work from the gangy. They've been... Everything I've seen from them today has been, like, top-notch. I love to see it. Their retakes are, have been really clean. Um, their cohesion and their, they have this sort of like synergy, which I don't know if they've been playing with each other for a long time, but if they haven't, then I don't know, seeing that is very impressive. But even if, you know, they do know each other still, either way, it's very good work. Absolutely. So far, so good there for the blue side. Very, very decisive retake, at least that time. We'll have to see if red ends up going the opposite way around. And we're going to have a couple of... I was just kind of talking a, a little bit about how um, I personally love Viper, but it, there's so many like little lineups and little things that are skill issues to me uh, yeah. that make my Viper <laughs> absolutely terrible. But yeah. we're seeing right here, right now, with uh, Snorlax just being able to get these angles and line things up beautifully just like that to get the quick limb. Nice shot from Snorlax, but Tedward Gaming is not going to let that deter them. They take that jump out of Hookah. High Rise gets the first kill onto Cheesecake, traded out by Snorlax. High Rise gets another, trading this onto Snorlax. Gwester getting the plant down. duck -a -doobie, though, from CT. Rushing in with the rest of the gangy, and now the gangy are back site. They are ready to try to defuse this bomb. But Tedward Gaming is already off the site, already playing that post plant. Duck Doobie does find that contact out towards Mark, towards Mark, excuse me, towards Garden. Nyx tries to get on that defuse, does get off it though. The trades go back and forth, and it is a 1v2 in favor of Tedward Gaming. Nyx gets the first with that Guardian, and now it's a 1v1 Brimstone versus Chamber. Who? Will it be? Nyx taps the bomb. Spray doesn't connect. None of the shots are connecting. Nyx taps it again. Time is running low, but they have to take this fight. They get the headshot, but they know the time is too low. They just decide to take that gun and save. All right, so Thrifty that just tie things up here. Did have to switch the sides around. I kind of baited y'all the first time around here, but there it is. The Gangi tying this one up. But now it should be basically all even on economy, and it should be as close as possible to a fair fight. Never mind, I might be full of it. <laughs> yeah, no, it looks like Tedward Gaming are going to have some sheriffs and a classic around. Some of them are a little bit broke. Two rifles, though, for Snorlax and Nyx, which, yeah, I'd trust. Honestly, if, if I would trust anyone on that team with a rifle, I would, it would be those two. Um, yeah, fair enough. Yeah, looks like they are, are going to go for that sort of B stack, uh, which, Most not dead. bad, but it looks like... The gangy is going to have that heavy showers pressure, so I don't know. I don't think the read was that correct. <laughs> I was gonna say, yeah, they were absolutely on a collision course, and as soon as they are exposed, they thought twice about it. Still kind of hovering here through the smoke, actually. First couple of eliminations are gonna be going over to the gangy. Koma getting the last one, getting a second as well. It's gonna be all up to Sev, who does have a flank. It does take two nice and quick, but dang, does Sev have quite the work to do here. Right, but if anyone is able to anchor the site, it would be Sev, honestly. It looks like the gangy is making the, are making their way back to the B site, though, knowing mm. that Sev is on that A site. Are they going to expect oh. the chamber pushed up and spawn? No, they will not. Fox Lee does get that end ending kill onto Sev, bringing the gangy to two points. Okay. Well, they get this back down to the last possible second, too, for a little bit of bonus cash. Not nice bad. timing there. Uh, everything that could have possibly went right there for the gangy basically did. And... Like a solid opportunity there, or a good try nonetheless there from Sev to bring that at least respectable. But mm -hmm. yeah, you can lock down a site all you want if they then just switch, and especially with Bind where you got that teleporter in the middle, you can just make those snap decisions to just change your game plan on the fly like that. Yeah. And Cypher, like, sure, they'll know it's happening, but can they actually do anything about it? Not exactly. Not exactly, Not yeah. Look, but uh, the Gangy taking that aggressive showers control. It doesn't work out though. Koma does get taken down by Duck Doobie.
but the Gengi don't give up that showers. They kind of just pause. They wait for any more mm -hmm. aggression, but it's not coming. The Tedward Gaming deciding to hold their ground, just stick to where they are. Rays is going to rotate, though, over towards that B site as they're expecting a rotate from the Gengi. Let's see if they're correct. Yeah, they might be on to something, but you can see that the Gengi, they didn't even necessarily have the spike in their possession. They were really trying to scout things out and then make the decision later. It is now going to be picked up there by the sky on the side of the gang. East Norlax looking for a duel. May not have got the elimination himself, but Duckadoobie is right there to get the elimination. So a three on five. Gangi uh, underpowered, but may try their luck at this A push. Did you see those trips at short? There was like one on top of the other. I've never seen that. But it works out for Sev. They get one, but do right. get traded by High Rise from Showers. Now it is up to Mecha and High Rise doing this in a 2v4. Yeah, sure, they gave up their Cypher, but that sounds the alarm for everybody to run towards this A site. And we can even see the Viper on the side of B just waiting for the teleport to happen to answer. Not necessary, though. Nyx there on the Brimstone, going to lock this up. Clean, clean as always. I finally, I'm, I'm glad to finally be seeing like an even game, you know, because so far all I've really been seeing is, um, you know, 13-3, 13-1, which those are fun, those are fun too, you know. And, like, don't get me wrong, it's fun to see sweeps sometimes, but if it's all you see, it gets a little. The first game of the day stale. was really weird though, when it was Gangi and the Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. Yeah. That game did actually start extremely close, yeah. back and forth, with a lot of unusual plays as well. That's true. But you can tell when certain teams just get warmed up or get a little bit more comfortable, a little bit quicker than others. Yeah. And you can see, at least in that instance there, the Gangi was able to run away with it. But you are seeing some major resistance here from Tethered Gaming is now Gangi again, moving through showers. There are people just surrounding this entire area, regardless of which way you're moving, you're running into someone. Right. But note the aggressive hookah push from Tedward Gaming on the B side. It might work out for them. They may be able to get a flank timing as the rest of the gang are grouping up towards A. Koma getting in with that Yoru ult. Does get the shorty kill onto Nyx. TPing oh, back. Oh my goodness. Duckadoobie's ult somehow gets three people. Duckadoobie on for their fourth. Close to the ace. All they need is one more kill. Now it's up to Maka. Do they deny the ace? Do they clutch the round? Maybe. Honestly, oh, Duckadoobie's right there. Only time will tell. I'm not sure if they're aware though. Oh, Maka looking for the denial on this ace, but it is going to be Cheesecake who does find the first initial elimination. So that is going to be a 4K nonetheless there for Duckadoobie, but a fantastic round there from Tedward. Right off the back of that triple kill on that rocket. Yeah. Holy smokes, what a play. Honestly, yeah. I was, I was kind of doubting um, the roll switch between Snorlax and Duckadoobie at first, just because, you know, it was Duckadoobie who played Sentinel. So I figured, like, mm -hmm. you know, I, I just didn't know that how you know where they were of duelists, but uh, luckily they seem to be proving themselves so far pretty well. You know, we don't you don't see a 3K with a raise all very often. Usually people try to scatter more, but uh, yeah, it worked out for them. I mean, if they're ups, if they're gonna uh, crash, or if the last couple of rounds, if they just crash showers like that, you might find yourself an opportunity to catch them all bunched up. Sure enough, exactly what ended up going down. So now. Tedward Gaming with the lead moving forward. It is going to be the Rays picking up the spike, moving on towards the B side. A side has gotten a lot of love so far here, but actually going to drop this off and then just uh, wait their time here as Cheesecake may be looking the final elimination. Yep, they're getting that aggressive hookah fight though, but there's a cross, I'm not sure if they're aware. Snorlax getting that spray down. Somehow though, the shots are not connecting. Oh. Both so low, but neither one of them dies, and luckily Raz is gonna be able to get oh, yeah. healed by that sky. Oh. Meanwhile, <laughs> Nyx hitting a really nice shot onto Gwester. Brimstone v Brimstone, Nyx comes out on top, but uh, will they be expecting two more players? Yes, luckily this is very winnable for them. I lied because Koma <laughs> just shoots them in the back. Duckadoobie and U-Haul trying to hold their own gets one. Oh. Gets the second they were so low, Koma does trade it out. But now it leaves Snorlax in a 1v2. Okay, but w hear me out. We've seen this before. Snorlax now on the Viper this time by is going to hear this spike get planted. Cursor's in the right spot. And as you can see, where did they go? Actually, all the way on the other side here. And then Fox is going to get taken down. Snorlax looking for one more, but it's Koma, and his shots have been on point. Are the Is the fake going to come on through here? He's actually sticking it. Is it going to? He's going to absolutely oh, get just, away with it. I think Koma probably expected him to tap and then push, yep. but, uh, you know, they say pros never fake. Snorlax <laughs> clutching up, fragging, doing it all these past few games. I mean, if, if there's one of those things from watching like competitive Valorant, you'll see, I guess, something for 
easy for somebody to pick up is the fact like you, you tap and then you turn on somebody and you fake it and whatnot. Yeah. And that's a highlight play. That's something everybody wants to have in their, as a part of their highlight reel. So it's really, really tempting to go for. Very rarely do I ever see somebody immediately go for the spike and just stick it. They're almost always looking for something, but we do hear the alt pops coming out here from the chamber. That is going to be the coup de grace, ready to lock and load and find a one shot. Honestly. Gangy looking for that aggressive A pressure once again. I haven't seen, the, I don't think they've, have they entered B yet? Maybe once. They faked B, but they've never actually like full pushed it, I feel like. Yeah, it's the, so this, looking very attracted to this A site as usual. Not too bad. If it works for you, then if you think it'll work for you, then go for it. Three up short now. Is Nick's going to be aware of that chamber op? Probably that's why they're not peeking. Foxy Lee does have to get out of the range of that Ooh. Molly. Meanwhile, your ult is already backside pinging out those locations. Will they get the spam down? Foxy nice Lee shot. does get this shot onto Nyx. Will they, they be aware of Coma? Decides not to take the fight. Cheesecake gets their own kill onto Foxy Lee, taking the chamber up out of the equation. I mean, I'm sitting here waiting for this uh, A site to turn into a mosh pit, but if anything, it looks like Snorlax is the only one holding out here, still waiting for the teleport play to come on through, which, fair enough, don't all in until you know for sure. But we have the bird's eye view, and we can Ready? see all of the red team, all the gangy pushing towards this A site, and now it seems like it is the time to move. Snorlax is going to make their way over. Mac are going to lead the charge up against two, but with the spike going down, no shots being fired, now it's going to be the uh, Tetra game gaming squad try to retake. We, I, we've seen the retakes before. They, it's what definitely doable. Duck a doobie and no Seth way. getting to Duck a doobie. Nice. Oh my, I didn't even get to finish my sentence. Again, these players are just so fast. Duck a doobie out of nowhere gets three kills. Sev getting the last one and just holding true to the Tedward gaming retake. That's just it. It seems like Tedward are completely content with the fact that, okay, you plant the spike, our retakes are just going to be that much better. And they've been able to rely on it these first couple rounds mm -hmm. here. And the gang, you're looking a little bit lost. And to be fair, I don't mind the timeout in this situation because you got to go to the drawing board as quick as possible here and figure out what to do because you can kind of see from their last couple rounds they're really taking their time as to where they want to push the spike but then they end up just pushing a anyway and it seems like they're kind of running into a brick wall yeah i feel like i've seen this a lot today where the p teams just aren't taking their time enough they they could but maybe it's a mix of they don't have enough info gathering util or they're just impatient i honestly don't know um but I feel like that's really been the downfall of a lot of, of these lost rounds for the gangy. Um, and honestly, a part of it also would just be the, um, the aim diff. Not to sound... We've seen a like, few of those today. Yeah, yeah, like not to sound rude. It's just like sometimes your opponent has a good day and you get out-aimed or out-brained. And, may, and oh, that, yeah. that may very well be the case. Maybe they're just getting out-brained. And um, I don't know. I've seen the gangy pull out the good strats before, so they definitely have the chance to bring it back and do it again. Yeah, 100%. This is still extremely early. Lots of time to go here, but that being said, Tedward Gaming, so far so good. They're the ones in the driver's seat able to make the plays happen here. But if I'm looking at this right, they might have actually read the Gangi like to a T, because yeah, Tedward, or rather the Gangi, were all looking towards that B side. And Ooh. just like that, Snorlax is going to trade one for one, but the alarm is sounded, and the rest of the team members are on their way. Still, the Gengi not exactly backing off, trying to sort of regroup back towards market, though whether they'll re-hit or not is still unknown. Foxy Lee regrouping with their team. They know mm -hmm. they've drawn out rotations, so they're if they want to catch this time and get, get onto the egg when it's at its weakest, they got to go fast. I mean, they did catch the Cypher. They did catch Sev on the rotation. However, they made sure that at least somebody was still back there, as we do see Duck Doobie there on the race. Fires a rocket, launches it, is going to trade one for one. No triple kill this time by, but now the three on three. What does the gang end up doing? They might try to go right back here. Fox is still on sight, but everybody else seems to be. I don't think they're aware, Coma. Yeah. Coma does yeah. get that kill onto Cheesecake, opening up the B site for the gangy. And now it is up to Nyx to try to get this opening kill. 
This is a very, very rough position to end up being in. Trying to sneak on through. Fox is still all the way on the A site. Not gonna matter though when Koma and High Rise can secure this one. So a beautiful play there from the Gangi. They <laughs> faked their position on like four separate occasions. <laughs> But they got the round, so nice on them. Honestly, if, if you need to use mind games to win, then you need to use mind games to win. It's okay. just that simple. Can we just quickly shout out the fact that this is round go or going on round nine, and we have Ducka Doobie with 14 eliminations. That is insane. That is absolutely insane. Yeah, my bad for ever doubting you, Ducka Doobie. <laughs> You've proven yourself through and through. <laughs> Definitely the standout so far. But again, this is still so early in the game here, not even at halftime. But now... One more time here for the Gangi. Looking like, once again, Spike just down in the middle, gonna take their time. Maybe a little bit of a gunfight off the start here, but no heavy committal options off the start. Right, and you will see Fox, Foxy Lee trying to get that Lurk up towards A, but is blocked off by that Viper's Pit. I don't think they want to contest. Meanwhile on B, Cheesecake in Tube with the support of Sev, but the, the Gangi hasn't exact yet. They're just trying to sort of bait out utility, I think. Try to gauge their options. It's kind of what it felt like they did the last time where they started off on the B site, tried to bait out some of that utility like you were saying. Then they went to A. Then they kind of went to the middle and hovered for a minute. Then they finally eventually went towards B. But mm -hmm. now this time once again, right back towards the A site on a collision course here with Snorlax. Does Maka spot them? I don't think they did. Yeah, Viper, Viper on not being cleared Snorlax, getting their one. Luckily getting out with their life but they are t tagged down to 48 HP. So all it would take is one shot. Cheesecake, almost oh. full blind, does get the headshot onto Coma. Another one onto Gwester, uh, uh, holding the site all by themselves. Maka also dies to Cheesecake. Cheesecake picking up their third, and now it is high rise in a 1v5 with the bomb. Yeah, the plays could be made, but you're running out of time and you don't got much space to work with, as we can kind of see. Everybody collapsing in here on to high rise. Granted, yes, that tel teleporter is right behind you, but if you can't run to it, there is no chance. And just Tedward in that round um, were able to really punish the Gangi for what felt like extremely like scattered comms. Of course, I can't necessarily listen in on the communications, yeah. but it seemed like they had a plan. Something obviously went wrong, and then everybody went in their own direction, mm. just making like 2v1 scenarios. And I mean, Especially when your shots are hitting as much as Tedwards has, you're not going to win that fight. Right. Looks like the gang are trying to gonna go for it, like a sort of default play here. Which is good. You know, I've been saying this. Slow defaulty plays, sometimes they work. Sometimes they're like the best option for you, depending on how the game is going. But Tedward Gaming, they are going to take this opportunity. Right. Smoke off that deep shower line, try to get that orb probably. And the gang here are going to respect it. They are not going to go. They are just going to hold for that aggressive push, even though it will never come. Just try yeah. to reevaluate what they need to do. Yeah, and of course, Tedward, they don't have to move in this situation. Gangi have to make the play onto them. And if they can just keep holding strong and landing their shots, they are going to be an absolute brick wall to have to deal with. But we can kind of see, even after all this time, the Gangi has moved up so much, but nobody's even given away their position, really, on the side of Tedward. And it's so scary. Finally, there's going to be some shots fired over on the B site. And it is going to be Cheesecake with two. But actually, that does end up going into the favor of the Gangi. Right, but I think Maka had a flank on someone there in short. I'm not sure if they will get that kill, but uh, Snorlax is actually surrounded here. I think they're aware of the flank, though, looking towards short. We'll get that kill onto Maka, aware of the person back site. They know that they're triple. And they're Snorlax, split up again. Snorlax has the opportunity to go huge here if they can just get one more kill. And plus that rotation from Cypher. Yeah, but there's also here. the rotation there on the other side. High Rise this entire time has planted on the B site. The, the fake of the century. Yeah, while the, uh, the chamber is on A, just causing a distraction, has had all day to get this thing planted and get into a post-plant position. But he might get pinched on in just a second. It's just pinches on pinches because High Rise is getting pinched. Luckily, it relieved some of that pressure, oh. taking down Sev. And now it is Snorlax in a 1v2. Can they do it? Oh my Gets god, one. not again! Oh, okay. oh close. <laughs> Honestly, close. NT. Foxy Lee will close it out, getting the fourth round for the gangy. I mean, most of the time I see players in that situation, I expect that uh, 2v1 to go a certain way. But knowing it was Snorlax, it's like, there's an out here. He <laughs> they could actually do this. Yeah, like on and I had my, my breath held there for a little bit. But Me too. No, good on there on the gangy. Solid play. Cheeky little play out of high rise there to 
use that teleporter and just yeah. psych out Edward Gaming. That round so, was so nicely done. Yeah, so that sorry, that Spirit. round was like kind of weird because there was a point where like all of the players were just pinching each other. So yes. I'd look at the mini map and there would be like one person surrounded by two enemies, and then I'd look at that enemy and they would be surrounded by. It was just like. Fire! Inception, oh. but meanwhile, as Rocket. I'm yapping away, High Rise is execing onto that A site, going so deep into CT, letting that rocket fire will find the pick onto Duck a Doobie, securing that kill. Nyx and Cheesecake now ready, uh, waiting for that retake, waiting for the Viper, sending out the dog, clearing the path. Meanwhile, Gwester will get that plan down in the 3v4 in favor of the gangy. Yeah, it's gonna get messy here, but granted. We'll have to see. Maybe Cheesecake's had a couple of good rounds here in terms of eliminations. You got Snorlax still here as well. But with that spike being down, the time is ticking here. And Nyx is here as well. Just going to clear out a couple of corners with the Mollies. It is just a matter of time. High Rise is here. They're ready to fight, but they They're actually aware. do run into Nyx, who does shoot him down with the Vandal, which now leaves this up to a three on three. Cheesecake tapping that defuse. The trades go out one for one. The trades oh, no! are just going back and forth. It brings it down to a 1v1, but Gwester is higher HP. Cheesecake running out of time. Has to stick, has to swing, and Gwester nice. wins out the fight easily. <laughs> I was really, really worried there for Gwester. Started that fight and then I think immediately ran out of ammo. And it's like, oh no, not like this. Don't go down because you <laughs> forgot to reload. Yeah. But no, had the opportunity. Barely any health, but hey, as long as you have at least one health, that's right. all that matters. Right. And they almost brought this thing back up to a tie. Yeah, they honestly have the chance to because they have, they're have they on a full buy. They can afford op, and uh, Tedward Gaming is on a bit of a broken buy. Sev only being able to buy that stinger. And duck a doobie. Two judges. Trying to, yeah, two, two judges. Hopefully trying to capitalize off those raised satchels. I mean, if you get the Gangi into a point where they start scattering, panicking, and um, taking their own paths, okay, this will absolutely eat that play up. Yeah, totally. But you're really relying on the Gangi cracking here. And after getting a couple of rounds like that, I can't imagine their mental is on the negative side, at least as of this moment. It's a possible opportunity, but nope, not this time here. Fox with the op. Again... The gang taking that shower's control, sending Sky away, but no, they're regrouping. They're trying. I think they're trying to do a contact play, trying to get a pick somewhere. High Rise about to walk into this judge oh. cross is just obliterated by Cheesecake. Fox Lee somehow getting the kill onto Snorlax, so that's one of the judges out of commission. Cheesecake flashes to get away. Have to be aware of the presence in long. Swings, unfortunately Unfor though for them, Foxy does miss that shot. Will they dare to re-peak? I don't think so. They're just staying tucked under that hookah. Maka meanwhile gets the pick onto Nyx and it looks like the gangy are gonna be rotating over to that A. And it leaves Sev on their lonesome trying to their best to hold down the site against uh, three players? Play. Yeah, four, about to be four. Okay, and just like that, now Sev found one, but there is still three more where that came from. Does realize they're calling it out to the team, but Duck Doobie is still on the other side of the map, so it's going to end up being a two-on-three for this first little bit, but Sev gets the first little elimination here, but Gwester is on hot pursuit. Can they pull it around? No, Cheesecake actually has arrived right in time, and Sev getting a third elimination in this round will also score the defuse and get Tedward Gaming up to seven. Honestly, I think Sev was the star player of that round. What is the sight hold really just masterclass. Sight hold masterclass. Three for them. That's really all you could ask of your Sentinel is mm. just to, you know, hold down the sight. Getting kills is like a bonus and they got three. Right. So they did more than their job. A lot of times that Sentinel player kind of ends up being like a ward from League of Legends of sorts where like, okay, you went down. That means there's people here. Okay, let's go here. Yeah. But yeah, getting the elimination one for one, absolutely amazing. Yeah. And getting seven, plus five, off that? Yeah. All right. 7-5 half defense bind, not bad at all. However, five rounds on attack bind, also not bad for the gang. Oh, so really, sure. this could go either way. Absolutely. Definitely shaping up to be a close series. Of course, a reminder, we are in best of three territory here in this semifinal matchup between Terror Gaming and the Gangi. So we are not quite done, even if this match does end up turning out from a, bl a blowout from this point on. We have Sunset up next for game number two and Lotus if we need it. So plenty of Valorant still to come here in the semis. But it looks like the two teams are going to about to meet up down a short. Gangi going for that aggressive short play, not seeing anyone as the Tedward Gaming was playing back, expecting an aggressive play. Koma about to take contact with Nyx. Oh. Frenzy goes and it, it, it does just that. It causes a frenzy, it sprays him down, gets the kill. High Rise holding that short exec. Snorlax in the smoke, trying to get a cheeky kill. But the Gangy are not pushing. They got their first blood, and now they're just waiting. 
Yeah, I'm going to definitely take their time here. Tedward looking for the opening here towards this A side. Through the showers we go. Cheesecake alongside Nyx, but that flash just kind of messed wow. everybody up. And that just opened the door wide open here for Tedward Gaming to get this spike down. There's still two players left on the side of the Gangi, but dang, this is going to be a hard one. Was that Cheesecake flashing? Or was that the other sky? I have no idea, but either way, it was super effective. Honestly. As we now have Coma Frenzy in hand, nearly taking out Cheesecake, but the reload is going to absolutely get punished. Going to be the swap on over. Oh, does spot out Nyx, but Nyx going to prim down, and that's a 4K, actually, the here classic. in the pistol round. Free gun, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> Nyx yeah. doesn't need to spend money. Don't to reinvent to win the wheel. The game. Just They're pick, just good. <laughs> just pick the, the classic and be good, I guess. Yeah. Dang. Well done. This does ask the question though, what is the response going to be like from Gangi? Because assuming that they lose this eco round, which is definitely possible just because of gun advantage, and yeah. considering that Tedper Gaming has two Vandals oh, geez. and a Guardian, yeah, this is a powerful loadout. So what do they do from here? Just, How do they get back into this game? I was going to say, Gangi, just accept the fact that this is going to be an eco round. Don't try to force a stinger or something. I know they were thinking about it there for a moment, but they did end up going just for a pure uh, eco round and see what you can get. Tuck a doobie there with the double. Make it a triple. triple there with that judge. Super effective in the showers. Do not challenge. Just too dang good. Do not pass go. Do not collect $200. <laughs> exactly. Tuck a doobie is on that panel, and they are waiting with that judge. To be expected, really. Um, as long as the Gengi could get some orbs, then it wasn't an all bad eco round. Foxy Lee just holding for that CT aggression, but mm -hmm. Tedward Gaming are taking no chances. They are not letting that ego get to them. We're waiting for the Gengi to walk into them instead. And we are actually seeing a bit of a flank here between Duck Doobie as well as the Cypher there. It's going to be Sev going to end up getting the shot there, sneaking up on Foxy. Um, um, Akko's going to manage to take out Duck Doobie though, so he did manage to get one. But will there be any more from that? The bird is going to try to change things up, and that was actually really, really close. Good attempt there from Akka, but nope. Nick's going to shut things down, as we expected this round should be. Honestly, yeah, decent damage. Not bad at all. So now, now, it's the gang time, now it's time to go, though. <laughs> yeah, now it's time to go. Now it's time to get active. The gang, you need to start thinking about what they're going to do to sort of win this round, because assuming they can win it, their economy... Well, let me put it another way. If they lose this round, then their economy will be in a bad spot. So this round is crucial for them to win. Absolutely. If you have to take another eco when your opponent is already at 10, you're not giving yourself much wiggle room, as we are seeing Fox. Could try and maybe get a cheeky little pick with the Marshall, but nobody home this time by. Nope. Oxley is going to jump into that teleporter just to save themselves from the wrath of the Cypher darts. Duck a doobie. Starting that exact double satcheling oh, in. But luckily for the, the gangy, the site is all clear. But Duck a doobie looking to hold that aggressive um, CT angle. And they were just completely content on beelining this B site. And they have the utility necessary with these judges and other close combat items to be able to just catch them on the rotation. Every completely single hallway has somebody on it. Exactly. Everything is just blocked off. What do you do? You hope for a miracle. And as a, I don't think any miracle has come. Oh, hang on. Hey, I lied. I lied. Because no, wait. Oh, my cast goodness. I did it again. I cast her cursed. Um... Hey. Yeah, so basically whenever I say <laughs> the opposite will happen, um, oh my high rise goodness. ends up surviving, winging, winging, winning it or out for the gangy, and oh. they, they do end up winning that crucial round. However, they did, uh, the Tedward Gaming did make it very expensive. I tell you what, after a round like that, I, w I don't blame you for spraying a little bit of extra pepper on the, on the graves that time, because in theory, that looks like an impossible loss there for Tedward. They had that thing planted. Every hallway had a judge or some sort of uh, player covering it, Utility. but yet they still breached it. Yeah, somehow. But st I don't know if you noticed, but the gang's eco is still not very good. Mm. There's only one rifle. The rest of them are on, like, sheriffs or stingers. Oh, yeah. Foxy Lee getting ready for that aggressive play does catch at Sev out towards market. Sev going to cage across, trying to get themselves out. And meanwhile, the rest of Tedward Gaming oh. looking towards A. Snorlax gets a clean shot onto High Rise. Another oh. Oh. full blind kill on Tacoma. I think as they were Yoru ulting. Duck Doobie, aware that someone is in the smoke spraying, but the shots are not quite connecting. Gwester trying to get that timing, but is unfortunately taken down by Nyx. And now it is up to Foxy Lee trying to get 
Oh, literally my. anything they oh. can. Fox Lily and Maka. Maka getting two, but Duck and Doobie getting two of their own and bringing Tedbury Gaming to their 10th round. Okay, oh, yeah. Some, I guess exactly like you were saying, they're sure they won the round before that, but they definitely did not go without uh, a couple of wounds in terms of their economy. And it did kind of show there. The one player was able to actually duel, get a couple of eliminations for themselves, but as soon as it got down to the pistols or the sheriffs or what have you, you can tell that the Genki kind of struggled a little bit. This time yeah. by, not so much. Everybody has at least a Guardian or better. Yeah, and did you notice Foxy Lee had a, enough for an Operator? Yep. Very true. Put that on the chamber. What? They're going to be right at home, but can they find any value for it? We will see. We will see. Foxy Lee pushed up aggressive, trying to make the most out of this Operator, but Tedward Gaming is just so aware. They're just waiting. They, they must know. They're just waiting for oh, something to happen, something to walk into them. Gwester holding that hookah. Everyone just, no one's moving, no one's doing anything. Everyone's just holding angles, but meanwhile, someone is walking up into hookah for free. Foxy oh. Lee, getting a little cheeky, ends up getting a nice cheeky kill onto Nyx and getting out with her life. Look, I don't care if you could speed boost yourself or what, once I op crosshairs on you, good night, my friends. <laughs> but uh, one player getting taken off the board there from Ed, uh, I said Edward Gaming, but Tedward Gaming. <laughs> this isn't that kind of broadcast. <laughs> yeah, but as we do here, actually the rocket coming on down. It's going to be Cheesecake on an elimination, and Duck Adobe is going to get the raise there of High Rise. That's going to get Cheesecake the fire off the ultimate as well. Find everybody. Wow. Gets the call out that everybody is right in the spawn, and you can see the rest of Tedward ready to hunt. What can Koma do at this point? The, popping, the gangy popping a sky ult of their own, Sev. Being pushed back a little bit into you, but it, it is still numbers advantage for Tedward Gaming. Duck and Doobie on that nice. offense. Just clean movement, clean shots, oh. getting both, just spamming both through the box. Look. High octane gameplay. What can I say? This is high caliber Valorant. I know this is a skill issue. I didn't even see the top of their head at all, let alone <laughs> being able to react that quickly. Damn, yeah. mate. All right. That is going to be elimination number 24 here for Duck Adobe. Absolutely the class of the field here on Vines for game number one. Tedward Gaming 2 wins away here from taking game number one. Sunset is on the horizon, but. Uh, the was game, that a pun? That wasn't intentional, Sunset but. Sunset on hey, the horizon? Hey, I, I have the. The dad card, I can make dad jokes now. Fair. I, I can get away with it. <laughs> All right. Looks like both teams are trying to get aggressive. Tedward Gaming with that five-man push down long, and meanwhile, the gangy just hard stacking A. They had a read, but unfortunately, it was incorrect. Coma sending that blind out. Does okay. get the shorty kill onto Sev somehow, Cheeky. They, I don't know if they're aware of Maka. They are now. Maka, though, dinked. A gust of wind could have, like, knocked them over. And Where's the dog? It. <laughs> Cheesecake getting that plant on Storlax. Oh. Ratting in the smoke gets a kill on Tacoma. And now it is an even 4v4. Yeah, but it is messy. Lots of utility all over the place here. Duck Doobie finds one, finds the second one as well. But it's going to be Gwester. Still one of the last hopes here for the side of the gang. He is going to end up going down. Now it is all up to Fox, who has just gotten the. Uh, the glimpse of the white light securing their death in this round. The light and at the end of the tunnel. Exactly. And now Tedward, game point. Yep. Honestly, there was not much Foxy we could do at the end there. It was just blind and a concuss and then blind again. Yeah. That is that is peak Valorant for you. It's just you can never see. You can never do anything. You just have to hope that you live. Yeah, I don't care how good you are in that position. You're, <laughs> pro you're lucky to get one. It's okay, though. It's okay. KD doesn't matter as long as you win the round. <laughs> um, Absolutely. Tedward Gaming looking to close it out at, at with another A hit, but the Gangy this time reading them correctly, stacking that site. Foxy Lee getting aggressive oh. does end up finding one and getting out with their life. Will they be aware of Coma? Cheesecake getting one of their own. And being able to get Duck Adobe off the field so quickly is definitely a momentum builder in its own right, but. You can't just ride the momentum. You have to actually use it immediately. We'll have to see if that ends up going through. Some smokes, smokes are going to make Fox's life here a little bit more difficult as we have jump oh. scare <laughs> chamber in this instant. Fox Lee going to get the elimination. And now a four on two in the favor of the Gangi. Might be able to keep this game going. Maybe, but I feel like it's going to be a 1v4 very soon. She's keeping 10 HP. He does somehow find Foxy Lee with a nice timing. Does, is going to have to plant the bomb, though, but, uh, though they can really die to any spam right now. Mm -hmm. Sev, meanwhile, is on the other site, on the other end of the map. Cheesecake, still trying to win out this round, ripping that ult. Sev, just looking for a timing. Really, the, it's all. this is all about individual 1v1s, and it's, uh -huh. it's up to Tedward Gaming to win them. Gwester, though, is aware. 
of Cheesecake, but luckily Cheesecake makes the call, taking the TP back to B, meet up with their teammate. And I think that Koma is about to catch someone in spawn. Yup, Sev goes down, and now it is a 1v3 All right. for Cheesecake, and they cannot pull it off. 12 to 7. Okay, so this time it was Tedward who kind of panicked and found themselves in individual positions. We had seen the Ganky kind of get away with this in a couple of rounds where they were able to play the mind games a little bit, mm -hmm. but with Tedward in the same position, not quite able to pull it off. So if there is one thing going at the Ganky's favor, that would definitely be it. Another thing I suppose be the fact that they're able to get these full buys pretty well uncontested as of right now, considering, yeah. well, they only have the one round left. Yeah, I mean... This round should be pretty even. The ult economy is, I think that each team only had one to their name. So Koma gonna take that aggressive showers presence again, is gonna get spooked off by that dog Snorlax lurking up. I don't think no way. they're aware. But they are. Know. They check underneath them and gets that easy free pick on the high rise. Oh. Foxy Lilo swinging through the smoke gets one. Koma gets one of their own. Nyx trading it back. Spraying through these smokes. This is all about spraying through smokes. Is that Duka the Doobie get, gets a, No, that's a satchel, satchel kill. Satchel, satchel, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Duck and Doobie getting a satchel kill, putting it in a 3v2 in favor of Tedward Gaming. Gwester and Maka from Heaven and CT trying to do all they can, but their locations have been revealed, so how much can they really do? Oh, jeez. Yeah, we can hear the spike ticking away here, and it is all up to the Gengi's last two players to try and make the play. But again, with three members all right here, locations exposed. They have to win the gunfights, and that's a good start. But it's going to be immediately traded out. It is all up to Maka to make it happen. One on one for the win, but not quite. It is going to be Tedward Gaming sealing the deal. Honestly, that was cool. <laughs> that Absolutely. was a cool game. I really liked watching that whole game from Tedward Gaming. And the gangy as well. I feel like this, even though it was a 13-7 scoreline, both of those teams were pretty evenly matched. Like the Absolutely. first half, what was it, like 7-5? Yeah, 7-5 right before halftime from what looked like was going to be a bit of a runaway from yeah. Tedward Gaming. Did end up becoming, well, very, very close, almost tied in, in that instance. And Tedward able to close it out shortly after that. But yeah, still a very good game, absolutely. Yeah, like it could have been closer technically, but... Um Still the closest one we've seen all day so far, though. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Actually, I don't think any Not of these the games have gone anybody, past six rounds. Yeah. Um, so yeah, honestly, and this isn't even the second map. There, um, the gangy aren't even like out of the tournament yet. You know, mm -hmm. we we still have at least one more map to go, if not two. So these teams still do have some quite a bit of sparring to do. And then just to confirm the format for everybody watching at home. So now that we are out of pools into this bracket phase, it is a single elimination. So if you do end up dropping the best of three, that will be it for the day. But that still doesn't mean that you have to go home just yet because there is still so much more to happen at the summoning. Of course, there's still FGC. There's still like side events like mm -hmm. Mario Kart time trials. You mentioned the Beat Saber a little bit earlier. Lots of trading cards. And then even later on tonight, a concert as well as oh, our, our night market going to be being held in the SLC. So I want plenty, to check it out. Yeah, plenty of things to do once this is over. But we still have plenty more action to come in just a couple of moments. We're just checking in, of course, with the players. It looks like one of them had to take a bow break, so we're going to be a couple of moments, it looks like. But oh, if you're on the side of the gangy here, like that game felt winnable. Is there anything going into Sunset that you would uh, consider either making the change on or um, something strategic? It's kind of, a, kind of a vague question, but what mm -hmm. do you think they have to do in this instance? That is a good question, honestly. Um, I think the gangy will have to sort of rely more on um, less on solo plays and more so mm. on that, you know, team play, like swinging off each other, trading each other. 100%. Even though this is like a one day tournament still, you know, fundamentals are the building blocks of everything when it comes to Valorant. But with that being said, the next game will be starting shortly. And until then, we'll throw it to a quick break.
All right, and we're back in action here. Game number two between the Gangi and Tedward Gaming. Tedward is going to be up 1-0 so far in this matchup after a, I want to say somewhat convincing, but it was still like very well fought there from the Gangi. That's right now here on the Sunset. Right, I am. Oh, I see the neon coming out for the side of Tedward Gaming. I don't remember seeing. I mean, t granted, I have a terrible memory, but I don't remember seeing neon on the sunset in the past little bit. It probably has been. I'm just uh, not that observant. <laughs> but, <laughs> but we do. The point also, is, I'm excited to see it. Oh, well, especially since now that Snorlax picking that up, and from what we had seen in the first time when Tedward Gaming was on stream, I do believe they were kind of like. I'm not the initiator of sorts, but they were a lot more aggressive. Hmm. So to see them pick the Viper in game one, that was kind of like... Um, a curveball? A curveball, yeah, exactly. It definitely threw us off a little bit. This feels a little bit more at home, and I feel hmm. like we are going to see Snorlax pull off some rather... Uh, aggressive moves. Yeah, the note the, the gangy, though. They have two flash initiators. So basically, uh, Tedward Gaming is not going to be seeing anything this entire time. <laughs> um, and, but it looks like only... No, it looks both of the flash... Wait, is this going to be a 5v5 brawl on A? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mosh Pit, let's bring this over. Oh, no, the Neon versus the two Flash agents. Who will win? Plus the Omen. This is going to be so fun. All right, Tedward Gaming yeah, this starting actually this happens. Off. Snorlax just running in, doing what Neon does best. The gangy just walking out oh trying gosh. to take that contact. Cheesecake wide swinging, does get taken down by high rise. Foxy Lee getting one of their own, taking down Nyx. Gwester is fighting for their life. Somehow gets the jumping classic kill onto Sev. Snorlax <laughs> getting two, but unfortunately it's not enough, and Foxy Lee will get that last kill, securing right. the first round for the gangy. All right, gangy. Certain things off right. Gonna be snagging themselves that pistol round, and now let's see how hard do they push. It looks like couple of uh, SMGs here and looks like Fox at least since they did manage to get those two eliminations that time opting to get a little bit feistier with the Bulldog I do believe and I saw some Guardians so actually maybe the Gangi completely content with uh, taking that first victory and just borderline all, in all inning. Yeah, but also Snorlax has a stinger, so they're planning on doing something aggressive, I think. I mean, at least the Neon could get there quick, right? Get in oh, yeah. close combat. Oh, speaking oh, of which, oh, it, never mind. It wasn't meant to be. Foxy Lee was ready for it. They get take Snorlax down, take down their stinger. Sev trying to support, but does end up picking that stinger back up. But how much use will it be in their hands? Maka lobbing that flash over mid, but no one does anything off of it. Just trying to create that pressure. Gwester holding for the B main push. But so far, nobody is close enough because all of their attention is on mid. The market door is now broken. Gwester needing support. TPing into the fray, into the middle of it. Gets that kill oh, from their Omen blind. Duck a doobie, though. Trading it back. Getting a kill on Tacoma. Maka is now alone top mid. And in, I don't know. Tedward Gaming, it's an EV3v3. Oh. Everyone's fractured. High rise just getting two spam kills through the smoke. And leaving Cheesecake in a 1v3. And Unfortunately, it was not meant to be. Foxy will close it out. All Once right, again. there it goes. I mean, the Gangi went pretty hard in regards to what they bought. They are going to get it to pay off for yet another win here. And for so far, what I'm seeing here with Sunset is the defenders, my goodness, do they have a lot of locations that they get to move around in. So it feels like the uh, the attacker side always has somebody flanking them, <laughs> this, to say the least, to start this off. Oh, yeah, you should have seen the, the earlier games. Nyx was like, I, I had a theory where Nyx was... Um, Sentinel player as well because they were flanking people so much, but it looks like Koma is going to go for that um, early flash again. Snorlax trying to get that aggressive timing onto B main. It, the kills do not come through though. Snorlax trying something, trying anything they can, looking for a kill. But most of Tedward Gaming is up in B, but I think they're going to choose to leave, leaving Snorlax alone, trying to find the kill of their own. Meanwhile, the gangy is pushed up A main, looking for that aggressive contact. But so far, Tedward Gaming has just been sitting back in spawn, not, yeah, not really letting anything get get to them, not letting anything happen. Really, they control the pace, and they say we do not go yet. We wait. I mean, that A side is still looking so uh, so open. But granted, you do have to go through that race here. Where do they opt to go? Snorlax is going to lead the charge. Alrighty, maybe back on over to that A site. The Gecko on the side of Gangi is uh, kind of picking up on it, I feel like, though. As High Rise has to get out of dodge, because here comes all five. 
It's going to be another very aggressive push from Tedward Gaming, and this time it might just work out in their favor because Koma, first of all, it's a weaker site. Second of all, Koma has a Sheriff. This is very much doable for them. Snorlax dashing in, trying to get their own. Can't find anything so oh. far. Just find the first. Spr oh my gosh. P people are just dying left and right. Traits are going through. Nyx is planting. Next thing you know, I blink and the bomb is down, and the round is halfway over. It's now up to the gangy to retake in a 3v4. Yeah, and based off of the last game, it was Tedward Gaming that was a little bit better on the retake side of things. But in this post-plant position here, they're going to be just as deadly. We see Maka alongside Gwester right around the corner. But you have all sorts of elevation changes, flashes, and nice smoke actually kind of stopped that flash nice happening. Snow. It's going to turn into a one-for-one, one, though, with Fox getting the one, another one-for-one. One. So it is going to be all up to Maka to try and win against two. Ducka Doobie has been spotted, and Nyx is actually going to get the finishing blow. Not bad at all. I, I was going to say, I don't think they expect Nyx um, up top where they were, mm -hmm. and I was right. They didn't. They didn't clear them. That spot always gets me, too. I always forget that um, that, that spot exists. I don't know if anyone else can deal with that, but... Uh... Look, I've always been told to look left, right, and center. Not left, <laughs> That's true. Like, left, right, center, and up. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> Verticality is my kryptonite, though, when it comes to this game. No, I feel you. <laughs> um, fairly, even though uh, the buy is a bit broken for each team, it is kind of even. One side has a Judge, another has a Stinger. It looks like the Tedward Gaming are going to go for this aggressive mid presence, immediately sending that smoke top mid, mm -hmm. just trying to sort of make themselves known. Maka is deciding to give up the space, but meanwhile, Raze on the side of the gang, he has pushed up A main again, but is stuck behind the trip. Yeah, it is going to allow, or that smoke the last little bit there may have let the uh, Tedward Gaming Squad at least maybe make this move a little bit more comfortably towards B. But of course, that Cypher is there, so they are going to run into some traps. Foxily is here. Snorlax the closest one to possibly make contact, but constantly trying to dodge all of these traps are going to be rather annoying. They're going to think twice about it and go back towards center. Wester sending that blind out main. Coma does get the kill, is able to capitalize. And now they're going to take that stair space, try to crunch A. High rise, though. Still, he's. I think High rise has just been waiting this entire time. Wester getting another kill. Duck a doobie, though, getting one of their own. Making things a little more even, but still, it's a 3v4 in favor of the gangy. All right, Tedward, though, did fire off that Cypher ult, so at least locations have been. Um, revealed for at least a temporary moment, and that is going to get them to go towards this A site. But they are on a collision course, I believe, with High Rise. Sure enough, High Rise did manage to get the elimination. That is spiked down on A as well. This is going to put Tedward Gaming in a very, very awkward scenario. Duck Doobie looking for one, does manage to get High Rise. There's nobody else on site. They can absolutely pick up the spike and plant it in time with seconds to spare. But Maka and the rest of the squad are right around the corner. Can they pull this one off? Fox does manage to get one. It is going to be all up to Duck a Doobie. They've done it a fantastic amount of time so far in game number one, but can they get Maka? We're about to see Maka. Oh. Already spotting Duck a Doobie, just taking that damage. This has just gone so much in favor of Maka. They have their knife still. But, oh my god. Oh my oh. That is a phantom moment. It doesn't matter. Duck a Doobie, 37 HP, 100 HP. It doesn't matter. You put them in the clutch scenario, they're going to win it. Duck a Doobie, winning out the clutch for Tedward Gaming and bringing them to their second round. Oh my goodness. Both these games so far. Duckadoobie has definitely been a standout. This game is no different. Fantastic clutch with just like 10 HP or so left in the tank as well. Yeah. Got shot in the robe or in the in the jacket, but not enough to take them down. Solid attempt there from the gangy, but couldn't quite get it done. Another correct read from the gangy on which site Tedward Gaming is gonna hit. We're gonna see an all-out brawl probably pretty soon if Tedward Gaming decide to go fast. Maka though. Kind of wondering if they should divide their attention between mid or A. They can't seem to decide. Always aware of that mid presence, and they are right to be aware of it, as um, Snorlax is walked up mid a little bit. Meanwhile, Fox... <coughs> excuse me. Fox... Oh my... I'm so sorry. Um, Foxy, on their cam, get, does get that tag onto Sova. Is caught in the trip, but Cheesecake manages to win it out. Nyx, meanwhile, going back to Tiles, trying to see if they can find that timing up <laughs> mid. And they just might. I'm not sure if they oh, man. expect them there. Yeah, he's going to cut them off. He's going to get in the duel, but High Rise actually was there in a perfect time to have an SMG, and that was kind of close quarter scenarios. But now the retake is back, not in the favor of the gang. He has oh. seven Snorlax to shred the field, and that's going to give Tedward the lead here in this game number two.
Honestly, I expect nothing less. But good awareness from High Rise to to be aware of that mid flank. This round, um, also once again pretty even. Everybody can buy, almost everyone can buy full shields or like some, you know, kind of rifle, and. Alts are more or less the same. There's a lot of potential for how this round could go. They mm -hmm. could do post plant. They could do a fast hit. Really, either team could do whatever they want. It's really any, like for this round at least, it is anyone's game. We are just about to see how that unfolds. Oh, Tedward Gaming immediately <laughs> getting pushed back by High Rise and deciding instead of taking mid for once, this time they're going to take that main control oh and try to exec into uh, Foxy, who is going to. Try to hold? Never mind, no, they're trying say, to get off site. Foxley here has to be careful because they're almost in a borderline collision course here with five. Snorlax is going to be on the charge here. But Trip saves them. Yeah, that was exactly it. Immediately kind of shuts it down. Maka, though, does find an elbow, does take care of Cheesecake. And then Fox, Foxley is going to be able to take care of Nyx as well. So this is not necessarily going in the favor of Tedward of the way things are going at this moment. One after another, Tedward are falling. It is all up to Sev. And I mean, Sev is fantastic in his own right. But how many or can he get any at all it is going to be high rise to take care of that and tie this game right back up at three. Very, very good retake from the gangy. There's that cohesion. I was like, I was wondering about mm. where I've, I've kind of come to expect from all of these teams. Yeah. Like, I, sometimes you you may not know a player, but you can very quickly tell like their their skill level obviously when you see them play. And I think we've already said uh -oh. Tower Gaming and the gang are pretty evenly matched, right? Absolutely. Yeah. From what we had seen, because I feel a little bit bad for the Mickey Mouse Clubhouse because <laughs> basically. All three. Well, we got to see all three teams kind of like take their shot at like where they stand with with each other. Yeah. All by with how they played versus Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. Yeah. And I'd honestly say between the uh, the Gangi, Tedward, as well as Phase Up, it seems like they are all kind of on the same level, which is going to make the Grand Finals too later on tonight just that much more exciting as well. Because I did get word between Phase Up and the Mickey Mouse Clubhouse, Phase Up did take that one. In an astonishing quick 2-0. They, yeah. So um, they're ready, they're waiting. We'll see them a little bit later on the stage. But the uh, winner of this series gets to go up against them. Right. And just to let you all know, there is a little bit of a tech pause going on, a little bit of a disconnection. Should be fixed very shortly. Um, what are your thoughts on, on this game so far, on this whole match between the... Uh, I mean, that was a pretty nice lightning there from the Kazuya up on the top. And just Look at that combo. Oh, you mean the Valorant. Shoot, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm um, a Valorant. No, but this was actually... Uh, <laughs> this has actually been fantastic so far. This is exactly the kind of start where uh, I was kind of hoping to see from the Gangi, similar to what you were saying. I was going to mention communications, but you had yeah. kind of said the same thing in terms of like team cohesion. Because mm -hmm. I don't normally necessarily recommend this, because I know Valorant and Counter-Strike players are going to hate me for saying this. But if you're like low experience and you kind of just death ball it a little bit sometimes that can kind of uh, inadvertently get you to trade a little better <laughs> does make you a little bit predictable yeah and i feel like gangi's kind of doing all of that to like a certain extent it's usually like four and one yeah pushes and just kind of letting one of their players go on like a little bit of a scouting mission for themselves that being said absolutely don't rely on death balling but oh, i mean yeah, definitely not from what it feels like so far um, it's kind of been working. Yeah, it's it's a very much a um, unstoppable force versus immovable object situation. In this case, the unstoppable force is the attacking side, is the gangy. Um, I feel like death balling. It's not. It could be more reliable if you're like Paper Rex, or or some like high level team like that, some mm -hmm. super, like. To death ball well, you would you would need to have um, a lot of practice doing it, as with all things. Mm -hmm. But especially with that, just because it can so quickly, <laughs> so easily, just like get out of hand, and like you blink and you lose the round and it's over. Yeah, I mean we've seen it in like years past. One of our most uh, popular clips way back in the day was one of our players getting uh, five kills with a single raise nade in. Uh, by the Haven C site, where there's that oh. little corridor going up to the <laughs> to the site. Oh, it was a uh, like the fade kind of gobbled them all in, and then the nade got five eliminations. That's a death ball gone wrong, mm. and it could absolutely get punished, especially considering what there is. It, 
or no, it was the Gengi that was running the raise, not the Tedward squad. But still, like you're saying, it is still extremely punishable. Oh, yeah. So, oh, yeah. Um, while it is nice being able to trade kind of back and forth, you do have to be careful. Hmm. But, of course, plenty of action still to go here with this one. We're still dealing with the tech pause, but going to quickly talk about some of the other things that are happening at the summoning currently. At the same time here over on the Enter the Dojo channel, that is where you're going to find anything in regards to the summonings fighting games. You kind of saw Evo up on the screen, the FGC one, the, to watch Evo while they were competing today. So uh, whether it be um, Smash Melee, Street Fighter, Tekken, all of those games will be over on Enter the Dojo. Windsor Smash is handling all the things for Smash Ultimate. And over on Saints Gaming CA2, the card games are going to be there as long as the TOs are putting somebody on the stream station. But after that, there is, of course, later on today, once Valorant is done today, we have something a little bit special for all those Pokemon card lovers. We have an individual coming in who has a heavy base set booster box, like the very first set that ever came out in Pokemon. Wow. This thing is sealed. It's not going to be for much longer. It an extremely valuable um, Pokemon card box. And you know the goals they hit the Charizard. We're looking for that Charizard. Oh, yeah. You guys and really put all your resources into this, huh? It's, uh, everybody's pretty excited, to, mm. to say the least. And they're also going to be bringing a couple of other booster boxes from other vintage sets. Not the base sets, but still some older stuff. So they're very, very excited. The TOs are very excited because... Uh, as you can say, this is some just some rare stuff. So, how appropriate to have our esports and our card games finish things off with the card games of sorts. But it does sound like we have the clock ticking on down. We got, I think it was Cheesecake who disconnected that time by. They are back and ready to rock. And of course, this game's still tied up. But of course, Tedward won game one. Another correct read from the gangy high rise. Oh gosh. Banking on that A aggression it is going to pay off. They are going to find that raise ult onto Snorlax. Opening up that first blood in the round. Koma, meanwhile, holding off a main. And Tedward Gaming immediately just deciding to pause, trying to slow down, reevaluate what they're going to do. Looks like they are trying to take that um, elbow space, even though one of their teammates just died, which honestly I respect it. That's kind of a power move. Why give them that respect when you can just kill them? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, they might have swung. They might have swung and got the first punch, but it doesn't mean you just run away. you got to counter some way or another. Yeah, and yeah, they're all in a relatively decent position here on this A site. They do have to be careful of high rise, though. And I believe the omen there on this side of the gangy. Some backup is here, but now the smokes are coming on through. I think it is becoming apparent that A is the way to go. Gwester is right here, finds one, but it's going to get immediately traded out by Sev. But now Koma is there alongside high rise as well. High rise it does get the one immediately jumping onto Sev, taking down one wow. for one for one for one over and over again and it is all up to Nyx on the omen who has like 20 hp left to go versus two and high rise has been on an absolute tear i don't see you getting through this one maybe not but there's always next round still the round is not over yet Nyx is aware uh. of foxy's position is uh. going to try to get that kill but unfortunately the shots do not connect foxy lee gets the final kill and the fourth round for the gangy and apparently that it's pistol can just straight up send you to the Shadow Realm. What was that death animation? But Oh, who knows? That was <laughs> kind of cool, to say the least. One of the nice things that uh, I do like about Valorant, though, like everybody always flaunts the shop and or whatever I have in the shop. I'm never buying a cosmetic. Don't, don't come at me. <laughs> but the fact that they do have the, the death animations, I always thought was a really, really, uh, really cool touch. It could be That's anything so from sending someone to the Shadow Realm to straight up planting a tree on somebody. I've seen oh, yeah. Or like, <laughs> it's, uh, it's funny. Yeah, there's another one where it's like just a ball of water, and it makes it rain. Like, it makes the map rain. I love that one. That one's cool. Next but... will be the Salt Shaker. But <laughs> As we say that, though, Snorlax over-aggressing a little bit into CT on A, getting immediately headshot by High Rise. Sev, though, is still going to get that plan down. Despite the death of their duelist, they do have that breach already to try to counteract any retake attempts from the gang but on the side of the gang, they do have uh -oh. that cipher, that neural theft. It is going to be uploaded, Nyx. Okay. 
tries to TP, but it gets the timing with the breach alt wrong, and I think everyone got the timing wrong because the gangy just kind of killed everyone. <laughs> okay, alt F4, and everybody's gone there for that one. A fantastic few couple rounds here for the gangy after that timeout. I don't know what was in the water at break, but they are finding the shots necessary to clean house right now. Yep. Imagine someone goes to get food for like two seconds, and they, you know, expect. Tepper Gaming to win that round and then they come back and it's I'm just <laughs> immediate death. That's unfortunate. I mean, low key though, one of those things about LAN experience I actually like, really heavily stress the players is they really, really underestimate the power of food and drink. Cause yeah, I, let's, can, I, can, like, I can see that. Like, come on now, like we're, we're all gamers. We don't want to necessarily leave the computer. We gotta keep on competing. Then you start feeling that little pain on the right side of your head and you yeah, realize Yeah, the that. headache sets in. <laughs> the, headache, the headache sets <laughs> the in. Shakes. You've dehydrated yourself. You're starving. And another team comes on in and just plows through you as we wow. see High Rise just taking Duck Doobie right off the board. Fantastic first kill. Yeah, High Rise has been taking their vitamins. They are well fed. Clearly. 100%. They're just going crazy this map. Gwester playing it safe in market, just kind of waiting for their team. Majority of Tedward Gaming is up towards B, and that's probably where they're going to end. But Nyx, meanwhile, the Smokes player up on that A, trying yeah. to get, look for a kill. Oh, the timing is crazy. They do decide to engage high rise, and of course, they're better. They just win it. So that is a free gun for Nyx. And now it will draw rotates over from the Gangy, or at least and half rotates, maybe? I was going to say, the Gangy, I think, actually used that Omen ultimate to go back to the site that does not have the spike. So now Snorlax dives on through, oh. does not know his tight matchups. Close combat is super effective against Snorlax. Immediately goes down. Cheesecake goes down shortly after the fact. And now these other two have to come from afar to try and get onto site. And extremely difficult. Polywag says hi with the bubble attack. It makes things extremely difficult, but it is all up to a two-on-two. Two. But the spike is planted. Time's running out. Next. Oh. Trying, trying their best. Yeah, trying their best, but their best was not good enough. They immediately get killed in the TP. It's all up to Coma to get that defuse. It's up to Cheesecake to try to get that, but unfortunately, it will not be what was not meant to be. Oh, the elimination on top of it, just for that little icing on the cake as well. But <laughs> what happened to the poor Omen? I think uh, we've all been there. I think we've all done that at least we've once. All yeah, like, yeah. come on. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes, you, sometimes it, you, you need... It's it's a rite of passage if you play Omen to just TP into like five sight lines. <laughs> we yeah. like you just have to. If you haven't done it at least once, you're not a true Omen player. <laughs> yeah, I feel like it happens more often than we think, but absolutely a rite of passage indeed. But with the way this is going here, the Gangi are looking actually pretty strong here so far on Sunset. Granted, still have half time and the swapping of sides to go, so it could very well flip on its head at that point. But momentum definitely on the Gangi side as they take a very, very safe defensive approach. Just everybody kind of spread out like a line of scrimmage here to start this one off. Right. Kind of leaning towards that sort of mid, sort of A. Probably expecting the Tedward Gamings, I mean, probably expecting something aggressive from Gangi, but so far it has not come. So they yeah. will use that silence as an indicator to take that mid space. And they would be correct. The Gangi just playing passive, expecting aggression from Tedward Gaming, and they would be correct because Nyx does get that first kill onto uh, Foxy. And it looks like with that pick, they will open up the A site and look to end A. Yeah, debating on it, hovering around it, but nobody on the Gangi is really fully committing just yet, but you can tell they're starting to get a little bit of... Uh, discomfort based off the way they are moving and now i think that's probably opportunity for them to go sure enough blitzing onto the site wow. is going to be tower gaming with cheesecake finding a double but Gwester does at least get one right back onto snorlax but now step and the rest of the tedward squad moving on forward high rise has been on something else so far here in this game looking for another one after taking sev out right around the corner it's going to be Gwester going down high rise with the second has to go through two and the defuse not going to happen it is going to be nix to shut that one down and that's going to bring this up to a 6-4 game here. So we have another close game on our hands, huh? That we do, that <laughs> we do. This is what we were looking for. The exciting matches coming up here in the summoning. Had a pretty slow start to pools, but now the payoff is happening. Totally. And it seems like another um, even buy for both teams. Not bad at all. Mm. The alt economy is generally the same. 
pretty close to um, Sovault, I believe, too. They, honestly, they again, a lot of things at their disposal, a lot of things that they could do. This time, though, it seems like Tedward Gaming going for a bit of a more spread out play, just try to get info wherever they can. Gangy equally spread out. Jeez. Nobody told that to Snorlax, though. Immediately <laughs> beelining it towards the site. Oh, but getting caught by the trip and just getting spammed down by Gwester, that is a punish if I have ever seen one. I don't think... Yeah, the, the, Foxy was not aware of Nyx, is able to get that kill and get out with their life. Kind of impressive, but also oh, sort oh, of a misplay from Foxy to not be aware of that. Oh, look at this, though. Tower Gaming immediately swaps right on over. Nyx here is going to cause some interference in this mid so that Genki actually don't necessarily know what's going on. But they are going to be in for a rude awakening when they have all sights on B. And hey, uh, notification, um, spikes planted. <laughs> yeah, just a small... 3K. Yeah, okay. not, not time sensitive at all, you know? It's fine. Yeah, uh, we'll be not, fine. not to alarm you, but uh, spike planted. Yeah. Here it comes, <laughs> and now it is going to be all up to High Rise, who does have the op. So did manage to get the elimination there on to Nyx, but I think they're safe. I think you have to hang on no to way this. You can, yeah, yeah. With an op. <laughs> You're in the lead. You have a very very expensive gun. Yeah. Let's just let them have that one. Unless you have walls like we do, uh, it's not happening. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, High Rise just, just kind of chilling, enjoying their vacation in LA. New Heights Recreation Center. Would you re would you go to do recreational activities there? I would imagine that's probably what you would do at a rec center, absolutely. But uh, we'll have to see. Are they going to actually hunt them, them down here? They're looking for them, actually. Yeah, I think they want to get rid of that up. That would actually be huge if it does end up happening. High Rise has a hunch as to what's going on. Probably saw some of the explosions Ooh. and a big pick there that to was keep them alive. But the flag from behind the shot. They managed Whoa. to get another okay, elimination and keep the op. <laughs> the hunt did not work. The hunt did not work at all. <laughs> That's what happens when you try to ego an op, and with that, Coma will be calling that timeout. Okay, so a little bit of instant regret coming out here. Yeah, but just a little bit. That, that, that one hurt a little. But yeah, that's, <laughs> a, good that's on, a mental breaker, I think. Good on high rise to find those shots, though. Yeah, just clean. Definitely some, very clean. Some extra eco damage, some extra mental damage. <laughs> and <laughs> Emotional <laughs> damage. <laughs> Emotional damage, indeed. It may not be on the stat sheet, but it is definitely a thing here. So after the timeout we saw the first time by, that seems to be when the gangi went absolutely crazy. But now... Yeah, something just clicked, you know? Yeah, what happens this time here? Can Tedward sense that maybe there's a little bit of uh, a bleeding effect kind of going on? Mm. Or, uh, or this one's actually on the defender side here, so this is gangi trying to uh, take it slow. Yeah, you know, it's always good to slow things down. Um, I feel like both of these teams, despite how aggressive that they've both been getting, they've been giving a decent amount of respect to each other. And I like that. I like that when teams can, when players in general can recognize the skill of other players in the server. And well. I feel like there's only one player here so far that kind of took game one for granted and picked something with a little bit of ego in there. And I'm unfortunately going to be it? kind of putting this over to Snorlax. This mm. Neon, I see it run in and I see it die. I don't see it do much else. Would I like the commentators curse this and watch him get a 5K? <laughs> yes, absolutely. But <laughs> as of right now, the player has just been a ward. Pretty much. Um, it's it's hard to play a good Neon. It's, it's a I really, really difficult... Ba and I don't even play Duelist, but... It's a really difficult balancing act, especially on Neon, probably more than any other duelist, of aggression and um, knowing when to wait. And as I say that, Snorlax is going to get one and be traded one for one, so it's a 4v4. A little bit of damage under the KO for the side of the gangy. Cheesecake, trying to bide their time, trying to wait it out. Mako, Mako though. <clears throat> I was going to say, these knives are actually so annoying. Yeah, right? <laughs> It's just locking down at least one person, two on that last one, and just any sort of plan that Tedward had is just getting slowed by a couple yeah. seconds every time. It looks like the oh, gang is God. aware of this B hit by now. They're getting the gecko already, trying, probably waiting for the plant. Maka is concussed, oh. unfortunately, does not get the kill into Cheesecake. Oh. Cheesecake detained? I've never seen this animation before, just standing still is getting. Are you locked in that? Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um. And they're gone. <laughs> and That's it. Yeah, we blink and it's over. Tedward Gaming ties it up at a 6-6 six, six half. Shoutouts to uh, whatever Gecko's... Was that the ultimate that came out there? Is that Thrash. what it came on? Crash. 
Looks like a Chiyu with armor on it. Just going to put that out there. I've been calling the rest of his little mm. little pals polywags the ultimate oh. shall be a Chiyu. That's just, to, just to stay on theme here. But hey, um, once again, <laughs> one team calls a timeout and the other one gets a victory. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> Uh-oh. What do you do then? Yeah, this was not supposed to go this way. Yeah, if anything, Gangi, I think they kind of wanted to keep this momentum going so they can maybe bring this to a game three. Although, if Tedward keeps this going, uh, we're going to have a grand final sooner than we think. Yeah, and it looks like the Gangi is trying to get aggressive towards mid. Maybe a little bit of B control, but mainly mid. But it looks like Tedward Gaming read it. They understand, they understand the importance of that mid control, immediately sending that smoke. That may seem like it's not doing a lot now, but it is. it's good to send those kind of smokes um, early for that early conditioning, you know, mm -hmm. conditioning teams to sort of be afraid of the smoke. Even though this round there was no one to sort of capitalize off of it, I feel like I have a feeling it'll come in handy in later rounds for sure. Absolutely, Nyx here, pistol in hand, is about to get a collision course with at least two, maybe three members of the Gangi. Going to get blinded for their efforts as oh. well, and that is going to be two eliminations real quick. Going to be going over to the Gangi. Finds a third as well. Foxley is going to find it. Going to get traded out eventually. Duck, there's Duck. I haven't uh, found them in a couple of rounds here, it feels like. But Duck a, do Duck -a Doobie is going to get that one nonetheless. Has one player alongside them. Snarlax, it's your time to shine. You got the speed, but how's your shot? You got four to deal with. We will see. Already Snorlax getting collapsed in. Oh. There's finds the first, shoots the gecko flash through the smoke. Okay, we have an Aber on our hands. <laughs> You'll say if Snorlax is on point, this is actually doable. Oh, oh. Aww. <laughs> um, okay, well, the first shot was good. I'll give them that. <laughs> but Not unfortunately, fair. the Gangi will take the first pistol, or the second pistol round. Yeah, appropriately enough, regardless of the speed, if you get ganged up on like that, well, good luck to you. That's still a pretty sick sheriff shot, though. Did you just do a pun again? Yep. What are you going to do about it? Absolutely nothing. <laughs> I'm going to continue casting like nothing happened. Hell Tedward yeah. Gaming You're having a read. Well. No, just <laughs> <laughs> Tedward <laughs> Gaming, fortunately, reading the Gangi's position. Is, is this going to be in a, maybe not a 5v5, but a 4v5 brawl? This looks like a blitz ready to happen, though. Absolutely. Oh, Here yeah. we go. Snorlax is running in. High Rise was just satcheling in. Tries to get that cheeky sheriff shot, oh. but somehow High Rise completely stunned. Gets that kill. High Rise gets another kill. Snorlax oh. finding two of their own, evening it. No, not evening it up. Still two v three, escaping by the skin of their teeth from Foxy. And now both of t the last remaining members of Tebra Gaming are stuck in that stairs area. I'll tell you what, that Apparently was some unaware of the cipher cam. I think they broke it. Yeah, maybe right at the right moment there, but I'll tell you what, that was some Overwatch levels of visual diarrhea right there. <laughs> Just everything all over my screen as we now have a three on two. Maka's going to find Snorlax. Whoa. No Snorlax with the shotgun. He's going to get the elimination, actually. But a one-on-one -on -one for Snorlax versus the Cypher. Foxley is there. Snorlax is next to it. No HP, but they got the 4K to clutch it. Wow. I'm speechless. <laughs> I'm okay, speechless. What, I can I, what can I say? <laughs> At this point, <laughs> that I haven't said already, Storlax good. You have 10 HP, it doesn't matter. Not Storlax even. good, this <laughs> game is not real. Um, We're just having fun here, I guess. <laughs> That look, was insane. Okay, look, I made the joke that it felt like Snorlax was falling a little bit short here. I knew this was going to get turned into a commentator's curse for the better for them. Yeah. Apparently, I have to do this more often to everybody because this is just absolutely working. Went from the bottom of the field to now, like, second on the squad. And with sheriffs, yeah. of all things. So so what you're saying is the Tedward Gaming, oh, their, their last round went to you. No. Oh. No, I'm not going to say that. But I'm just saying that the spirit is there. And maybe if I want to check my ego a bit, maybe you're onto something. But <laughs> <laughs> Snorlax moving on through. I think they just straight up walked past somebody. I think so. Right yeah. through the smoke, but nobody happens to notice each other. Yeah, the gang just looking for that initial pick. They left the bomb. They're not looking to commit to anything yet. They leave the bomb and spawn Nyx. Seeing the barrage of utility gets out. Comes back oh though. What a nicely placed blind. Decides not to swing off of it though. Good decision as there are many people in aiming oh. right now. Nyx kind of testing the waters, testing their limits. Luckily they have a TP to get out and they have teammates to help them now on site as the gangy oh. collapse in onto A. Definitely one of those situations where sure, since we have all of the uh, vision in the world, we can 
see that they kind of gave away their position. But at least in that instance, Tedward Gaming, alongside Snorlax, who does have the finger tasers going on here, just able to tear through the rest of the squad. Two more left to go, both around that B site. They are going to get this plant, but they're probably going to get jumped immediately. Oh yeah, just excuse kick, just missing that timing is just get one tap by Foxy, but Duck Duck a Doobie kills off the Omen, and now it is up to Foxy to sort of clutch it out themselves. There Unfortunately, Duck a Doobie is just too aware for that. Gets the Phantom headshot and defuses the bomb, getting Tedward Gaming to their eighth and taking the lead in this match. All right, definitely momentum in Tedward Gaming's position once again. Just ever since the opposing team's timeout have been able to find win after win after win. And just looking very, very good for them so far. Lots of, or I guess I don't want to say lots of credits to play with. Like, they're, they're healthy, but they're not recklessly healthy. Yeah, it could be better, you know? <laughs> Meanwhile, you take a look at the side of uh, the Gangi, and they, I see a lot of, like, hundreds and, like, maybe 150. Mm -hmm. So uh, definitely a little bit painful there for the side of the Gangi. Definitely yeah. need something to kind of break that momentum right here right now. For sure. A little bit of a spread out from the Gangi. Snorlax immediately just taking that, the main control. As you do on Neon, you can just run in wherever you want. But the gangy off of that decides, hey, we're not dealing with that. They yeah. just clutched around with a sheriff on AHP. So we're going to go the other way where all of the, where the cypher is. Good decision, probably, because even though High Rise dies, they do get traded. Eight. Maka gets one of their own. And now Koma is planting and gangy have control of A. It's because they sure the trade happens. All the information is there, but hey, so is a planted spike versus four. So good luck trying to breach this one. It looks like they're all going to be going in from the same corridor here. Going to be a little bit awkward to try and get <laughs> on through a little bit. Enemy. <laughs> hey, I, I feel that. <laughs> jump scare Neon and not going to be jump scaring the opposing squad. That's going to be Foxily immediately shutting that down. So it's going to be up to Cheesecake and one Ooh. other. Cheesecake does end up falling, which means it is all up to our lone omen friend here on the side of Tedward. But it looks like the Gangi. Oh, that's it's all so doable. Oh my oh. gosh, I was actually extremely close. But the Gengi do stop the bleeding and tie this right back up. One thing about all these players, you cannot count any one of them out. It really seems that way, eh? Yeah, like, 1v whatever situation, it doesn't matter who it is, they, they like, it, I don't know, all of these players have a, a capability to just clutch around. Like, sometimes teams are known for that one specific player who's, like, their clutch man, you know? Like, they're right. just really good in those 1vx situations. But it just feels like... Uh, I don't know. If some teams have one, these teams have like three each. Maybe maybe everyone is a clutch man. Who knows? But <laughs> I don't know. Roundabout way of saying they're doing really well. Snorlax oh. <laughs> tries to once again go for that aggressive stun play, but immediately dies. Cheesecake, though, is able to trade them out with a oh. Bucky. Get some more damage onto Omen, but is able to, to... Unfortunately, does not secure the kill. High Rise punishes Nyx for their over-aggression and gets that kill onto them as well, leaving the gangy in a 4v2 situation. I mean, it ended up being just over-aggression for everybody there on Tedward, with the exception of Duckadoobie here, who is managed to find a double. Whoa, wait. Sev is actually... These two players just kind of anchoring the background have yeah. been able to tie this one up. We blinked and, and now, the, the roles were just reversed. Yeah, now it's up to Foxily to try and get the 1v2. Looks for one. Oh, that's wow. a caught timing if I've seen it. Unfortunate there. And so what looks like was going to be an absolute terabad rounds there for uh, Tedward after an over-aggressive push just led to three people getting eliminated immediately. Turned into a round for them and the lead again. Yeah, you really got to congratulate um, Foxy for, or not sorry, not Foxy, Duck Doobie. Mm, and, that was a good and round. Sev for holding down that site. Like that round was all them, I think. That the first half of it for Deadwood was was like kind of bad. But like the, the the next half, they made up for it in the, in the later half of that round. So luckily they were able to bring it back. I, mean, I think Gangi so. taking that aggressive mid control once again. I think Solo Q kind of trains you for that one. How many times have your teammates just run in like that? And hey, guess what? It's only up to you and one other. <laughs> and it's only like 10 seconds into the round. Hey, oh, yeah. uh, high five, good luck. Yep. But you get really good at it after a while. <laughs> Fair enough. As we now see another good engagement here for Duck Doobie does manage to take out of High Rise, who has been doing fantastic so far in this game. Sev taking care of one as well. But it is going to be the Gangi fighting them themselves back into this one with pistols and sheriffs alike doing some damage, but still plenty of tools available here for Tedward as they do also have some ultimates to play in a worst case scenario. Even 3v3 for both teams. Cheesecake though already in an advanced position, expecting that B rotate and they might just be right. 
Yeah, they are. The rest of the gang he coming over towards B. Cheesecake could be good for one, maybe even two. So much pressure taken off as Duck Doobie finds Coma already. Nice. Cheesecake, nice. good contact. Uh, just easily gets both, bringing Tedward Gaming to double digits and a, a solid lead. Just a casual two headshots, you know, to clean oh, yeah. that one up. Nicely done, Cheesecake. The uh, scoreboard does not do your aim justice, to say the least, there. Oh, yeah. So. Fantastic job on the last high rise is going to be currently leading this lobby here in terms of eliminations with 23 after having, especially early on in this game, I felt like high rise is just popping off like everywhere. But mm -hmm. like you're saying, it seems like everybody is having their kind of clutch moment, regardless of which role you are, duelist, support, whatever. Yeah. And so sometimes it's multiple. Yeah. And sometimes it's not even a clutch. It's like some other kind of moment. It's just like right. an ace of 4k. Um, really good supporting utility, like, it's mm -hmm. just so many moments, and it all it all comes together so nicely. But, um, the Gangy deciding to take that aggressive A main once again with that Gecko all unfortunately, does get broken. Snorlax does get one of their own with the support from the okay. Soba, the Cheesecake gets another, so, it's Snorl- This is the Snorlax and Cheesecake show, baby, like, we're lock in, strap in, we are here, Snorlax. <laughs> There's not even much Foxy can do. Snorlax gets the, their third on the round and just an easy 11th round for Tedward Gaming. Yeah, so they busted, they busted Chiyu's face in immediately and then just immediately bulldozed the entire area. And now we're going to see all the momentum flip once again because here comes the timeouts, but this time it is going to be the Genki again for a timeout. And granted, we are starting to get into that kind of dire rounds where mm -hmm. round 12, round 13 is right on the corner. Right. The only and that is also going to be your tournament life, like, in, uh, in contention once again as well because, of course... No uh, double elimination bracket this time by. It's going to be all single, best of three. Uh, it's now or never. Yeah, something I noticed those last two rounds, um, I know earlier you made a comment about uh, Snorlax's neon pick being a little bit, like, egoistic, maybe. Um, That's what it felt like, at least at first. I feel like I'm getting proven wrong yeah, a little bit. Yeah, I was yeah. going to say, like, yeah, these last couple rounds, I feel like um, something has just kind of clicked. Or maybe, they, I don't know, maybe something clicked. Maybe they got lucky, who knows. But for the sake of... It's always calculated. Yeah, it's always. yeah, whatever. It's always calculated. So something they figured something out, and now I I noticed that they're working a lot better off of their teammates' utility, like the support with dashing in with the support from the solo. Oh, that was so cool. I that was extremely that. cool. Yeah, because okay, you're gonna be dealing with this big thing just covering up half your screen, and oh by the way, there's Snorlax. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> Do your best. Yeah, dodge one, get hit by the other. It's just, uh, you cannot win, it seems. But if the gang, you want to win this, they need to start winning some rounds immediately or drop one and just be perfect, which we know is just basically impossible. I don't care how good you are. Snorlax is literally going to live with a single hit point, but man, just to win the trade. Oh, maybe not for long. Oh, Trying no. to dodge the molly. And, <laughs> yep. But luckily, Duckadoobie and Sev are there to help out, and they get each get one of their own, putting the numbers advantage up for the gangy. Putting worth or, sorry, in for all Tedward Gaming, excuse me. I'm calling um, worth in all chat every time if I'm Snorlax. I may be colorblind. <laughs> Anyways, um, notice the breach in spawn um, for Tedward Gaming. Uh, Does Foxy expect it, though? Oh, I guess so. Uh, I don't oh, know what just no. happened there. But uh, anyways, now they pop the Cypher ult. And all of Tedward's gaming's positions are known, so it's really like, where do you go now? What do you do? And fair enough, all of them are on the B side, so get this thing planted and get yourself into a post plant. We do see Foxley is right in a collision course with two going to be end up being three members on the side of Tedward Gaming. Gets a little bit of damage done to the Sova, at least, but that is about it. The Duck of still alive, leading the charge. Suppressed, so this is definitely irritating. Wins the duel, though. Fox Lee does end up going down, so it's going to be all up to Maka. Not quite going to be the case. Duck of Doobie really starting to get on fire here in these last couple of rounds, and it's going to put Tedward Gaming onto match point in the semifinal. My second standout player of this series has been Duck Doobie. They can do Absolutely. it all. They can play the Rays and they can play the Senti. Like they've they've just been doing really good so far. Their impact, even I mean, yeah, they're top fragging right now, but even like when they weren't, you could just kind of you understood their impact, you know? Their, uh -huh. their sight holds were like really good. Their flanks and their lurks were like very well timed. It was all it all came together very well. 
there, yeah, there was many times in game number one where Dukadubi was just like aim diffing them. Yeah. And then just winning these trades that you would not expect to happen. Yeah. But then this has been, I don't want to call it necessarily a masterclass, but a very, very good performance in regards to positioning mm -hmm. and capitalizing on mistakes. Whoa. And as we are going to actually see Snorlax be the first to fall, but it is going to be answered by Cheesecake immediately. So Snorlax does the job to trade one for one this time by. And now we're getting ourselves into the mosh pit, and it is going in the favor of Gangi for at least a time being. Sev does manage to find Maka, but as of right now, it is, is going to be one left here, but it is going to be the Gangi getting the plant down, all up to Sev. Sev in this 1v2 situation. Will they expect Koma right there? They do expect High Rise, but unfortunately, nice. High Rise was ahead of it. They did get their third on the round, and they yes, bring the Gangi up to nine points. It's not over just yet here. High Rise showing up. It's like, hey, you might be top fragging your team, but look at the lobby, bro. <laughs> like 26 <laughs> now. Had maybe a quiet round of maybe getting one elimination per round, as if that's mm -hmm. a bad thing. But um, good on High Rise so far to keep the rest of the squad. Or good on um, Gangi in general for keeping themselves in the game. And now with a couple of ultimates on deck, you can absolutely do some damage here, especially if that rocket hits the right spot. Oh, yeah, but we will see. Luckily, A is going to be heavily supported once again. I think Snorlax is going to dash backwards. Yep. Um, luckily, nothing happens. They don't die, but they also don't get any kills. Huh. Um, the gang, you deciding to respect that aggressive one way and go over towards B instead, where Duckadoobie is all by their lonesome with their setup. But if we know anything about Duckadoobie, it's that they can anchor a site and they can do it very well. So let's see how this plays out. Yeah, we're going to teleport back here. Oh gosh, here comes the minion. I can't call it the minion, but uh, coming in to make things a little bit difficult here. Cheesecake finds one, finds a second, looks for a third, absolutely will clutch it. High Rise is there. Can they try to turn this one around? Shock Dirt is going to do a little bit of damage just to tickle him a little bit. And just like that, they get hunted down. The momentum has been shattered. And Tadward Gaming, you will see phase up in the grand final. Didn't I wait? Okay, I don't remember if I said this, but I did say I wanted to see I phase up versus Tedward Gaming. I did say that. Yes, I did. So I guess I got my wish. Oh, cool. There you go. I'm gonna be. I'm. I'm excited for that. That's gonna be so fun. Um, yeah, good work to Tedward Gaming. Good work to the Gangy. Very good showing from both teams. Oh, absolutely. Thank you for coming out. Yeah, like this is a 2-0, but it's not like it wasn't well fought. That was no stomp in any um, way, shape, or form there. You could kind of tell both teams had strings of momentum where they were just basically unstoppable yeah. until the opposite team would just hit a brick wall. But we're seeing, like, at the end of the day, everybody is a great sport here. And we have GGs all around, and it's just awesome to see. Like, we're used to seeing the collegiate community around here, but it's awesome to see just the open Windsor and an area mm -hmm. um, esports community coming together for an event like this. Just uh, I look forward to more stuff like this. Totally. And with that being said, we will have our grand finals coming up very soon after this break. Thank you.
All right, welcome back, everybody. Grand Finals time now here for the Summoning Valorant Tournament. An exciting matchup coming right up. Tedward Gaming, as we just saw in the semifinals, able to take care of the Genki. And then it's going to be the tournament favorite, Phase Up, who just had their way with the Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. Now looking to try and do the same versus Tedward Gaming. Starting things off on Sunset. Ari, what are we looking at here? Mm, I've, I'm predicting a mirror comp, to be honest. I, I feel like since it's the Grand Finals, they're going to take it a little more seriously, you know? Mm. Just because, well, I'm not sure about the uh, the prize pool, but, uh, you know, a lot's on the line, so... Oh, 100%. Oh, okay, maybe they're going, maybe Faceup's going for a double duelist. That's pretty... Hmm, okay, so my mirror comp prediction was wrong, but that's okay, because this is still pretty good. I like... I don't think I said this last uh, last last time that uh, they played Sunset, but um, I really like the Neon Gecko combo, just because of, like, the flash is retrievable, and you can use it, like, technically, if, like, just as many times as you can pick it up per round. So, like... <laughs> like a teammate can pick it up, or... No, 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 Gecko picks Gecko's it up. Pick up yeah, Gecko himself? can pick up his utilities twice. So, um... Okay. That with the double duelist comp is always pretty good. Um, for Tedward Gaming, it's 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 standard. I like the double initiator. I don't mind it. Um, yeah, I don't know. I like that they're both running neon. I I, I want to see more neon on this map. So I guess I'm getting what I want. Fair enough. And then the last or the last time we got to see Sunset here, just in the last match, actually, one of the things that we were kind of commenting on is just how many different pathways, and it seems like. Your flanks were getting flanked by another flanker and another mm. flanker on top of that. Yeah. <laughs> like, there's just so much room to work with, which did make for some pretty exciting rounds. So what a fantastic yeah. way to start us off here in this grand final. Mm -hmm. Looks like phase up going to start over towards that B side, maybe like some that. mid action as well. I see Cypher leaning over towards there. And it looks like Tedward Gaming are going to get... Um, Either they're getting aggressive mid, or they will be holding for that mid aggression from phase up. So we're about to see as this round starts. Alrighty then. Gonna start things off immediately. And that is gonna be first blood there. Going over to Kinetic after a fantastic little shot with that ghost. Right, phase up. Taking all that mid control on that pistol round so far. The world is their oyster. They have options. They got first blood. They have all of mid. They can go wherever they want to go. Cheesecake in market is looking to respond, but is a little bit wary about their B main. Sev does make contact with Larry Banks up top mid. They now have top mid space, and as this fight's going on... Oh, no. <laughs> phase up is looking towards A as their final destination. But Larry Banks was unaware of Nyx from mid, and now it is an even 4v4. F Bomb is still not planted, but it will be very soon with Tedward Gaming on that retake. All right, party at the A site. Who's coming? We do see the spike getting planted down, and the alarm has been set off. Everybody is running on over, but this has given the side of phase up so much time to get into the whichever post-plant position they would like to be in. We do see um, Duck Adobe, who was fantastic in the last couple of series, right? It'd be the lone wolf here on the northern side, while everybody else is going towards the other one. It does manage to win their first duel, and that is going to be the sign. Dove is just going to be immediately taken care of. Cheesecake fights one, fights a second, gets an additional damage, wow. whips out the knife for a little bit of extra help as well. But teammates able to clean that up, and there we go. Tedward Gaming are going to be the first ones on the board after a successful retake. Did you notice the uh, the two right, classic record kills? Yes. From Cheesecake, yeah. <laughs> Free gun, free gun. <laughs> Always love some classic gameplay. Clean round from Tedward Gaming. And we're about to see Phase Up's response. If I know anything about Phase Up, is uh, I know they can turn back any round in their favor, to be honest. And they have Deagles, so honestly, it's very doable. <laughs> it can go either way. Absolutely, there's always the risk of uh, getting just aim diffed with the Sheriff or something. So it could be absolutely deadly. And of course, some rather deadly high rated players here on this phase up squad i know a couple of people are mentioning larry earlier on if the sources are to be correct he's currently sitting like number 11 in north america right now mm. so uh mate knows how to play this game that's for sure right phase up looking to take that market control oh. our man tries to take a timing but is unfortunately caught out by nix larry nice. banks trades it back onto cheesecake nix expecting another one from b main the read would be correct 
Oh. Sees the jump peak, but Elvis does not let the, the blind fly just get it is shot down. It doesn't matter. Sev gets the kill onto Larry Banks, sending in the wingman to plant DOV 3-5, protecting little guy. But unfortunately, no, fortunately. <laughs> oh my goodness. Fortunately for Nyx, they, okay. they get four on the round and just an easy second for Tedward Gaming. All right, so sure you might have been able to get that plant off in the long run, but everybody just died. Nyx with a fantastic couple of eliminations for themselves to just, just put that extra spice on that start. But now that phase up had the opportunity to do that eco round. They will be loading up here for the next one. Granted, in a very, very scary position anytime you're stuck down 2-0 early like this. Right. Seems like Tedward Gaming has a bit of a read on, or is trying to get a bit of a read on where phase up is going to go. Sending most of their players over towards A, and they would be correct because f I'm pretty sure all five of members of phase up are in that A main. Yup, Sev making contact with that Omen Blind. Snorlax oh, getting geez. Omen Blind, Gecko Blind. Nobody can see anything. Somehow, Snorlax nice. through the chaos still gets a headshot onto Larry Banks and that first round for Tedward Gaming. And in response, phase up. Slow it down. Yeah. Maybe try to look for a pick. Yeah, party is But they don't like, leave. As I said, the party looks like it's going to be at this A site once again here. Off on the uh, the right hand side here. Or a man is going to find the elimination there. And, but Snorlax is going to answer right away. <laughs> neon for Neon. This time by three on four in the favor of Tedward Gaming. But they don't necessarily have the positioning around the site that I'm sure they'd want, but they are managing to get a couple more additional eliminations. But Aura looking to fight right on back. Elimination for elimination once again. That is going to be Doves once again getting a couple eliminations all down to Sev to try and hold this, but that spike is planted. Sev only having a stinger. Is aware of where they could nice. be, aware of the oh. last, but unfortunately that's just a gun diff in DV. DOV 35 just gets it. They just win that round. I've been calling it up Doves. That's what it's supposed to be, D-O-V-35. <laughs> Wait. No, you're supposed to, it's Doves. Doves? Doves. I see. I see it now. I'm so sorry. I've been pronouncing it wrong this entire time. It's All right. A, it's okay. I need to go back to uh, to YouTube to learn how to uh, lead speak, apparently. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> I never learned lead speak either, so it's all good. <laughs> but yeah, yeah phase up will get their first round on the clean anti-bonus. Yeah, nice little round there for Doves. And now the rest of phase up. After a couple of rough first rounds there when the pistol round didn't go their way, now they're probably feeling kind of confident, to say the least. They're, they had a couple of members still alive, so they didn't take brutal e eco damage. But where are they going to end up going? They're taking their time, just hovering around mid and seeing what uh, shows itself. For sure, phase up going for that mid control once again. Tedward Gaming, eager to give it. They're like, okay, take that mid, we don't mind. We'll just counter you when you get into market. And oh. as I say that, Snorlax sending out a huge stun, getting kills onto Kinetic and Larry Banks. Elvis shooting back from mid, but really it's kind of futile. Doves unfortunately gets isolated in market. Elvis does okay. get one of their own, but it does not matter. Duck a Doobie trades it out and gets a third for Tedward Gaming. Okay, so I guess round four, we're just going to A ram it right in the middle. Just everybody. Yeah. Gather mid and play chicken with each other, apparently. But I guess. Looks like Kinetic's buying a hero rifle, though, for the side of uh, <laughs> phase up. The absolute legend. If this does manage to work out, absolutely oh, stupid if it doesn't. So, yeah, fair enough. Switch it right back. Or maybe you get a couple people to come with you. No, I'm, I'm seeing a bunch of sheriffs. So, probably going to take it slow here this time by and see what happens. Or they just maybe eat my words again. Maybe a hero rifle. But <laughs> what looks like probably an eco round, and then there's just Kinetic. Mm hmm. Anything is possible, especially if you have uh, Kinetic on your team. Another five-man push towards A, but the, do they expect Nyx on this off angle? No, they do not. Nyx oh. gets one, Snorlax gets one, Sev gets one. Everybody is just good for their ones. Uh, Doves is also good for their two, as they get two kills on the round. They get to a 3v2. Doves gets oh a my. third, evening it out. Single-handedly turning around the round for just for their team. And now, it's up to... Tedward Gaming to turn it around back like, in their favor. That was almost catastrophic because Kinetic was the one who had the rifle and they immediately went down, but Tubbs yeah. actually picked it back up and it looks like the, the Omen also picked up a rifle for themselves. So now what looked like uh, kind of play what I was definitely kind of questioning 
does give them a good probable chance to have this round in the bag if they can secure this post plant. Smoke's coming on through, trying to block. The defuse coming on through. Goes for the stick and right through the yeah. smoke. Larry Banks with the finishing job. Not bad at all. Not a bad thrifty. Like I said, anything is possible if you phase up, even if you have sheriffs and or a weaker buy. But so far, hmm. both teams looking pretty evenly matched. This is one of those moments where I do not mind having, or the players just getting me to shut up a little bit and reminding me why I'm on the commentary desk. <laughs> Maybe they just are that damn good to make it work, even if it may seem like a low probability chance. But they make it work. They get themselves another round closer here to tying this thing up. And uh, we have people just diving immediately off the start here. The fun of having two Neons on the field at the same time. The Taser's coming on through. That is going to be a quick double. Looks for more, but it's actually going to be stopped Neon by did. Kinetic. Yeah, Neon versus Neon battle. Kinetic coming out on top and on top with a triple. But maybe a little bit more in the tank. Faze looking to get their third. Bomb is not down just yet, though. What can Tedward Gaming do? The plant is going to come on down here, so job complete here for phase up. Just have to protect at this point. Tedward Gaming, there's the one to the north. Duckadoobie is right there, ready and waiting, but trying to get that Sova in position. That Sova is going to be in for a world of hurt. Cheesecake finds one. Can they get turned on, though? They are going to get turned on, so it is all up to Duck to try and finish this off, as that is going to be a sliding in kinetic, securing the 4K and securing the round. Not bad. Not bad at all. Honestly, I like the utility usage from both of these teams. It's all very much, um, what's the word? I'm blanking, but. Uh, it's fun. It is, yeah, it's fun. I know much. that's not the word you're probably looking for, but. No, but just, you're not wrong. Just seeing them actually like utilizing, or I'm kind of seeing this a little bit more compared to the last game, but it feels like they're utilizing Neon's toolkit a little bit better yeah. alongside everything else on top of that. Yeah. It's just I was, I was seeming cleaner. That. Yeah, you know, I was thinking that the Neon uh, utility usage is, is a lot better. And we're still seeing those aggressive plays, but um, a bit more measured, maybe. A, a, a bit more controlled. So it's like, um, what's it, controlled chaos, something like that? Yeah, exactly. And speaking of which, Kinetic just movement diffing absolutely everybody. Duck could oh. be Snorlax somehow getting Larry Banks. They said, I don't care about your satchels, I'm getting my kill. But Phase Up responds with four in a row, just lighting up the kill oh feed goodness. in red and it leaves everything all up to cheesecake to try to win this 1v4 glitch with the sheriff yeah and that it's is just not good. happening yeah. it's just immediately not shut down from aura man no hope for you this time which should be fair it was an eco round so mm. it was not necessarily in the cards for them or at least very likely but yeah i got shredded down pretty quickly yeah if you if you look towards snorlax you can see that they have enough for an op so Oh, I thought, sorry, I thought that Snorlax was on attack for a minute, but uh, no, wrong side. Snorlax is going to be on that, uh, you know, classic defense op on Neon. Maybe it's because I don't, uh, we don't see a Neon as much in, in, like, competitive play as much as other mm -hmm. duelists, um, except as of recently, but... Uh, how viable is the Neon Op? We are about to find out. Another heavy A stack. They got what? <laughs> Another heavy A stack. For for eight for phase up and um, while that was going on Snorlax does get his one with the up and finds uh -oh. the cypher in mid Larry Banks sending in the all finding cheesecake Nyx though trading it back with two of their own holding it down so well on the site nice. make it a third Elvis trying to tr trying to trade other teammates oh my. it's just not happening Nyx just an e all right. easy win for Tedward Gaming once again four of their own I mean, to go off what you were saying there about Snorlax being on attack, I mean, with Neon, considering the way that they just dive on into the fight, they feel like they might as well be an attacker, regardless of which mm. side they're on, so fair enough in that regard. But got the one initial pick, and then the rest of the team cleaned it up from there. Mm -hmm. And one thing I do want to give the announcement for, since the schedule did kind of change a little bit with the uh, Grand Finals going a little later than expected, if you are looking for that Pokemon box opening that I was talking about a little bit earlier, that has been moved over to Saints Gaming CA2, because this match is still in progress, and the people that are opening it do, of course, need to keep on, uh, keep on moving here. And we don't want to stop the Grand Finals, so keep 
the action rolling, but if you are curious as to what gets pulled, we'll be fire it open in another tab. But we do see Cheesecake in this one immediately getting traded out. Or man going to get another one as well. Like Doobie immediately taken off the field. But this B site looks nice and controlled for the plants come down. Overall, not a bad exec at all for phase up. They do have numbers still. Ne like we said earlier, never count out any one of these players. Anyone is capable of clutching. Snorlax has an op, Nyx has their insane aim. As I say that, they do get and taken Larry. down by Larry Banks. I am just cast recursing left, right, and center today. <laughs> oh, but it's fine, we keep going. Larry Banks just on a tear, nice flick onto Sev. Okay. Uh, Snorlax gets the other, gets kinetic with the op, and now it is Snorlax in a 1v3 against the op. Does get the one, somehow escapes with their life. Will they choose to fight it or will they choose to save the op as best they can? And they're still within collision course here. And the right idea, yeah, it's time to run. <laughs> run from that race as best as possible. Oh, but they still might. Uh, oh, oh, close. <laughs> that was so close. Luckily, they do keep their life. Snorlax been able to bring that off into the next round. All vandals, all rifles for the side of phase up. Pretty standard. They do have gecko alt up, so maybe an easy sight exec is on the horizon. But they do have on the side of Tedward Gaming, there are a bunch of really good retake ults as well that they could use to counter that. So, I don't know, we just see how this plays out. Looks like phase up. Phase up really do like their heavy stacks. They don't do a lot of like spread out defaulty mm -hmm. plays. A lot of um, just like, yeah, heavy over favoring one site most of the time. And this round is no different. They are stacked up towards the A or mid. Or man taking contact with Snorlax, but even though shots oh. are fired, nobody dies. Snorlax decides to give the space, keep their op, keep their life for now, as phase up, regroup, and try start executing onto an empty A site. Yeah, that smoke just made it so awkward there for Snorlax to try and defend from. And they are still going to be around to try and defend as the rest of phase up are now on this A site. Takadubi nearby alongside the breach and slowly but surely Snorlax is making their way. But these kind of close quarters engagements is where this op is going to just start feeling very, very awkward. And when you have these players all in their post plants positions, all sorts of elevations and angles, this is just so scary to have to do for their for uh, Tedward. For sure. I don't think anyone would expect doves on this off. It's just off angles galore for the side mm -hmm. of phase up. Um, Larry Banks is on one, doves is on one, oh, yeah. and it looks like Tedward Gaming are going to choose to just save their rifles in this round. Yeah, fair enough. They're going to try and hunt, actually. It looks like Larry Banks going to lead the charge. Snorlax, though, is actually going to hunt them down. Looks for another, Ooh. but the fantastic backup there from Sev, considering that the animation for that shot was still in progress there. Another one comes on through, but unfortunately here for Tedward Gaming, more and more players are going to fall. And because of that, if I do recall correctly, I think I just saw that op get picked up as well. So they... Phase up wins the round and get an op for their troubles. Yeah. Yikes. But I actually don't see it on the board, so maybe it's threw it away. I mean, probably. Tedward Gaming now on a bit of a broken buy. One hero rifle for Duck Doobie and the rest of them on Sheriffs and a classic for Snorlax. Still, even despite their weak weapons, Tedward Gaming can turn this round, so they have four ults. They can definitely make this work in their favor if only they time it right, if only they do the right things. Again, another heavy play from Phase up. Nothing to see here. We've all we've all seen it. We've all been there. But this time, Tedward Gaming taking advantage of their weaker weapons are pushing up, taking that B main space before FaZe can do the same. And they are right about to run into each other. I was gonna say this is a collision course waiting to happen. But uh, the Tedward does, Gaming ultimately decides to give up that space for now. Yeah, like that would have been ambitious but fun to watch but fun to watch does not necessarily lead to a high probability success play so mm -hmm. good on them to have that little tactical retreat nix has got themselves in a pretty solid position here however i don't care how good your shot is with that sheriff you're not going to take five and cheesecake and nix are trying to deal with it and it's just so difficult to try and get that neon who's just bobbing and weaving all over the place or a man does manage to take care of one but kinetic is here with the lightning gun the lighting zap or whatever you want to call this thing just shredding through everybody this one's not looking very well here for tedward honestly the most stuff can do right now is try to die to bomb but as i say that doves does just shoot them in the back Faces. locking in that flawless round that for phase up since when did wukong come in here and just wombo combo you on death that's the first time i think <laughs> i've seen that uh these death animations always surprise me yeah right 
Still four ults for the side of Tever Gaming. I don't think any of their ults were used last round just because it was on an eco, but we can definitely probably end up seeing some this round. Snorlax able to buy another op. I'm going to cast Recurse it again, but I'm going to say it. This round is looking very, very good for Tedward Gaming, just based off of the loadout and the ult economy. I'll definitely hope you're right. They need something to kind of break the momentum here of phase up and get themselves back on the board. And honestly, a snipe like that is a good way to start things off. Snorlax getting on the board nice and quick after snapping out the RMN, but then now immediately just getting destroyed through the wall with that Vandal. It's sorry, Banks going to find one as well. And what was that, sorry? Um, it's coming through the caster curse. It is, absolutely. Now he's going to make the combo duck a doobie here too. Having a rather slow round compared to some of the ones that we saw earlier in this match. And very even now, two Two on two. Who's got the spike? It's all the way on spawn right now. Looking to maybe make that A push instead. Nope, Psyker going back to B. Solid 2v2. Spike's still not playing it, but it's okay because they have a lot of time. Uh, Tedward Gaming is on the other side. They had a read. It was incorrect. Phase up are going to get this plant for free. Be able to play that post plant. By now, Tedward Gaming should be rotating over. Spike planted. Yep, Cypher on that cam. They know. And they're on their way over. All right. So, yeah, they're going to spot everything out, but try to make their way over. But again, with the spike just being down, it's going to make things extremely difficult. Instead of going to lead the charge alongside Duckadubia, try and make something happen here. However, the side of phase up have been here ready to rock for like the last couple of moments here. Even by the time Tedra get here, they, they need a quick elimination and somehow get on that spike immediately. I think too much time has gone. They're going to try and make an attempt at least for maybe some eco damage, but I can't see them even getting the spike if it's yeah, successful. They have so much utility, it's almost impossible. Yeah, it just stalls us out so much. It is going to be set of taking doves out, and Duckadoobie does get the elimination onto Elvis, so good job in regards to eco damage, but at least one of them, Duckadoobie, is going to get caught up in that bomb, so... Mm. Well, it was last <laughs> round, sleep. so eco damage. Very true, kind very true. I'm talking about eco damage. We're at half time. Hello, <laughs> yeah. get in the game here, sir. <laughs> it's all good. Phase up with the lead, 8-4 to four in the half, now on defense sunset. Given how aggressive phase up has been throughout th this tournament, I wonder if they're going to make the same kind of aggressive plays on defense, just to sort of try to maintain their lead as best they can, you know? Tedward Gaming, though, doing a bit of a phase up cosplay and looking to just send five players down B main. Oh, as I said, four, actually, because Cypher is going over to Lurk A. But still. Mm -hmm. The spirit is there, numbers advantage is towards B. Elvis has the flash out. My intel. The only question is if they can shoot it in time and how they react to the uh, <laughs> supporting utility, I guess. Okay, slowly gonna make their way towards this B side. A group of three immediately going to be pinged out here by Aura Man. So that is going to get the rotation from basically everybody here on the size of phase up. With the exception of the Omen and Gecko, they're actually determining not to send everybody. Probably a wise choice because you can see some hesitation on the side of Tedward Gaming going back towards that middle sector and decide again what they would like to do. And it's a good call because at the moment, mid is completely open. There's not even anyone in market. There probably will be soon, but for most of this game, or for most of this round, sorry, it's been pretty empty. Only just now, Kinetic is peeking that stairs angle, does end up seeing Snorlax, but does not commit to the fight. And from here, Tedward Gaming, Again, they have options. Cheesecake walking up top mid alone, trying to take a fight. Um, somehow wins that onto Elvis. Gets that kill onto Elvis. Is stunned up, but it's all good because nobody can capitalize. Oh. Dubs getting the kill okay. onto Snorlax, bringing it down to an even 4v4. Kinetic and Dubs together trying to make the best out of the situation. Dubs absolutely doing just that, getting another kill onto Nyx. Sev forced to plant the bomb at A. Cheesecake, meanwhile, getting a kill onto Kinetic and evening up the score again at 3-3. Three three. Sev getting the kill onto Dubs and bringing it now to a, in favor of Tedward Gaming at 3v2. Stray elimination after stray elimination all converges now on <coughs> towards this A site. We have Aura Man and then I believe that is Larry Banks going from the southern side to try and make the play and it's not going to work for either of them. This could be the momentum swinger to get Tedward back into this game as they bring this to a 5-8 game. Not bad at all. Not bad. Honestly, I thought that phase up were going to win that initially just because of like how they were winning. Well, they, they they started out that round winning a lot of gunfights, no? And then somewhere towards the end, they kind of, it kind of just um, 
I don't know. It, it was lost on them. Something happened. I don't know. But uh, th clearly they don't want to let that affect them because uh, Doves has a Bucky and their Neon has a Marshall. So um, even though they lost the last round, they're definitely looking to win this round as Tedward Gaming take that B main space. Yeah, immediately counterattack with this fantastic round of their own. On the cards, can they pull that one off, however? Or a man, good line of sight towards pretty much exactly where everybody's going to make their way. But a little bit of COD timing coming on through here. Right as they turn their back, here comes the squad as they tear through Larry Banks as well as Oraman in very, very quick fashion, leaving that B site pretty much wide open. The Omen's there, but I don't think the Omen wants to try and go through, uh, you know, all five. Probably so not. might uh, just wait for this thing to get planted. Wait for Elvis to get their way back over here and try to push his three versus five. Still, it's not looking good for phase up Tedward Gaming. All their players alive. Two people had rifles. No, how many people had rifles? I, didn't, I don't remember. But point is, gun power definitely in favor of Tedward Gaming. Kinetic does end up getting the shot onto Nyx, though. It's a start. Cheesecake brought down to 20 HP. Doves jumping down from death from above with a Bucky. Snorlax trading it out. Kinetic trading that out. Trades going back and forth. There it goes. But ultimately, Tedward Gaming win it out. Okay, Valiant's effort to bring that way closer than in theory that it should have, but not enough to get the job done. Tethered Gaming now at the half, just sitting rather pretty after getting those last two rounds. Granted, again, now Phase Up has their opportunity to build up as best as possible, but again, not like completely full buys in regards to armor or anything like that. And if this round does go south, that is going to be putting them in for yet another world to hurt. For sure, but we will see how this goes. Looks like Phase Up trying to take that aggressive V main space. If everything goes to plan, we'll end up meeting Tedward Gaming in the middle. So we're almost getting timing there by Oraman. Oraman does end up getting his one, but Snorlax trades it out and gets another one of their own Duckadoobie. Gets Kinetic, but is traded out by Elvis, so it is a 3v2. Once again, in favor of Tedward Gaming, the spike is down. I don't know if Snorlax expects this. Oh. Of course they do. Why wouldn't they? They're just good at the game. But do they expect another? Do they expect the last player, Elvis, in this 1v3? Yes, they do, but Elvis wins the fight regardless. Taking up that gun, trying to dodge the flash. Take their time, but ultimately, Nyx wins it out. I was say, yeah, you got the gun, but unfortunately it wasn't like ready for you. Brave attempt to try to make that one happen, but not going to be enough. And this game again, it basically tied one round away. Right after half, once again, Ted, we're just on an absolute tear here. And with phase up hurting again after what was relatively a, another convincing round there for themselves. They have the potential to kind of run away with this now that they're on the right side. Mm -hmm. And even though Phase Up is on a weaker buy right now, the Neon Ult is up. So if maybe if they get like a pick or two, popping the Neon Ult could very well secure the win. Absolutely. Right spot, right position could definitely be the answer that they're looking for here. They're going to smoke off that center and, and give themselves a little bit more time to figure out how they want to handle this next attack. But... Line of scrimmage on the side of phase up and look like maybe A again? Probably, yeah. They have that cypher lurk over towards B. But I um, think, if anything, for now, they're just kind of waiting, holding for any aggression. But none will be coming from phase up. They are, in fact, Seven. doing the same Seven. thing, Predic somewhat predicting. A I don't know what they're predicting, actually. Neon's just kind of in spawn, unsure on where to go. I think somewhere more so towards A, but it's unclear mm -hmm. if Tedward are even ending there right now. Cypher not even starting the lurk on to B, coming back to A, so yes, it looks like they are ending A. The Dizzy getting shot down, that all but confirms there is presence A. And Elvis now just has to survive, absolutely flooded by utility, Omen Blind, Breach stunned, everything. Nyx cannot make it into sight, the Gecko Molly Cuts them off. Snorlax getting two of their own somehow. Oh my god. The doves with the judge just spamming the judge. Nyx gets the trade and Snorlax gets a third. And now it is a 1v3 for Oraman. Can they pull it off? Okay, granted, there's a couple of health bars here and they got the jump on one, got the jump on the second one. Whoa. Could possibly make this one happen, but Sev is right there Close. to get the pickup. Sure, you got two, but they finished the job nicely. We have ourselves a tie game, 8 8. Close rounds. Close rounds are always the most tense. <laughs> Gotta love it. Uh, personally, I'm more of a fast rounds kind of person. That's just me. 
Cypher Alt is active for the right side there. of Tedward Gaming, and actually both sides of Cypher Alt. Um, this time though, Neon Alt is up for Tedward Gaming, so another mm. alt that's good for execs. And speaking of execs, there's five guys over towards B, and it looks like Snorlax is oh boy. all up in there, sending, yep. that in sending in the stun, oh. getting the kill. Wall is up, but they get tagged by the trip. Luckily, Aura Man can capitalize, get that kill. Oh no. Trying to save themselves, trying to weave, bob and weave in the cages. Dove somehow getting a spam kill through the smoke onto Sev. I know uh, that was absolutely way. perfect time there from the, uh, I believe that was the alt on the side of face up, may have just given them the slightest of glimpses if somebody <laughs> was there and managed to find the headshot. So good in that regard. But now we have ourselves a three on three. We're going to run this thing all the way back to the A site. With the spike in hand, there is though Nyx and the rest of the squad from Ted are ready to make the move. Yeah, Doves was ahead oh. of it, but unfortunately that cheeky TP spot ultimately comes back to bite them as they are immediately cleared and killed by Nyx. Cheesecake getting that plan down has to stop as they're killed by Elvis. Duck a doobie oh. getting the kill onto Aura Man. Elvis oh trading it back, popping that gecko ult. Oh, and he I swear that yep. And oh, the thrash hits. good night. And good, that's it. Elvis gets their third and secures the ninth round for phase up. <laughs> the, emergen <laughs> the emergency fishy coming in clutch. Oh my goodness. What a way to finish up the round. Valorant players are probably cringing to like keep referring to these things as Pokemon or fish or whatever, but I mean They are it's in, in it's one way are. it's one way for me to understand this. And there's a player I have to apologize to real quick and then curse out another. So uh <laughs> Snorlax, I'm sorry for not uh believing in your neon at first, as he now sits ahead of this lobby with twenty two. And then, oh no, what happened to Duck Doobie in coming 4K? So <laughs> we'll see what happens this time by but with phase up in the lead, Tatter Gaming looking for some sort of answer nice and quick, and it looks like the breach alt and go is gonna be the answer, but it is immediately two for two traded down towards that B site. But ultimately, Nyx tips the balance in Tedward Gaming's favor as the spike plant goes down. Dubs trying to get one, does it succeed in getting that one as Seth swings out a little too wide. Nyx just holding the corner, waiting for any kind of push, unable to plant until they know that they're completely safe. Duck a doobie though, with support from Maine. Trying to yeah. probably hold from any aggression from backside. Yeah, has that long sight line there, but could very well just make things difficult. And actually the ultimate there from the omen on the side of Ted, we're immediately going to the A site to plant this, which is gonna turn this into a drag race between these two teams. Of course, Nyx is already there, but will their backup arrive? Duck Doobie is trying to run as fast as possible to get into position. Meanwhile, phase up kind of want to cut him off, but it's not gonna end up happening that both members on Tedward are on site. 2v2 reset now for Elvis and Doves. Can they do it? Duck a doobie holding that, that one-way smoke. They're both holding the one-way smoke, but fortunately for them, they are coming from the other way. But they must, they can absolutely hear it by now. Doves smoking off that bomb, sending in the wingman. Luckily, oh though, my. the wingman destroyed. Elvis trading it back. Elvis has to stick the bomb, spraying, oh spraying. My. Such oh! low HP, but luckily it was halved, and Elvis will get the 10th round for phase up by the skin of their teeth. Heartbreaker there for Tedward Gaming. They had him down to like 5 HP, but could not get the <laughs> elimination. Yeah. Fantastic job there from Elvis and the rest of phase up to pull that one off and really starting to put the heat, put the danger here onto Tedward Gaming as game one is getting closer and closer to complete it. Right. And this will be the last full by round for Tedward Gaming in a bit if they cannot if they lose yeah, this that round, would hurt. they're yeah, it would hurt. Like their economy would be cooked for a little bit. <laughs> They'd be basically fighting back with game point. Yeah, so this is crucial for them. Absolutely, and it's looking like B site is the site of choice, at least off the initial oh. spot. Kinetic, though, immediate double. Larry with a double. Aura Man shutting everything down. Goodbye, economy. Good luck getting back into this one, unless you want to play flawless after this. Okay, so I said that their economy would break, but uh, some of them can still buy rifles. So even though th most of the team is on sheriffs, there's still like a fraction of a chance, uh, like a tiny margin in which Tedward Gaming can bring it back. All Given right. that, they set up their rifle players well enough. All right, Cheesecake D Legend on the Guardian. Let's see it. 4K <laughs> coming up. 
hopefully I didn't just curse him immediately, but we'll... Knock on wood. Yeah, we'll, coming up. <laughs> we'll have to see, because this is a bit of a spread out play, which, to be honest, the Guardian probably wouldn't necessarily mind too much if the opening does, yeah. Yeah. like, go in its favor here. But now as we start leaning more towards that A site, it's actually going to be phase up on the aggression, pushing the, the attackers right back almost into their spawn. That's going to be one for Larry, possibly another now that the rocket's Whoa. out. And there's a massive crossfire here from phase up, covering all angles. It's a massacre. There's nothing Snorlax can do, running for their life. Cheesecake getting two in the chaos, but is ultimately killed by Larry Banks and Oraman securing that last kill onto Snorlax, bringing phase up two game points. Now, that was not something that I expected in the slightest here, where phase up went on the attack themselves <laughs> and just absolutely <laughs> caught Tedward Gaming by surprise is what it felt like there. Multiple ankles covered, perfect little crossfires yeah. to the point where that was basically a three for one that started things off. Right. It does not get that much better, especially when not everybody had full firepower. Right, but also Tedward Gaming, uh, somewhat, at least on A, expected the aggression from phase up. They were pulled up towards spawn and still just because of that gun diff, they could not manage mm -hmm. to win on the round. So really just an unfortunate situation. Elvis and Doves pushed up waiting for that aggression from Tedward Gaming, but it will never come. Sev just waiting, holding, as they did last round. But this time, phase up, don't get aggressive. They let Tedward Gaming do their thing. Just holding that A main space, getting ready to take a fight, but definitely letting Tedward Gaming come to them. Oh. Kinetic gets that first, is traded out by Duckadoobie. Doves sending out the blind, the A is concussed though, so they cannot capitalize. Hearing the Neon running away, Duckadoobie rips the Cypher ult, and from here, this is where Tedward Gaming have to decide their next move. Yeah, they all split up, take their own paths, but there is at least a little bit of coverage here from Cheesecake to choke out this midsection where majority of the face-up squad are. And actually with that hitting, gonna try and use Whoa. Hunter's Fury, try and get a little bit of extra damage, has to cut it off early, however, as they were on hot pursuits after firing that first shot. Larry Banks gets the pick onto Cheesecake, Oriman gets the pick onto Nyx, and this may just be it for Tedward Gaming. Aura Man, stuck in market, trying, trying to sort of crunch the players stuck on B site. Very soon, if, if Tedward Gaming don't do something soon, they will be surrounded. But really, there is nothing can, they can do. All they can do is hold, try to destroy that fish. But they're already out of market. Snorlax gets one, gets another. They, okay. they know where the next two are. Hold. Gets the third. I Taps. believe. Oh. But unfortunately, <laughs> they could not close it out. It was almost perfect, but unfortunately, Aura Man was just more ready for it, securing the defuse and securing the 13 to 8 win for Phase Up. Oh man, that was almost so close to being a hero moment there for Snorlax, but does get shit down by uh, by Aura Man right at the very, very last second. And as we can see, everybody just kind of leaning back in the chairs a little bit, happy that they've got the one in the pocket there. We see Phase Up from the orange and closer to the camera here. Just feeling really, really comfortable. Meanwhile, you don't necessarily get to see too good of an angle of it, but you will see some of the heads kind of tilted on the side of uh, of Tedward Gaming. Just a little bit of frustration boiling over as we get into this next one. Game number two I do have here. Just going to confirm real quick, unless you happen to have remembered it from what I said earlier. I'm just pulling a blank real quick. Haven is where we're going to be going. So... That'll be happening in a moment's time. Lotus, if necessary, is going to be there. But it's still a very well-fought first game. Oh, for sure, yeah. The, I think you mentioned it earlier, the uh, the neon um, usage, just like the, the play style, I guess, mm. of the character was very good for both sides. The supporting utility, top-notch. The amount of times I saw people stunned, blind, like I felt like I was getting blinded through the screen. Mm. Like, and, they, and, they, and they make it easier for us on the observer side. Oh, yeah. Yet, even, <laughs> even still, like our screens are filled up with everything. Oh, for sure. It's it's honestly chaos. Um, Valorant is tactical, by the way. It is a tactical game. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah. It's, it, it's just... Um, it's fun like that. Yeah, not quite on the level of Overwatch in terms of visual diarrhea, but it definitely does have those moments where it does uh, come off that way. But game two is yeah. going to be around the, um, around the corner in just a moment's time. Going to, a couple of the players are taking a quick breather after that one. But any final thoughts for game number one before we throw us to a quick break? Good Valorant. Yes. Those are my <laughs> yeah. thoughts. Hey, short and sweet. 
Fair enough. Mm -hmm. And there'll be more good Valorants coming right around the corner just after this five-minute break. There we go. Quick break, and we're right back into the swing of things here for Grand Final here at the Summoning 2024. Phase Up currently leading the charge here after really making that last little bit of game number one go into their favor. Tedward Gaming fought hard, but could not quite get the job done. But, all right, here we go into game number two in just a moment's time. Now we're on Haven. Now we have three sites to deal with. What changes? What changes? Uh... The Sentinels, <laughs> clearly, as Sentinels. you can see. Yeah, yeah. no, look, because the, uh, the Sentinels are different. Otherwise, it's pretty much a mirror comp. Fair um, enough. I would like to see more, like, I know they were working mid a lot last game, but I would like to see more, um, more fakes would be pretty cool, I think. I didn't see a lot of, like, fake, uh, like, sight hits in the last game. I see, I see. I mean, at least if you take um, mid control you can actually plant there now yeah that's true <laughs> that's something i guess a little bit different here and then one thing we were being asked of course about was the um in regard to the pokemon box opening that has not taken over saints gaming ca2 yet we're still trying to figure out where that's going a little bit of a timeliness issue in that regard so if anybody's tuning in just looking for that don't worry you have not missed anything it has not quite hit the screens yet so Bear with us there, as we will get it up somewhere on a channel very, very soon. But with that being said, of course, we still have our Grand Finals happening here. Phase up looking to be crowned the kings of the summoning, if they can just bring this game back into their favor. Mm -hmm. Tedward Gaming starting off for that mid-control, but the jet on the side of phase up is sort of posted in garage, maybe expecting some mid-presence. Sev 
sending their utility into B, runs into the trip, but their teammates make it out anyways. Dubs gets that oh. first kill onto Duckadoobie. Cheesecake trades it back though. Snorlax, everyone is already on the site. Cheesecake gets another Aura Man. Tr finally takes down Cheesecake, bringing it to a 3v3. Larry Banks gets a kill onto Snorlax. Nyx gets the kill onto Larry Banks. People are dying left and right. Things are going to chaos. Nyx, they decide to. Yeah. Oh, well, I was going to say they decide to go A. But um, no, they decide to oh. try to play for their one. And they get one. Oh. They are traded by Elvis. So it is a 1v1. Elvis all. versus Doves. Doves is low. Already pushed up in that CT. Wow. And I say Doves, I meant Sev. Sev ultimately wins it out with that movement diff for yeah. Tedward Gaming. Sev got the dub, at least this time by here after a cheeky little play. That B site just turned into a mosh pit or a, uh, a blender or something. That was absolutely terrifying, to <laughs> say the least. But good on Sev to find the opening to just kind of sneak out that right side, go to the A site, while everybody else was still du uh, dueling each other. And then I believe it was uh, Nyx as well, props to them, who kind of held their ground towards that B site. So when the phase up squad finally uh, realized what was going on, was able to at least get the trade to make sure it was a one on one. Right, for sure. And I don't know if you noticed, but Dove's bought a Bucky. <laughs> Aura Man has a Sheriff. They are definitely, they don't want to waste any rounds if they can help it. Snorlax though is just so aware. One taps Aura Man through the, like just with a f nice flick headshot. Tedward Gaming now, all grouped up towards A and looking to exec. Yeah, off to the A site we go, kind of stuck in an awkward little corridor, right on the low ground, and Doves is going to immediately get dashed past and eaten alive there by Duckadoobie, and a few more are following suit. Nyx is going to take care of one, but Kinetic does get phase up on the board. Cheesecake immediately taking them down, however, which means, Elvis, it's all up to you again, and no chance. Team Ace is going to secure number two. Not much to say, just... Very clean from Tedward Gaming. The awareness from Snorlax in that early round was very, very good. That could have been catastrophic, but luckily they were able to uh, flick over and secure that kill. <laughs> uh, yeah, these walls are supposed to be soundproof, but there's just so many people right now yeah. in the Nexus. Just for someone we could, cheering. We could hear people cheering, and that's what we love to see. One thing, though, I guess for uh, Tedward Gaming to kind of be worried about is, is I feel this is exactly what happened in game one. What do you mean? Like, I think they went up 2-0, and then all of a sudden, it just ended up being, like, tied up. Or I could be mm -hmm. wrong. I could be losing it a little bit, so I guess don't don't uh, quote me on that one, actually. Well, uh, there is a saying where if you lose pistol, you win the game. So I mean, if anything, I, I've watched enough Saints Valorant to know that that's absolutely true. Yeah, so. exactly. So <laughs> you never know. We might be good. Kinetic does end up breaking that drone, giving up their space and short dashing away. And so far, both teams are still pretty spread out. Yeah, no hard committals for anybody as of this moment. No damage taken for anybody as of this moment either. It's going to be Snorlax. going to be furthest one up. Actually, possible collision here with Kinetic. A little bit of damage taken, but nothing too critical. 60 is still plenty to work with. Tedward Gaming trying to regroup, trying to find something, any kind of pick. Larry Banks sending that drone out for info, noting the turret but not spotting any players. I don't think that drone saw Nyx. Still, Larry Banks is not peeking, already on their way over to A because that's where the raid is. But unfortunately, Tedward Gaming is on their way to C with a lone cypher on, on, on the on the site. Oh. Elvis luck, gets one, or a man from Garage gets another, trying th their best to help out their teammate. Now Elvis stuck back site, fully blind, trying their best, has to get one. Larry Banks wow. in with the support, gets onto Sev. Elvis gets the kill onto Cheesecake, and okay. Elvis holding down the site like a champion, gets their third kill of the round onto Nyx and gets the first round from phase up. Being able to find an elimination or two the way that Elvis just did and kill that much time to the point where everybody else was able to come reinforce in time? Yeah. When that was supposed to be like a five on two? Yeah, and even just Elvis like staying alive in mm -hmm. the, that chaotic moment, sitting back plat instead of like, I don't know, panic spraying or swinging, literally just having their presence on the site, having mm -hmm. to be something for, Ed, uh, for Tedward Gaming to worry about. That alone does numbers, so the fact that they got three kills is just like, it's even, it makes it even better, honestly. Absolutely. A lesser player in that instance would have been like, oh, there's so many of them here. If I just go one for one, I did my job, right? Yeah. But no, just did your job and then some. It's a fantastic job Getting there. paid overtime. Absolutely. But now, next round underway. 
A little bit more love towards the center side for both these teams. We're going to A-ram it right in the middle for most of these teams. It's going to be Kinetic and Doves who do secure two. But now that Seasight is pretty much locked down. Next, though, they find a nice little quick pick. And now Doves again immediately answered. Finds Whoa. another one for their troubles. And just this A-ram, like, R6 style, just bob and weave Honestly. through cover kind of battle just goes into the... Uh, the uh, face up win column. Yeah, honestly, everyone on face up looks really good right now. Everyone is just. I don't think. Have we seen any like standout plays other than from Elvis? Right here. I don't think Elvis so. Elvis was uh, definitely the one standout. I'll give credit to for like some of the smart plays that the uh, Tower Gaming Omen had for round number one. Mm -hmm. But like in terms of like a crazy pop off of sorts no it's been more so like supportive plays which mm -hmm. of course supportive plays will never get on the scoreboard oh, yeah, but they're sure. just as important as we do see Snorlax diving on through solid neon impression immediately dying right off the garage and now that just gives the go ahead for the rest of the squad to dive on through nice one from Elvis actually though headshot on the sap is going to steal one aura fights Whoa. one fights two fantastic flick over clean from aura already putting Nyx in a 1v5 that's impact. That blind had impact. I'm not Absolutely. really sure what Snorlax was trying to achieve, maybe dashing over the trip, but ultimately it was kind of not the best decision just because the teammates couldn't follow up. Okay. Aura Man holding it down, securing the round, securing their fourth, and a flawless for phase up for their third in a row. I mean, to be the fair there for Snorlax, how often are people actually going to hop onto the windowsill to peek out the smoke? Like, That's fair. A lot of people just kind of be a little bit more timid in that kind of position and just wait for the smoke to go down. Mm. But uh, not that time. Immediately eats it. Definitely going to be regretting that one and thinking twice the next time they try that one. But with the way these last couple rounds have gone, phase up, now that they've got a little bit of economy for themselves, have been absolutely on fire. And Tepper Gaming going back to the, the classic five-man A hit. Five-man sight hit. Hey, if it ain't broke. <laughs> Don't fix it. <laughs> But Doves is already ahead of it, already rotating back onto site. Elvis popping their cages, getting that spam. So much damage is being done. Does find the kill onto Snorlax. And already Sev also at a very low HP from that spam. Cheesecake sending out the counter drone, trying to find any semblance of, of information. But no one is spotted. Nyx blinding that default. This exec is look, shaping up to be very, very good for uh, Tedward Gaming so far. Absolutely, and with a bunch of uh, face members, we've got three of them currently on site, one up in heaven, one now. We're going to trade one for one to start off this engagement here, but this does sound the alarm for the rest of the players on the side of phase up to make their way, with the exception of Sova, who's still maybe thinking twice. Or a man is on site, having a fantastic start to this game, could be absolutely deadly if left alone. We see, Seb, we see all of Tedward now just really, really hesitating. They're surrounded on majority of sides, especially if the Sova moves up. Yeah, and there is a flank. It's just very, very far away. Yeah. So technically, Tedward is surrounded right now, taking those fights back site. No kills found, but damage definitely. Elvis, watching from heaven, being that sentry, is blinded off the angle. It ultimately dies okay. to Cheesecake, leaving Larry Banks in a 1v2. All right, so that wasn't exactly how I was expecting that one to go, but fantastic timing here for Tedward to make the play happen. All up to Larry Banks. He's going to shoot through the center of that spot, but not quite going to get any damage done. But with Cheesecake right there alongside, I think it's Dope Doobie there on the, uh, the KJ. There is just nowhere for him to really find a comfortable entry. Even Heaven doesn't necessarily give them the most comfortable of angles here, as he just cannot really get one without finding the other. And Cheesecake, immediate punish. That round did not go how I thought it was going to no, go. No, not in the slightest. <laughs> Very much a uh, surprise. Um, but props to Tever Gaming for bringing it back. Honestly, <laughs> that's what we get for doubting them. I feel like every time we doubt um, literally any one of these teams... Um, it really feels that way. It, it, it just, it, we, we, we regret it pretty soon after. Okay. So, yeah. So, if, if I've learned anything, this means that I have to cuss out Snorlax. I have to cuss <laughs> out duck hmm. Then I have to cuss out Doves, I suppose, to make it even here. Hmm. And now uh, incoming, like, 4Ks and 5Ks in the next two or three rounds. We'll have to see. How to win Valorant. Verbal abuse. <laughs> oh, I mean... <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you what, a lot of people believe that. Have you seen Ring Solo Queue? Oh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I've been in the, I know. I've been in the 5 a.m. queues. I know all about those. Tedward Gaming, showing all that 
as much presence as I can towards A, slowly just contacting up, waiting for something to happen, waiting for some kind of aggression from phase up, but it's not happening, it's not coming, because it's just Elvis on that site alone. Cheesecake, meanwhile, not with their team. Instead, Jiggling Garage isn't going to see anything. Elvis just chilling on their cam. Average day in the life of a Cypher player. Hmm. Don't even really need to do anything. So far, yeah, everyone on phase posted up, just waiting, ready. Yeah, ready to go as we now do see Tower Gaming looking to try a relative similar st style as last time. They do spot Elvis, but that's going to be it. Now, what on the world is happening with that one player's arm? The a little bit of the graphical glitch uh, there. <laughs> but Dubs now and the rest of the squad are going to just charge on through. And now that the Breach Ultimate's gone on through, Whoa. Dubs finds one. It's going to be Elvis finding the other. And it seems like so far so good here for Phase Up, but there is still Cheesecake trying to fight back here. The Jets here as well, extremely low, but a fantastic knife coming out here to shut down Snorlax. It is all up to Cheesecake to make this happen. And you might find one, but you're not getting the other and the defuse to secure it for a phase up. That run was so chaotic. I honestly uh -huh. have no idea what happened. All I know is that like, people were blinding and then the Killjoy ult came out and uh, utility, yep. Lots of that. <laughs> and then many a utility. Many a util here and there. And next thing you know, phase up wins the round, as per usual. Honestly, I, how can I even be surprised at this point? I don't know, but this is a good Valorant. I'm having fun. I like it here. Absolutely. <laughs> One thing that was tripping me out, though, I had kind of mentioned there for a second. Did you notice how somebody's arm just, like, inflated to the point where it looked yeah. like a Resident Evil character? That would, I like, think what that's, on the world? I think that's um, the Omen. Uh, maybe it's because of the cape or something. <laughs> but it's only happening to Omen, so... Because, hey, that's tripped me out twice so far, yeah. and almost laughed both times. But now we have another attack, this time we're off to the A site. There we go, the paper airplane's back. <laughs> and it's gonna be off towards that B site. Immediately, though, Doves is showing up and showing out here. Larry is gonna get two before falling. Cheesecake does at least get the answer there, but now it's all up to Cheesecake once again, because all of your team has fallen. It, a, an attempt at a B hit and a failed one at that, but it, I mean, hold. Cheesecake makes it worth their while. It does pick up their third in the round, uh. <laughs> but the uh, crouching walk spray from Aura Man will secure the fifth round for FaZe. Hey, if it's effective, I ain't gonna knock it. Nicely done there for FaZe up once again. Getting another round under the belt. And for these three, three um, site maps, does this change like the balance in regards to attackers or defenders? If so, like who do you think is kind of favored? Uh, if not, like what do you think? Yes. So usually when an, when a map has uh, three sites, it is more um, attacker sided, just because you have more options on like where to plant the bomb. Mm -hmm. um, that being said, phase up is doing really well on this defense so far. Like the reads, mm -hmm. the retakes have been great, which is like crucial for Haven because it's so retake heavy, just because you know three sites. Mm -hmm. um, and also, just generally, their their responses to Ted Word Gaming's execs have also been very good. It feels like they can just almost see into the future, I guess, if you want to call it that. Like they just kind of know what they're gonna do. I know it's it's obviously not that. It's just you've played enough Ooh. and you know what to expect. But still, it it seems like that to me. A lowly plat player, Larry Banks from Heaven coming in, throwing those shock darts. Elvis trying to get aggressive CT, but the blast that aftershock does push him out of there. Killing the Molly with the op, okay, a bit overkill, but sure. Nyx in, heaven, in hell, unfortunately, does not find the kill onto Kinetic. Sev getting two for their troubles, and Elvis getting one with the op, and now it is all up to... Oh, Sheesh. It, it was all up to Cheesecake, but unfortunately, they, they could not do it. Um, hey, hey, guys, we just got to defend this site, and it's gone. Yeah. <laughs> and it, it's, it's, it's done. We're gone. These teams are honestly <laughs> rude sometimes, because I'm trying to say a sentence, and I can't even finish it. <laughs> they're just too—they're just too fast. I can't comprehend what's going on, but uh, I'm not complaining too much. Keep doing what you're doing. It's very fun. Absolutely, it just goes to show the quality of the retakes here. Like you're saying from Phase Up, they're just so dang comfortable doing that to the point where you feel like they're the ones who had a couple of seconds ahead of time to set up post plants. But even I guess just post plants on at least the AE site anyway. Do feel, I guess, kind of predictable, but yet awkward yeah. at the same same time. So like, it's not super safe. At least this is just a outsider on or outside looking in kind of thing. 
I could very well just be talking out of my rear here, but um, definitely kind of get that aura. It's okay. We, we don't have to think about it too hard. We have fun here. Aura Man is going <laughs> to kill that drone in the funniest off angle I've ever seen. Cheesecake. <laughs> Sp trying to spam through the wall with that sheriff will not find any purchase, but it's okay because if anything they have some info. Tedward Gaming, meanwhile, is going to make their way up B, looking to exec onto that site, and it would be a good choice as nobody is on that site right now, unless Ooh. Larry Banks decides to swing out of garage. Cheesecake though okay. brings it back with two kills of their own. They're just like everyone in this lobby is just demons on the sheriff. Absolutely, and, they, and it leaves Tedward Gaming with the man advantage. Yeah, so far so good here, but of course that spike is not planted just yet, so they got to figure that out nice and quick. But with Cheesecake finding their third of this round, that is going to make things a little bit easier. Going to have to watch out, though. Kinetic as well as Elvis are on the way, and they are finding their eliminations one apiece. Two on two. Post plants positions remaining. secured, but it doesn't wow. seem to matter. They're finding each and every one until Nyx is able to at least get one off the board. But now... The Cypher first the Omen. Where does this go? Right Ooh. through to smoke. Good night. And that is one more on the board here for Tedward. Very well played from Nyx, honestly. Very well. Knowing that the Jet, knowing it's a 2v2, and knowing that the Jet has that op and is probably going to go back to Garage for a gun just to, you know, make the retake easier for themselves and just kind of getting ahead of that and waiting for them. Very smart play from Nyx. Alt economy for both teams. Fairly even, two ults each. Every team, both teams on a full buy. Except Tedward, I think they had a worse eco, so um, it may not be in the best spot if they lose this round. Yeah, of course they're hurting for the last little bit. Sure, they got the one, so kind of rebounds them a little bit, I'm sure, but not enough to be comfortable by any means here. And we have quite the aggressive spread, it looks like from phase up this time by both the Jet and now the Cypher is still moving on forward. Maybe looking for a very aggressive play. Hunter's Fury for Hunter's Fury to trade things off a little bit of like chip damage, but that's now two pieces of utility off the table. That is going to be a Cypher, I think, about to smoke this Jet in just a moment's time. Actually, just going to let them walk right by, it looks like. Okay, sneaky, sneaky. But Elvis might get pinched here, actually. Aura Man, meanwhile, taking that, just eating that flash in Garage. Luckily, though, they have a smoke to hide in. Elvis did end up getting that jet, that kill into Jet, as you said, but Duck -a Duck -a Doobie, these words are killing me. Hey, at least <laughs> Trades it back. Hey, at least it wasn't, I think it was the gangy that had a... Oh, yeah, the key smash. I keyboard. didn't even say, I just said key smash. I remember that. <laughs> Fair enough. But in that process of us describing that, we just saw everybody get evaporated Ooh. with Larry Banks finishing the job here on to... The breach, and now at, I believe the border. The yeah, here we are. Borderline before the half on a map that is supposed to be attacker sided. Phase up is putting themselves in prime position to stop this tournament in its tracks if they could secure this next win. Yeah, and this looks like a very probable win for phase up just because of the weak buy, the two stingers, the one Bucky. Mm, Snorlax having not not exactly a highlight game, which is uncharacteristic, but hey, everybody has bad games. It happens. Anyways, probably going to phase up, but that is, of course, if they play their cards, right? If they follow all the right protocols. See what phase up, see what they do. Um, Aura Man ratting in Garage just beyond his smoke, but he might get timing here if they decide to peek him right now. Luckily, they don't. Larry Banks, meanwhile, gets the kill onto Cheesecake. Or... Okay. Kinetic gets the op kill onto Nyx, Duckadoobie getting one of their own. I don't know if they're aware of Snorlax. They must be because they're holding it, but Snorlax might just uh, win this out. It's because okay. of the Bucky. Nope. They, they never cleared Aura, man. They never did. Oh my and, goodness. <laughs> and just like that, phase up, get their eighth round. And that's what I'm going to call an observer's nightmare, where you see the person with the yeah. shotgun. Yeah. <laughs> Two people in the smokes right there. You want the switch, but you know as soon as you switch, that's when the engagement's actually going to happen. Oh, yeah. Definitely feel those kind of moments the there. The amount of times it's happened to me is unreal. I feel bad uh -huh. for the Observer for this game. I feel hey, really shout out bad. Satan in the back who's directing yep. and observing at the same time right now. Absolute boss mode, so thank you for the holding goat. the fort down. Yeah, Tedward Gaming. Choosing to start their pistol round kind of... I'm gonna, What I'm going to guess is an aggressive A play. Um... 
but I'm not sure. Luckily, though, they're leaving B open, which is fine, because they can just retake. Phase up, looking for that <laughs> A pressure. Oh, I think face. one's going mid, a window as well, yeah. Aura Man is scanned by that dart. Nyx, unfortunately, is a little bit, just a little bit out of place, and it does get punished by Larry Banks, giving them the first blood. I was going to say, it'd be absolutely such a message if they just straight up blitz the site on their first attack. And that is exactly what they do. Granted, they don't get it for scot-free, but they Whoa. got the better end of it. That's for sure, as they slowly but surely fall through smokes and through anything else that you could possibly throw at it utility-wise does cause this to be yet another win here for phase up winning the pistol rounds and putting them in a prime position to the to basically win this entire tournament as long as they don't get thrifted surely they won't right there's no way they get thriftied no <laughs> way in the slightest wink 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 nudge nudge every yeah. time i see phase up sort of have a particularly good round i feel like if i'm not commentating of course i feel like a um, like a sage teacher you know just wisely nodding at their students like yep they just did that even though <laughs> i don't i didn't know most of these players until today but that doesn't matter duck doobie taking cover in that smoke trying to keep their life Everyone's taking cover oh. in smokes. Everyone's just spamming through smokes. Snorlax it somehow gets a spam kill onto Kinetic. Sev also gets a kill going, but Larry oh Banks my. just gets three out of absolutely <laughs> nowhere. Gets four? Okay. How many times has that happened in the series? Okay, so that's been twice now that phase up of basically just blitz the site on two separate sides of the map. What are they going to do? Blitz B this time? That's the only thing <laughs> left on the menu in terms yeah. of things that they've just, like, beeline towards. And it's making it so that Tethered Gaming cannot really get a read as to what they want to do. Honestly. They're surely not going to blitz every time, right? And then they do no, it again. No, surely not. I would hate to be Tethered Gaming right now because imagine you work so hard trying on the site retake and you're like, oh, yes, guys, we're in a 4v2. We're going to, we actually might have a yeah, chance not. to win this. <laughs> but then one of the, the people, the two people left is Larry Banks and they just get three and they just obliterate your chances. Like, I would cry, I think. I feel that. <laughs> Can I see Kinetic? Gonna be doing a couple folks around the garage side. Oh, kitty. But <laughs> no blitz this time by. They're actually holding their own, taking their time. And honestly, if they wanted to go towards that B site, it's wide open. Ah, so your prediction might come true then. I mean, I don't want to be right, but I mean, they're in position. <laughs> if, if the shoe fits. Yeah. You gotta wear it. But right. it looks like they will be backing off, trying to go somewhere else instead. Probably A, as that's where their senti is lurked up. And also, yeah, everyone... Ha I don't know. If they thought it was going to go to B. Yeah, no, but if you look at the minimap, Tedward are in kind of a weird spot right now where, like, everyone is basically rotated off all of the sites. Like, they're playing mm. so passive that no one is on a site. They're all just kind of in the connectors. It's kind of funny that it looks like they're playing post, uh, post plant <laughs> on defense. <laughs> We just flipped the map, I guess. But yeah, phase up will do. They're going to get to plant this thing for n no contest. Uh, well, maybe some contest. Snorlax dashing in, finds the scan, somehow oh. gets the two wall bang kills onto Larry Banks and okay. Kinetic. Tedward actually have a chance in this round. Oh. Elvis, though, from Long, does take down Snorlax. Oh, but another two. Last player standing. <laughs> All up to the one player there onto the phase up. But Elvis is kind of stuck in the corner. Nobody defusing yet. There it is. Dougie Doobie coming in clutch right when you needed them to be able to get themselves back on the board, stop the bleeding, and get round number five for themselves. Not a bad retake at all from Tedward Gaming. I was... Hmm. I have to really stop. I, I am a doubter. In my heart, I am a hater, I guess, because I just keep, like, doubting everything that these players do. <laughs> that sounds so way harsher than I intended it to be. I didn't mean it like that. You guys are good at the game. But what I meant is that <laughs> I was unsure of the whole, you know, play passive everywhere. Because how often do you see that, really, in, like, any game? Like, yes, obviously it happens, but not that much. But it, mm -hmm. you know what? I should just, like, never speak again, because it ended up working... <laughs> Um, so yeah, I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't have an opinion on strats. Uh, they, they call it plat chat for a reason, right? True. No, I'm just, I'm just no, they do. I'm literally <laughs> plat. I, I am qualified. Oh, jeez, I am. So
So sorry, but no, we do have ourselves another engagement here onto this C site, and it is yet another blitz strike alongside the Hunter's Fury, and that takes three off the board immediately. Tedward Gaming only got one in return. They will find one more here as Sev does manage to catch um, Aura Man on the rotation, but the spike is already planted, and this is a very aggressive post-plant position here for Elvis. Oh. Finds one, finds oh. the second with both the smoothest 3K I've seen in a little while. Yeah, this time the paper airplane was blue. Give me a <laughs> yes, it was. I think it's just whoever, I think it's just uh, the Nyx's um, character model. <laughs> Unfortunate. <laughs> but it's okay, it adds a little spice. Definitely an amusing glitch nonetheless, but yeah. Ah, uh, pressure's on now. What are we going to see come out of Tedward? If you eco, then you're going to have to be perfect. Surely. Anything is possible. Can you turn the paper airplane into a shield? <laughs> like, <laughs> can you, t Riot Shield? Can, uh, can Nyx just turn into Reinhardt real quick? But uh, I don't think that is going to be a thing. And unfortunately, the guess here for the side of Tethered Gaming is wrong. Seasight was easier. immediately blitzed onto. Oh. And oh. there's going to be a little bit of a trade back here. But again, spikes down, post plants are aggressive. Yikes. Yeah, Tedward Gaming already on a bit of a ticking clock. Snorlax says, we don't have time for this. We got to speed it up. Headshotting oh. Aura Man to the Shadow Realm. Doves gets the kill onto Sev. Ducka Doobie getting the kill onto Larry Banks. Oh, Doves, no it, Doves is just, oh, jumping. People are jumping. What is happening right now? It's a jet off. <laughs> Suddenly, it's a jet off. And Kinetic is trying to get this read, trying to go into Garage, trying to guess where. Oh. Snorlax could be guessing, oh. but Snorlax ultimately wins it out. Do they have time though? I think they do. Wait for it. Yeah, They're they, good. Yeah, they do. They had a lot of time. <laughs> a lot of time. Only point nine. <laughs> I, I'm gonna be honest. Sometimes when I'm watching these, I kind of like barely process what's going on on the screen. I feel you. Because like I have to talk about what's going on too, right? And I can only focus on so many things. So sometimes I just sort of forget what what's happening in front of me and then when i zone back in it's like where am i and that happened when uh, doves was jumping around in spawn fighting snorlax yeah it was a very jarring moment also i'd like to note aura man's score here this is the ultimate support player 12 12 and 12. <laughs> no how often do you see that very rare that's for sure so we do see the blade serum going to be coming out here Whoa. and immediately go to fight an elimination here onto aura man solid shot from cheesecake but yeah, seeing Snorlax with the blades are Whoa. now going to get some additional assists here from Nyx. And now actually, Tedward, they're on a bit of a roll for themselves. Mm, yeah, they could have possibly bring it back. Kinetic, though, ha they definitely have something to say about that. Getting the kill onto Duck Doobie. Hearing that commotion out towards mid. Are they going to ego swing, though? I wouldn't recommend it, but yeah. they're already alone. Cheesecake takes down Larry Banks, and now it's all up to Kinetic. What, how much can they do? How much can they accomplish? I wouldn't run through that if I were you. I would save my weapon, but it's already too late for that. Oh, I would save my weapon, oh but my I'm not goodness. Kinetic. Kinetic popping the jet knives, hoping, just trying to find another kill, hearing the Omen TP. Everything is happening at once. There's a giant paper plane in their face. I wonder <laughs> if they can see this too. I really hope not. I doubt it. Oh, there it goes. <laughs> Snorlax getting the final kill onto Kinetic and getting Tever Gaming their seventh round. <laughs> can you imagine if you just... <laughs> Like, look we're at seeing, that. We're How seeing do you... it right here, right now. But yeah, can you imagine if just, like, hey, you're uh, you're too strong, so Riot decided to nerf you. <laughs> you can never hide, ever. Yeah. <laughs> Not only can Omen uh, teleport, he can also fly now with his giant cape. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> he's, a, he's like a jet Omen hybrid. But that was pretty funny, though, a couple of rounds ago. I've never seen, or not that I've never seen, I probably have, but it's very rare that I see a jet player use the updraft just, like, in the middle of battle, and it actually works as, like, a fake mechanism. Yeah. It helped true. that the smoke was there. Mm, but it true. actually uh, did work out, so it was a cheeky little play. But now, again, phase up on the verge of round 12 victory if they can pull this one off. Off to the garage and onward seems to be the name of the game as Seasight does have two people um, there to assist. Yep, that contact garage play does get them pretty far. Sev is blinded yeah, and concussed and Sorry, just the wait. whole kitchen sink. Kinetic is on that site getting that first engagement onto Duck Aduby. Oraman luckily trades them out. It is a 4v4. Oh, I don't know. 
I can't count clearly. It is a yes v yes. It is a yes point. versus yes. People are dying left and right. The bomb isn't even down yet. The bomb planter is one HP. This is a mess. Can phase up bring it back, or will Tedward Gaming get their eighth? Absolutely, because now they're on the outside looking in. Granted, they have both locations kind of covered, but there is the possibility of a pinch here. Onto who I believe that is Snorlax. Snorlax does get the one. Elvis gets chipped Ooh. down, actually in a really, really rough spot here. The jet, there goes, charges on through. Now really puts Elvis in a very, very rough position. Gonna look for it, sprays on through. Oh. Does actually stop the diffuser, but the elimination from Nyx should spare them enough time to get this defused. As you can see, 14 seconds still on the clock. And there we go, post plant secure here for Tedward. That was phase of Zika round though, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, now they have money, so. Okay, so the fact they did that much damage on Eco is actually impressive. Yeah, it's a that's pretty good Eco round. Um, and they do also have a Breach ult to work with, so that's not bad at all. Meanwhile, though, on the side of Tedward, they do have that Killjoy ult to work with and a Operator from Snorlax. So yeah, once again, even rounds, it just really depends on the strats. It looks like phase up. If I could, ca if I had a dollar for every single five man A push I've seen today, I would have several dollars. I could probably buy me some food with that. Absolutely. <laughs> can easily find a couple of uh, Timmy's double doubles at this point here with the way that's been happening throughout the entire day. But we are going to see right towards A site, charging on through alongside the Breach Ultimate. Everybody's concussed, including ourselves at this point, yep. as our screens are full of smokes. Two members down like from it. Tedward. And now the retake has to be absolutely perfect. But the Killjoy ult might make things a little bit difficult. Right, but. The bomb is already down, so technically this doesn't even affect phase up that much if their original plan was to play post plant. Oh, that breach uh. util definitely will do something though. SVV getting that kill onto Aura Man. Duck a doobie getting the clean headshot onto Larry Banks. 2v3 in favor of phase up, but the breach on phase up is very, very low, so this is it could go either way. Elvis wow. trying, spraying, getting that kill. Duck a doobie somehow, meanwhile, getting three. Tapping, sticking, trying their best, has to... Holding it, holding it, and I don't think Elvis is yeah. going to... Yeah. Oh. Duck Doobie gets their fourth and the ninth for Tedward Gaming, and a pro's never fake. You know what they say. I mean, we've been seeing that a lot today. I've... Yeah. I feel like I've been repeating myself a lot today. Hey, well, we get the same scenarios over and over again. Fair enough. I can't fault you for it. But now, yeah, sure, that was the... Uh, the eco rounds a couple rounds ago, they're still able to buy up to majority assault rifles. I think I saw somebody with a stinger, so not yeah. everybody could quite load up as they would like to. But lots of low armor uh, agents in this one. I wonder if FaZe are going to try and blitz this again. Right, and f this is also this is a crucial round for FaZe. If they lose this round, they will be broke. And then may potentially have to deal with either 11 or a match point, either of which, obviously, of course, they probably wouldn't want considering they want to win this game. Kinetic trying to trying through the smoke uh -oh. is not able to find them, but Elvis is able to compensate, pick up two of their own. Snorlax is scanned by the Cypher ult. Oraman posted up in hell, waiting for that CT push. Plant is down. 2v4 in favor of phase up. Duck a doobie, though, does get the kill onto Elvis. Yeah, with the Elves going down, had a fantastic couple of plays, but there's still so many other members of Phase Up here. This is tournament point now here. Phase Up are on the doorstep to call this one after two. But they just need one more to get the job done and a crucial win at that. Because like you were saying, if they had the fight back, this would have been uh, the tables have turned kind of moment. Because mm -hmm. it would have required an eco, and now it would have been Tedward with probably 12 with... Uh, match point on the line but this is where we are right here right now do we see another blitz it's been kind of like a 50 50 success rate i think maybe but this time it will be in mid it's been a while since the b site saw some action so it could very well be and in fact it looks like they're kind of walking that way and i guess a little bit more towards c the killjoy there Duncan Doobie, is there if necessary but uh yeah it looks like it's going towards that c site Yep, phase up already. 
meeting an empty site, already getting that plan down, but Cheesecake utilizing that Sova ult, getting the scan onto Oraman. The spike does go down, but in exchange for Oraman's life, Kinetic, though, has to sort of offset this somehow. Pushed up aggressive Duck a Doobie. Oh. But Elvis is aware of the lurk. The, tr the trades are going back and forth, and it, all of a sudden, it's numbers advantage for Tedward Gaming. The oh, Sova, ult, Fury. Sova ult on the side of phase up is already out, but uh, Larry Banks cancels it. Larry, oh. Oh my gosh, still doable. They found one. They found a second. It's all up to Snorlax to get the job done here. The smoke is there. Oh and there my. we go from downtown. Larry Banks is going to secure the summoning Valorant tournament here after a fantastic showing. That was holy so awesome. moly, what a way to finish that one off. Yeah, that was insane. Very good clutch from Larry Banks. And honestly, what a fun series overall. That was Absolutely. fun to cast. My eyes kind of feel like really You've bad. You've been here I, way I longer like, than I have. Yeah, I, like dead. <laughs> <laughs> I've been, I've seen the flash animation so many times, I feel like I'm literally getting flash bang <laughs> in real life. Um, but it's okay, we pushed through it, you know, uh, the win secured, W secured. <laughs> it's been a long day, but um, I don't know, overall it was worth it, very fun Valorant I've seen today. Oh, absolutely, just this entire event as a whole has just been absolutely fantastic. Big shout out to everybody who helped to, to put this one on, but then of course, big shout outs here to phase up. They were the favorites coming in. They absolutely showed why. However, it wasn't by that much. Tedward Gaming, absolutely. Both of these games, it's going to show as a 2-0, but it does not do it justice. The 13 yeah, nines both times, I believe. Definitely well fought. Very, very close in many, many moments where the series could have gone both ways. But just wasn't in the cards today here for Tedward Gaming. But um, phase up. Locked and loaded and secured it. Locked and loaded. Not much else to say. I don't know. Today was <laughs> just like, today was interesting, you know? I, I walk into the building and I just see, like, obviously I knew about the summoning, but there's also, right. like, just other things going on. There's so many things going on. And today is just fun. Today is just, like, I don't know. Today was a good day. Good Valorant being played. Good event being held. What else is there to say, really? Absolutely. And then with all of the TCG stuff also here, all the vendors who like brought their activities, like goes, there's the, the iRacing rig of Fry, the Mario Kart, Time Trials, Beat Saber, High Scores. There's just so much to do to today. Again, I have not seen the Nexus spill over into the college I as much either, as yeah. I've uh, seen today for esports and for the... Uh, like the card game culture. And I love that we were able to get everything into one building today. A bunch mm -hmm. of activities are still um, in progress. Smash Melee, I believe, is currently just finishing up on the Enter the Dojo channel. We'll probably raid them if they're still going in a couple of moments, but we still do have to figure out what is happening with the pack opening. I'm not sure if they delayed for us or if the owners had to go home. Definitely going to be heartbroken if the owners had to go home, but I sure I mean, many people I, will be. I uh, I get it. It's been it's been a long day, so we're going to quickly figure that out in a moment. But of course, the last couple of shout out once again just to face up for the being the victors here of the summoning mm -hmm. 2024 to tedward gaming to the gangy and to the mickey mouse clubhouse thank you all for competing here today yep thank you and shout out to aiden in the back who's been observing and directing absolutely and all the other staff that worked on the event today absolutely so for the time being we're going to throw this to a very very quick break as we figure out it, what's next and if we are complete on this channel we'll come back on just for a quick goodbye or if you don't see us, it's probably because we got some cards. So hang tight. We'll be right back.